The following podcast contains naughty language and ridiculous situations. Listener discretion is advised. One of my favorite podcasts uh, has been absent, and it's returned. It's sleazy. It's funny. It's got uh, one of Monster Zero's favorite laughs. Uh, check out the Trashy Trio podcast, which is just a duo now. But uh, they are back uh, after about just about a year hiatus, and uh, it's fucking great. Um, I would say that um, I was offended in the best possible way about every five minutes. So uh, look it up. You can find it on Str- Stitcher, iTunes, uh, and all cool streaming sites. It's the Trashy Trio. And welcome to Trick or Treat Radio. Welcome to episode 216 of Trick or Treat Radio. Trick or Treat Radio is a phantasmagorical spin kick straight through the heart of pop culture, navigated by the Deadites. The Deadites are the world's greatest electroshock band. We destroy monsters, we drink booze, we win championship belts, and we also get up to stretch our legs in the intro of the fucking show. Yeah, what the hell, Raven Shadow? Where are you? You fucking kidding me? Jesus. How unprofessional can you get? He had an important cigarette to smoke. No, no, he just he, his his legs are sore. His legs are sore. Yes. So si- standing on them <laughs> is going to make everything so much better. My head, my head hurts right now. You don't see me doing a goddamn headstand. I definitely saw. <laughs> you should. I definitely saw Monster Zero take a fucking face plant this week with his chair behind his. Yeah, <laughs> you, you suffered for your art, didn't you, MZ? I certainly do. I deserve pity. <laughs> No, I beat don't. the shit out of Monster Zero. Yeah. Good. He deserved it. At one point, uh, Super Director Brian Pollan uh, and I were trying to figure out how to use a prop, and the prop kept bending like in the air. So I was kind of <laughs> like, do you, want, do you want me to just punch him? Was it your penis? No. Okay. <laughs> do you want me to just uh, punch him? And he was like, oh, well, if it's okay with... I'm like, I got a pretty good working punch, which I actually don't. And he's like, uh, you know, he's like, oh, if it's all right, we're rich. And, uh, the with sm- who? The smoke machine was really loud. And, was there uh, someone named Rich on set? Yeah, you have to pass all punches by him. Oh, okay. uh, the smoke the machine choreographer? Would, yeah. That would be Rich George. The He's smoke machine the, was uh, really there, yeah. and uh, Monster Zero couldn't hear it, so uh, he was expected to get hit with a fake uh, pipe by just punching him in the face. <laughs> <laughs> it was awesome. Well, you know, I didn't mind it. You know, I, I'm the kind of person who believes... Tell people what you're talking about. Well, first of all, what we're talking about here is that over the weekend, Sunday... Uh, Dino Mutt and myself, we went to Seekonk, Massachusetts. Beautiful Seekonk. Beautiful Seekonk, Massachusetts. That was Seekonk, Rhode Island. Nope. You have it's to, right it's, on it's, the... It's, it's funny. You have to go through... You have to leave Massachusetts, go through Rhode Island to get to Seekonk, Massachusetts. Yeah. It's, it's really fucked up. Uh, <laughs> so we... And we uh, started doing our, our, our scenes for the film Septic. Ooh. Ooh, yeah, nice. Ooh, yeah. So Septic is a new film yep. uh, that will be forthcoming down the road from yep. Morbid Vision Films. I'm sure sometime next year. 2017, probably, yep. yeah. And uh, so MZ and Dynamo took part in, in, in filming a scene. and I play a snuff killer. <laughs> and he plays a snuffy. I'm the, uh, yep. the snuffleupagus. <laughs> I, I am the snuff I victim. Let's not give too much away. No. I am the snuff victim, but yes, I do suffer from my art, and I always believe that you should. <laughs> you should. <laughs> you should. So you should never you. have it easy when you're making art. Absolutely. That's well, gonna the, fucking hurt. <laughs> well, the <laughs> deadites know that. <laughs> yeah. I have to say, I can't think of a single time that I've ever made it. It's ever been easy. <laughs> um, no, there's been. Uh, I was. I was brutalized. This was a. This was a. This was probably the most physical shoot that I've ever done. And I've done I've done a lot of and you stabbed a house. Yeah, right. Yeah, I, I, I don't fuck around. Houses no. houses get on my face, man. I <laughs> get on your face. Get get in my face. I show them, you know, who's boss. Yeah, but uh, I it was it was a tough it was a tough it was a tough shoot yeah, was because hot. 
Well, it wasn't so much that I was. Well, maybe in your no case. Because there was no catering. There was no seats. There was no. Uh, Ma- well, I got Subway. In Dynamo's. No, there was there was Subway for those guys. All I got was a water. Uh, uh, good work, that's it was all turkey? I needed. But that's all I needed. Uh, <laughs> d- uh, that's all I needed. Yeah, I'm a tough Where guy. Where did I got you, Subway? Nah, I'm good. You're t- so tough guys don't eat. You heard it here, folks. <laughs> tough guys don't eat. I am the well, biggest wimp on the planet. <laughs> well, look, I mean, well, considering what you were wearing, I can understand why you were hot. Yeah, because, fucking hot. Yeah, because he was wearing, he, he, you can't even tell that it's him. I look like Super Dragon ate Super Dragon. <laughs> ate Dragon Dragon. <laughs> and, um, yeah, I was I was pushed around. I was kicked, punched, slapped. I licked him at one point. You didn't lick me. Ooh. You didn't see. Well, my eyes were closed because there was all this sweat and makeup and blood pouring into my eyeballs. You know the stuff? Eh? There is an effect in this scene. <laughs> I won't tell you what it is or what happens, mm-hmm. but I, I watched the prosthetic be put on, and I watched the formula, the effect he, he made. He finally got a big penis. Right? And I was gagging <laughs> under my mask as I was performing this effect. It was so gross. <laughs> and I couldn't even see it and uh, you know, because my eyes were closed, not to mention the fact I was the one that was in the makeup. But, um, yeah, I, I, there was a, there's a scene in which... There's a scene in which there's a chain that's wrapped around my neck, Mm -hmm. and I'm being strung up by this chain. And it's also wrapped – the same chain is also wrapped around my wrists. So it's wrapped around my wrist. It goes up to my neck. It's wrapped around my neck a couple of times. Then it's strung up. And the one who is doing the – doing the pulling on the chain, uh, he was pulling – he was pulling oh, pretty it was, hard. It was uh, Elm Street Kid regular Chris McGibbon. That's right. That's right. Um, he seemed really good at that, actually. He was quite good yeah. at it. Very believable. Yeah. Uh, he started stringing me up with the chain, and the chain starts digging into my neck. And, of course, I'm not saying anything because it's, you know. Because you, you're a tough guy. Because I'm a tough guy, and I yeah. believe that you, you suffer for your art. And <laughs> that's the fucking most ridiculous. He thing. also doesn't believe you that you should get paid to make art. art either. So that's no, I believe you should get paid to no. do art. You were like, you should do a bunch of independent movies for free. Who said that? You. When? I don't remember, but it was on an episode. Everybody should work for free. Independ- Look, independent film, I, be- I, you know, in order to maximize the budget. That's because Lloyd meager- Kaufman's his fucking boy. To, to, to maximize the meager budget that independent filmmakers have. It's best to work for free yeah, and right. use Lloyd the experience Kaufman and use the experience. Should use as my yeah. How, so when you Lo- wait, Lloyd's when you a get your story. when you get your fucking electric bill, it says cash credit experience. <laughs> <laughs> like like how do you like how do you film credits? Yeah, how do you monetize that? <laughs> you put, yeah, I would like to late. pay my electricity with film credits this month, please. Yeah. See, I don't know, but it was it was a good time. And uh, one thing that I was pretty happy about, uh, though no one else would be happy about, Brian. At the end, wanted to film some scenes uh, without me in my mask, which I think is like a. I think that's. Wait, like you a, took your skin off. Yeah, I think that's like a comp. Well, I was wearing a mask, like a ninja mask. Oh, you sh- you should have been wearing a blue demon mask. No, no. <laughs> I think that that's like a uh, you know, like a compliment. Like he thought that like I I could. Like I could emote some sort of energy or whatever, which is totally fucking wrong. He's like, I want you to laugh, and I'm sure it's going to look like, ha, 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 like Mork from Mork, R, R. That's cool. And, um, yeah, Chris just kept on push. He pushes me down, and I land on my face. forearms. Oh, on your face. That was your face. No, I land on my forearms. And then I try to land on my face. But I land on my forearms, and I got a couple of bone bruises in my left forearm. Whoa, did you get a bone sickness? <laughs> <laughs> Everybody laugh. Everybody laugh at Wolfie's joke now. You're the king of fucking bad jokes. So but it was fun, you know. I mean, I, I I enjoyed the hell out of it, and I love doing it, and I can't wait to do it again at some point, you know. I really enjoy. I will say, I really enjoyed the. And he was quite good. Thank you. He was quite I good. Know, he was real good. That beat you up, which is 
one of well, the f- you guys have been doing it for years. Yeah, yeah as one of the most things especially on my in the past page that gets the least attention. Most especially in the past month, he beats me with pillows. He slaps me around on film sets. I mean, oh, what am I going to get? My he's, my he's hit you with uh, with uh, cookie sheets, yeah. <laughs> chairs. One, I should get my uh, my revenge on this bastard. I, I could have been the other way around. I often. <laughs> So, yeah, and I guess that I am going to go back, I think. No, the only thing film. you've offered is putting uh, 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 coffee in a goddamn eyedropper. That's the that, only thing you've offered. Yeah, so I told <laughs> Monta Zero that if he puts coffee don't, don't say the in thing an eyedropper and yeah, don't. drops it in his peephole. Okay, thank you. <laughs> then the head, his headache will go away, but he doesn't believe me. I do it all the time. I do it all the time. <laughs> <laughs> but like I said, he did he 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 did a great job. He Thank you. was very believable and I mean as far as slapping me around, I, you know, I have to believe it. I was the I was the victim of it all. I got to move his like there's a part where I got the improv uh I moved his hair away like uh like almost like seductively, like not like brutally yeah. at one point. Like I it got over, so it's good. Yeah, yeah. He would, he would. He's like, like let's film that again. Let's film that again. Out of my <laughs> face, and then he would be like, you know, and he'd slap me. He he would slap me. I mean, it wasn't no. It wasn't even my hand. <laughs> <laughs> Something else. <laughs> Thought I smelled Astroglide. <laughs> And no, it was bacon <laughs> grease. <laughs> 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 and uh, you know that's not true. You know why? Why? Because Johnny's a vegetarian. That, oh. That's very true. That's very true. I see you once a week. Eventful. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, one and a half, one and a half times a week. I guess that time is longer than this time. Don't lie. <laughs> <laughs> and it was fun. It was fun. It was fun working with. With with Dynamo it was fun working again with Paul uh, mm-hmm. Paul uh, Brian. Brian yeah uh, uh, Chris was there to helping out with the Chris yeah too. Chris, Chris McGibbon Chris Kinnery was yep. there Kiss Kinnery is so fucking cool K- Kiss Kinnery Kinnery yeah. is awesome King Kinnery King Kinnery <laughs> Oily Maniacs is chains hairless MZ getting choked and slapped around kind of hot yeah Ooh. yeah <laughs> and then he, and why'd you get in trouble when you got home Yeah I got in trouble because the underwear that i was wearing i mean my pants were the, my shorts were cargo shorts yeah, were soaked in blood blood yeah and uh the underwear that was underneath that i wore was also soaked in blood and the white the white waistband on my tommy hill figures got stained red richie this is 20 dollar underwear yeah this is 20 dollar <laughs> underwear I'm like it's. Uh, uh, first of all, I'm like I'm. First of all, I'm like. I thought you know, she thought them. I'll she just, thought something else. So. I, I'll just yeah. Well, that's well. She, amazingly, she didn't think that when I came home with the with what looked like a huge hickey on my neck. Ooh. Hickey on your neck <laughs> and bloody underwear. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's a hell, hell, hell of a you time. You should have just left it at that. Yeah. That's, that's the September title. 11th. Yeah. <laughs> that's yeah, a hell definitely. Of a time. That's. I'm glad that this will come way out of like. Like way away and like the the like chronologically, it won't mean anything because it definitely wasn't lost on us that we were definitely like shooting what looked like a terrorist style execution on like the anniversary of September 11th. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Because he. Did yeah. You, did you a... waterboard him too? <laughs> no, thank God. <laughs> but you know, you, but you know what? It's funny that <laughs> now that he mentions that, it's funny when you th- because he says, "I want you to." He's uh, Brian gives me a direction that. He wants to be me to be in position, like what what was a uh, uh, an execution style. He wants me to be positioned execution style with my you know me sitting on my legs, and my head down. That was the best part of the whole fucking thing. Actually, I hit him. I gave him my shitty stiff working punch a bunch of times. I hit him with like a fake prop that was not like like it it was it was that you know. If you really looked at it, you could tell it was like fake as far as not being a pipe, but that didn't want that wouldn't make me want to get hit with it anymore. Like especially not in the balls and every in the knees and everywhere else they hit them over and over yeah. again. Well, they rigged it so okay. it would stiff and you know so it would be rigid. Yeah, and then uh, and then you know his his neck's all fucking torn apart and he's got fake blood all over him, and then he's like. And we're all like, like I thought he was having a seizure. Like, what's the matter? What's the matter? He's like, my feet are asleep. <laughs> yeah, it wasn't just my feet. It was my shins. It was from my knees down. I could not move my fucking legs. He got up and he was walking around like Frank after he got resurrected. He was like, uh, 
feel like the Cause brando I, fly. Yeah, because I'm, oh. I, I, I'm like, I need help to get up because I couldn't get up. I was sitting on my legs for a good 45 minutes on, on, on like uh, a concrete floor, but there was like a, there was like a sheet over it, you know, layered sheet on over it that was under my legs, but that really <laughs> didn't do much, you know. I mean, after the first five minutes it started to be like okay might as well i might as well just be kneeling on the floor without the sheet but i was like my my from my knees down to the tips of my toesies i just could not move it was fucking weird man and i'm like somebody help me i can't get up I'm getting up and I'm walking like a I'm, I'm walking like I'm 130 years old. That's I'm true. like oh. <laughs> his legs looked all skinny and messed up. He's like ah. Oh. He looked like the Tom that, man. That's riveting. Yeah, but I do love doing this. <laughs> yeah, it's, no, it is fun. Yeah, no, and I I really enjoyed it. I would it, that's a bucket list thing for me. If uh, mm. Brian never has me back again, though we, we are talking. Um, yeah, about, I would love to have you back on. Uh, man. Is uh. I might get to get killed in the movie, actually. There might hmm. be some rewriting going on. I had an idea, and I ran it past me, liked it. Nice. And, uh, yeah, I mean, it's a buck. So if this is the only time I'm in one of his films, like... should have Corando somehow come Ooh, and kill yeah. you. Listen, listen, yeah, <laughs> that'd be awesome. Cor- Corando, I work for cheap. Um, uh, this is... Uh, if you live in Pittsburgh, you want to be in a George Romero zombie movie, right? Yep. If you live in yeah. Massachusetts, you want to be killed in a Brian Bond film so you know or kill somebody in a brian paul film so you know it was a pretty big honor for me so i was pretty excited this is my fifth film with him and i'm 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 dedicated i i look forward to his latest project all the time suffer for your art i do i want to go get some fun actually actually i suffer for his art (laughs) but that's all right i don't mind it i i love it the film set was regaled with stories about things like Rufus and Ronaldo that they oh, didn't know about. Oh, yeah, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Rocky Overpass. <laughs> <laughs> the Rocky Overpass. Rocky Overhang. I'm sorry. <laughs> Rocky Overpass. So just to go back a little bit in the chat room, Drive Jacket Mark says, where's the cool principal when the show started? Oh, I had to go <laughs> I had to run an errand. <laughs> yeah, what is that errand? I had to go wash my hands from the pizza. He had to go run an errand. He yeah. had to go write somebody up. You sure? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You sure he didn't need to stretch your legs? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, to. you going to fucking. Really? Yeah. Yeah. See, I'll, I might have to stretch my legs later on. El, Go- <laughs> El Goro. My legs. El Goro pulled that sort of shit with me on this week's Elm Street Kids, actually. <laughs> Made a run for it? No, nah, he's talking about some private some private boy chat room stuff. <laughs> what? <laughs> some not for public <clears throat> things. Yeah. Johnny okay. just broke kayfabe. I know. Oh. Well, what kayfabe did I break? Yeah, and it, it's talking in the, you know, in the quote unquote pre show about having some leg problems. Yeah, so yeah. you got to stretch your legs. What? Stretch my legs, yeah, you know. <laughs> what, why can't no. they know that? Well, I don't know, you know what I mean? It, who knows? It might, it might be it's movie magic. There you go. Uh, Jethronomicon says, MZ looks like an ugly woman, and he needs to grow that shit out again. Sorry. <laughs> well, slow it down, oh, yeah. Yeah, Jethro. It's, Sorry, it's, man, it's no, true. That was I my agree. intervention. Yeah, yeah, tell me about it. Believe me, I, 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 it's not <laughs> something that I regret. I wanted to try something different, and I did, and I, I am, I mean, it's yeah. grown in slow, but it's growing, and it's going to grow back. Believe yeah, me. I, I learned I, a lot about me, though, after about the two-hour mock. I'd did, be like, I'd nail him. Dynamo, did you prefer to have uh, no goatee on him? While I was killing him? <laughs> no. When, uh, uh, well, I just, like, I when you were know. feeling those DSLs? I definitely oh. was. He was, <laughs> he was angry. I was definitely grabbing those bologna uh, <laughs> gumdrops while he was all tied up. He was, he didn't, I don't bologna think he enjoyed, boobs. I don't think he enjoyed that. Hashtag bologna boobs. <laughs> yeah. But, I, I mean, I re- I, like, honestly, we got in that, like, three, four hour mock in that garage. I was like, I'd do him. Yeah. With the yeah. chains. Yeah. Jethro was asking if you had a chug jug, Mars, and I, no. you don't. I don't. So just let him know. It's no chug jug. He's got a chug jug. He's chug, got polar chug. water and what's that? What's that thing you're eating? Just a Gerber baby food. <laughs> <laughs> they are superfood puffs, veggie, fruit, and groin puffs. Groin. <laughs> groin? <laughs> <laughs> what's a groin puff? Uh, that's why it's so delicious. <laughs> Purple carrot and blueberry. I've never even heard of these. You want ding dong, dude? No. Ding dong. Yeah. This is ding like dong, c- yo. It's like cereal. You want no, look, at, look at the back, though. Let me read the ingredients. Let me, let me read the ingredients here. All right. It's got organic brown rice flour, mm-hmm. organic white rice flour, right. or- organic apple juice concentrate, right. contains 2% or less of the following, 
organic purple carrot powder, organic blueberry powder, mixed toss taco frolis. Yeah. To preserve freshness. That's a dinosaur. All right, that's enough. I'm, <laughs> not, I'm not gonna read yeah, anymore. Read the amount of sugar and stuff that's in. Not very oh, okay. much. So even if I eat all of that, there's like nothing. In, there's no. There's no protein. No. There is uh, very very little sugar, one gram. There is uh, very little carbohydrates, six grams. Total fat, zero calories. Well, if I eat all of that, it'll this be is not going to be filling. No, I just needed to have something like you know. It's, it's not filling at all, though. It's like the '90s. I just need to have something in my mouth. Some- <laughs> all right. Well, Dynamo's got superfood puffs, uh, groin puffs in his mouth. <laughs> I got the idea because I sit next to a full grown baby every single week. So, <laughs> I'm, you know what? I, I had uh, blueberry buckle for. Uh, oh, a dessert Jesus today? Christ. Not very much. A dessert? Yeah. Two percent to or less. I, I. <laughs> That's my favorite thing to. I'm read not positive that my diet is going well, but I have on days, I have off days. So, uh, Jethro says, uh, "Look, guys, I have a new boss, and I interviewed for a new opening, and I may be getting promoted. Nice. I'm totally having some celebratory drink. Do Several it. right now. Do it." And uh, so people were uh, wishing Jethro the best of luck. Most of. Yeah, good luck, bud. Hey, did you guys hear that Boston was one of the places that was selected to test out the, the automatic driving car? Nope. It's fucking wild, right? We live in the future. <laughs> <laughs> That's going to go well. Why? Yeah, nothing bad can come from that. Drive- at least it's in fucking Boston, though. Like, huh? Drive Jacket Mark says MZ's shaven face looks like it's made out of clay. He's do- dog all him. What, I got a Gumby face now? <laughs> <laughs> All right. So tonight on tonight's show. No one, can, no one is impressed. The cars are going to drive them fucking self. Raymond Shadow they are, could drive oh, home. They're already, oh, they already have them. Yeah, but Tesla like, has like self-driving dri- cars. Yeah, well, fucking, I don't care the what band? that band does. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> sign, sign, <laughs> sign. It's the difference between a TW and a Raven Shadow. <laughs> he feels the beat. <laughs> yeah, I'd rather have a TW. Yeah, Mr. but uh, well, that's what I mean. Mr. No. Extra Large yeah, Raven, over here. Raven, <laughs> I am extra large. Raven You're Shadow not. comes in with the fill a minute too late. Hey, You're not an extra large dude. I do wear an extra large. I, the fuck I, you don't. I don't I believe. Don't. Why is there commotion? Why you put your pants on? <laughs> 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 He's checking. You might have a Brian Pollen set. <laughs> choke him, choke him. So, <laughs> Raven Shadow claimed today in the Trick or Treat Radio <laughs> chat. So w- w- hold on, hold on. Before let's set this up. Say. Let's set this up. So, <laughs> myself, Mars, and uh, Monster Zero, we're not small dudes. We're you know we're not huge either, but you know we're not small dudes. We're thick. Yeah. We all wear extra large shirts. Yes, to yeah. some varying degree. T-shirts, of thing. T-shirts. The question was, no, no, no. Oh, let me t- finish. I'm gonna get the fucking post right Raven now. Raven Shadow weighs about a buck thirty-five, soaking, soaking wet. wet. <laughs> and I asked, them, rocks in I his asked pockets. everyone what t- what size shirt they have. Everyone says XL, XL, XL. Raven Shadow, XL. No fucking way. It's true. You are not a Where's fucking. You're XL. not an XL. The, oh, it's shirt size. I thought you said T-shirt. Um, well, it's it's gonna be a T-shirt. Right. So there you go. Yeah, no, you're not t-shirt. getting fitted for a fucking tuxedo. Well, maybe you. <laughs> I fucking am. Listen, go to fucking. Where's your hall pass? Um, <laughs> no, for T-shirts, I do wear an extra large, and here's why. I'm gonna tell you why. Okay, this is okay. This is different than that. You know, you don't know. You see, you buy your clothes in packs of three. And your mom leaves them on your bed when you get home. Uh, <laughs> <that's a laughs> Says the guy did. who has clothes in packs of three, then your mom leaves it in the bed. Z- <laughs> yeah. Okay, <laughs> picking up a dry cleaning is more grown up. Okay. <laughs> but no, for a t-shirt, I am yep. skinny, but I'm long. All right. And, <laughs> and clothes dry in the dryer. You know, dry, they shrink. They shrink in the dryer. You don't have to dry and them. You can hang them, you know. Well, I'm not going to put them out in a fucking yard. Somebody ought to hang you. That. Yeah, well, it's a matter of time, I suppose. <laughs> also, you don't have to use, like, hot, hot cold water. You can just use one kind yeah, of water. And yeah, then or, or tumble dry low. Yeah. I, I don't know about that. I just make it, make it hot. I don't even know. <laughs> I just make it hot. I don't know. But here's the thing, though. <laughs> and I also wear my T-shirts all year long. So I wear thermals. I wear the thermals. And I have the, the shirt over the thermal. So it hangs down. Yeah, yeah. You know? So I, 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 I like a little loose. I like a little loose. I'll uh, bring the fucking the Raven Shadow two Raven Shadow shirts I have are extra large. I'll bring them in. You bought two Raven Shadow shirts? Yeah. Did you I, know I got I got a large Raven Shadow shirt. I got a fucking large. And it can and be I'm, accepted. I'm like probably almost 100 pounds heavier than you. Those are a little bit more extra larger than some extra larges. <laughs> There's different levels of extra larges. Honestly, how much do you weigh? Enough. 
No, no. How much do you that's weigh? Like, that's like someone who's embarrassed of their weight. I don't know. Get a fucking scale. Didn't we do this already? Yeah, yeah we did. <laughs> about, about 200 episodes ago. I don't know. Like uh, 108? <laughs> Plug. <laughs> what the fuck? I'm not Maybe you happy. shouldn't be sitting in front of the air conditioner. It'll blow you out halfway across the room. <laughs> it's going to knock him over. Listen, I don't know. I, you know. I like to have a little elbow room. and I get a little, I'm skinny, but I get to little, I, you know, drink a little beer, so a little, uh, little round in the front. And I use that to hide it. <laughs> so you look like a improvised child in a third world country is what you're trying yeah. to say. The only thing you're missing are the flies hanging off your face. Yeah, that's nice. Nice fucking talk. <laughs> oh, no problem. Jesus. Why don't you send some fucking money? Why don't you adopt some fucking poor kid from the Middle East and show him fucking hostile? <laughs> show him hostile. That's nice. Come to America. Oh, man. Here's the that would, getting hostile. That would be a fucking reality show, huh? <laughs> <laughs> MZ raised a 12... A, 11 year old Fuck Sally Fuck Struthers that. This yeah. fucking Monster Zero In like Umbaba <laughs> I don't know where they live What It has to be, it has to be uh, <laughs> Baby Shabazz It has to be somewhat Jesus like, Christ you No know, it's gonna be amazing That this kid is gonna come over And like know more About everything Than Monster Zero <laughs> It's gonna be Teacher Ray Richard Out of his phone <laughs> <laughs> He's never touched Fucking electronics In his life <laughs> That's oh, a show man. That, that is a show Let's make that happen Speaking of a show oh. This show here Tonight, let yeah. me tell you what's going on. We are going to review the film I Am Not a Serial Killer. And then, later on, we're going to talk about our favorite monsters. Ooh. So we polled the listener base. If you're on the fib or on Twitter, you would have seen. And uh, we were soliciting for some feedback. I put that shit all over. Oh, all right. There you go. And uh, so we're hoping to get some, uh, some people to write in and uh, leave voicemails and let us know what... Who or what is their favorite monster? And can leave it up for interpretation. So anyone listening live now that has not submitted feedback, if you would like to, go to trickortreatradio.com. You can go ahead and click on the uh, contact button. And then from there, you can leave a voicemail or an email and uh, let us know. Or you can also just go ahead and record a voice memo on your smartphone or an email. Send it to podcast at trickortreatradio.com. Let us know your favorite monster. Interpret it however you want. And uh, we'll play those later on, and we'll have some discussions about that. So that should be fun. And we have some, some announcements about uh, what's coming up next week. We have a fun episode, so we'll be talking about that a little bit later. And then we're going to play your feedback, and uh, eventually we'll wrap up the show. Sooner or later. Everyone's checking their phones. What are you guys looking for? I'm looking at the fucking fib right now. Why? Because it's going on, and they're very important. Because it's not for them, there wouldn't be us. <laughs> it wouldn't be us. And in the chat room... Please Chat kill room. me. Raven J said, this is awesome. He was referring to the talk about your t-shirts, I think. Please See? kill me. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to fucking bring some shirts in. And uh, Jethro Nomicon is, uh, is tapping out early. He said, the alcohol's kicking my ass. Nice. You should, when'd you start? <laughs> <laughs> I think you just started. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> He's a quick drinker. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, Oily, Maniac, Oily Maniac says, anyone going to restore Phantasm next week? No. I don't know. Uh, I'm not sure where it's playing around us, so we'll have to take a look and see. I would like to see it. I haven't seen that movie in years, so. Maybe we'll take Nick with us. <laughs> <laughs> so that's what's going on tonight. And uh, uh, Raven Shadow, you have any other, uh, any other thing happen this week? I don't want to talk about it. I'm not ready for announcements, Johnny. <laughs> no? It's good. No, we'll talk. We'll talk offline. We'll, oh, shit. We'll okay. Have a, we'll have, might have a... I gotta do a press release. A press release, <laughs> <laughs> like an internal press release. Yeah, we're gonna go on FAQ, ladies and gentlemen of the press. Is this gonna be another that you said you were gonna be all three days at Rocket Shock, but you only gonna be there one day? All right, about that. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm booked, baby. I'm booked. I got coverage. Cause here's the thing. Uh oh. On Sunday. Yep. I need you to be at Rocket Shock for sure. I'm gonna be. I'm there for the Deadites. Not for the other thing that you do. No, no, no. Yeah. I'm, uh, I'm, I'm all uh, Trick or Treat Radio and okay. Deadites on uh, that weekend. Because while you're going to be up just as long as us and probably be just as tired, yeah. like uh, I don't think Johnny should have to get up that early after he's wrangling the Jello Cats, the Deadites all night. No, I'll be there. I'm, I'm not going to. I'm always there, man. So no, no don't do that. I have. Uh, we have maybe some interesting things happening for Rock and Chalk. I think you guys heard about it. But I'm going to keep it secret for now. But um, there may be some fun stuff happening at the table at Rock and Shock. We got uh, we got some some balls in the air, so to speak. 
and uh, we're hoping to catch them all, but there should be some interesting stuff going on there. So uh, keep an ear out here for some more information about it. I got some correspondence. Yeah. Uh, but remind, remind me to read it when it's time to talk about the, uh, about the, the film. Okay. It's from our, our, our favorite uh, book organizing uh, fox. Book organizing fox. Yep. Ooh. I know what that is. Mm-hmm. Okay. I don't know. Because they drive themselves. Yeah, that, that, that could be useful on the 15th. Not for me. I got to. As, <laughs> as far as I have to go is the cove. You mean the 16th at like 2 a.m., Raven Shadow? Yeah. All right, fair, fair. Because <laughs> I, have, I, have, I know where my car is going to be. Yeah, it better be fucking home. No, it's going to be secure. It's going to be behind a metal gate. I gotta, oh, I okay. Also, I'm going to walk down. And you'll get a ride home. If I have to give you a ride home, I'll give you a ride home. That would okay? be cool. Okay. I'll tell you this. I'm sorry, but you are not staying in my hotel room. <laughs> come on, that'd be outrageous. Monster Zero will oh, come he's, too. He's staying no. with uh, El Goro. Who? Oh, that's a you are? Yeah. No, I don't, I don't think you're welcome at El Goro. So <laughs> <laughs> that could be fair. <laughs> Goro! No. Yeah, no no uh, time. Who, who opens that door will surprise you and you won't be happy about it. <laughs> <laughs> well, you might be initially, but yeah, you won't be yeah, in a few no, minutes. Not soon after. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I already said I need to find out because I'll remove it. I, I'll move it. I have to make sure we don't have adjoining rooms. I'd be at that fucking show. Oh, no. you, yeah, you better make sure. Yeah, I don't want to know any about that. Know who, know who I had to re- enjoy the room with once? Jim Smith. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> you had to be quiet. Was, yeah, I, w- I did have to be quiet. <laughs> I wasn't quiet at first, and then I thought about it for a few minutes. I'm like, uh-oh. That's right on that side. <laughs> that's fine. So, yeah, it's not good. They knocked the TV over. He's from, Jer- he's from, he's from Jersey, right? Yeah, it's true. Yeah, yeah, he likes that. Crazy shit happens there. Yeah. <laughs> So, uh, Mars, do you have any more stories? No, I didn't. I didn't I'm you on sh- it. No. You can shit your pants or piss your pants? No, this diet. I'm doing bad at my diet, but otherwise. I guess I'm doing okay at my oh, diet. Oh, you're eating groin puffs. Yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, what, <laughs> what metric are we measuring how good I'm doing at my diet by? Uh, how much weight have you lost? I can't. I don't know. I've been looking. I only know pant size. Oh. Well, that's not a good indicator all, all the time. Well, this right now it isn't. I don't know. I, I know that there was a thing of... We should get the scale back in here. Where's Diet Coach? Get the coach? fucking scale. Where's Diet Coach? There was a thing of... At my house, there was a thing of spooky cakes. Spooky cakes. Oh, like spooky or scary cake. cakes. Yeah. And there uh, is one... There was one scary cake missing from the box. So, uh, Did you have that scary cake? No, that was already missing. I ate the other eight. Oh, not very good. No, so, I know. so you didn't eat them all. You just no, ate the first. Someone eight. else ate one, and I ate the other. Eight. So you're in a diabetic coma right now. Oh no, I ate them over a couple of days. But oh, okay. <laughs> oh, spooky cake. I've all the good habits I've had. I've been finding a way to blow them out the fucking window. I and like story. I've just decided I'm gonna be fat till my legs fall off. I'm gonna die, like the guy that, like the guy that flew Airwolf. Uh, you probably won't be able to <laughs> masturbate then. Why? Yeah. Just get someone to do it for you. <laughs> no, as long as it works. Oh, it might mess with the blood flow. I don't know. Might I'll tell you what. I've yet to find a thing of, like, that thing is, like, Jason, Jason Voorhees. You can't stop it. Yeah. I have yet to find the thing that stops me from masturbating. <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> well, I I, I, I... I could go so many ways, yeah, but no, I'm not going to go anywhere. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> Taking a high road. Yeah. I, I, it's not that necess- I'm not saying I don't masturbate a lot. But it's not, I'm not saying that I, it's not like, uh, it's oh, not that by, I masturbate a lot. It's that I don't masturbate or have sex as much as I want to masturbate or have sex. So you, do you okay, I gotcha, yeah. Like literally. So I, you would do it all day. Oh, I, that's all I would do. <laughs> I've ne- there's nothing like performing that, more of that, and then writing. That's like. It's bad. That's all I write about my songs. Uh, I'd be like the guy in, in Super Troopers. You know, he'd be jerking off, and he has the, the speed gun in his hand, and he's ch- testing how fast he's going. <laughs> oh, my God. What? <laughs> Raven J sent us a picture that he made. <laughs> it's MZ with bloody trunks. <laughs> That's a fucking eight by ten. I li- I li- I'd like to know what the what the de- what the deal is with the pinky near the mouth. That's what I. <laughs> he got the hair though. Yeah, yeah, you're being coy. <laughs> oh shit, Raven J. I gotta hold on. I gotta put this in. I gotta put this in the. Uh, 
<laughs> in the fucking uh, window here. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus oh, I gotta, Christ. I got a quick aside. I watched... Uh, yeah, go for it. I'll get this thing I watched... Um, <laughs> yeah, do that. That SmackDown <laughs> pay-per-view. Backlash? Yeah, it was fucking boring. It was yeah. very, very boring. And the main event storyline doesn't make any sense. <laughs> follow, follow me here, Wolf. You understand pro wrestling okay. and people understand pro wrestling, right? While you talk, I'm okay. going to go ahead and put up, for anyone watching live feed, I'm going to put up this uh, Look at right. that goddamn thing. photo of MZ. So, <laughs> the baby face of the feud, right, does a nut shot Which feud are we talking about? Of the main about? event feud, right? Of, uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, well, he's he's he's... He's like a gray area. Still, he does a nut shot, right? Okay, fair enough. And then the bad guy returns the favor next week, and we're supposed to be all bent out of shape, right? Because, because it's you know apparently when you're a bad guy and the writing is so f- paper thin, uh, turnaround is not fair play <laughs> anymore, right? Okay, yeah. And then spoiler alert, uh, <laughs> that whole thing was to build up the nut shot. Like the nut shot is now the finishing move. Okay. Yep. Like that's like that's that, that how that works. <laughs> like you maybe gr- like have a new move and you do it and the person submits after the match or you give that you give you finish a move and you knock him out and you pin him one of you know what I mean when the ref isn't looking or whatever, but you can't fucking build a match around a fucking d- ball shot. That's not like that's not the that's not drama. That's just dumb. They think because they don't charge you anymore, they can just do any old fucking dumb shit. That's dumb. If I paid for that, I would have fucking dr- g- kicked my television in the balls. <laughs> it was I was so angry. And then they got, and then like on one of their main events, okay, Rocky Dennis and Rhino is one of their main events. I enjoy the Rhino. I enjoy Rocky Dennis. Well, then that's well. SmackDown <laughs> Tag Team Champions are for you. <laughs> That has to be the worst tag division ever. Yeah, I, I didn't really get that. That Was they just they they had a storyline and they stuck with it to, you know, to I guess to maybe to their credit they stuck with it, but uh, I I don't think it was the right storyline to to stick with. Just who cares about any of that? Who cares? Who cares about the Usos, the boring old Usos? Who cares about fucking Rhino and Rocky Dennis? Who cares about the friggin Long Island team for sure who cares about those fucking awful guys yeah th- a lot of the tag teams are bad th- it should have the final should have been probably the Usos versus American Alpha yeah that would have been the, the one to do it the women's uh, what the is it called the Smackdown challenge. women's title it has some dumb name uh, their championship um, match was good it was pretty good I gotta say though like when I go back and watch more PWG and Chikara, as I have been the last couple of days, I really feel like they're, you know, and I know that old J.I. think just not the thing to do. Slam knocker. Some people think it's not the thing to do, but, like, especially now that we've brought Cruiserweights back, like, and people can disagree with me, but that women's division can get over if they have enough good women having great matches. But it's still booked as a novelty. There's only, like, one. You're never going to turn on SmackDown and have there be five women's matches and one dude match, right? Right. Like, they should just let, they should just have, let the, like, everybody fucking fight. Like in Chikara. Equal, mm-hmm. equal, equal rights, equal fights. Yeah, I, I agree. <laughs> like, because I feel like some of the, like, Charlotte has to be as tall as most of those cruiserweights. Yeah. You know, like, uh, Tamina. Like you know that that you know I I know that mo- I know that probably all the they had a lot of the classic divas in a on a Chikara show recently and they were not that much smaller than uh, or smaller yeah, at all than the, than some, some of the guys, guys. Yeah, yeah. yeah for sure you know what I mean like so like I just don't I mean I know that f- it's so controversy on Lucha Underground because that's the only place that is on TV and it seems supposedly like looks like they're abusing the women but like. It's not. It's not that. Like it's another one of those tribe things that we have to get by. It's it's classic storytelling. Yep. If it's if you're Daisy Hayes and you weigh Michael Raven shadow size and you weigh a hundred hundred and forty three oh, no, pounds, she weighs about yeah, ninety pounds. And you're and you're fighting a two hundred and eighty pound man. It's classic Samson and Goliath. Whether it's a man or woman, a child, uh, right. a a. a uh, 
a, a dwarf, an elf, you know, whatever, mythical creatures are fighting in the ring. Like, I feel like, you know, and people can disagree with me, but, like, uh, I think that um, Mam and Toyota was the was and maybe is, in my opinion, the greatest uh, women's wrestler of all time. But in her time in Chikara, she got in there, mixed it up with the men, and, and looked terrific. You know, so this is the second time the uh, Sunday girls were in uh, a Chikara show, and they all looked terrific too. Like yep. you know, it gets a, you know that's one of, that was one of the best matches on night one at King of Trios. Yeah, yeah. So I I think that's it's just this mental block, and and Chikara is you know we we both love Chikara, but it is a niche thing, and I think the audience of Chikara is very willing to accept that sort of thing. I don't think the the world in, in in you know in general like let's say WWE universe is a a cross section of of you know of the world and i don't think they're ready for that i yeah. think and that's the sad part right there i think it should be happening but the sad part is people aren't ready for it and people will probably revolt well here well here is an indicator right there uh joey styles one of the most intelligent people i've ever met yeah uh, albeit briefly one of the greatest commentators of all time really couldn't wrap his head around that yeah. concept. You could tell on it commentary. Was, it was difficult for him, for sure, yeah. And, and even, you know, like, oh, those guys are glad that they all wear masks. They just got beat by a bunch of women, you know? Like, uh, it's just... <laughs> <laughs> we got, an, <laughs> we got <laughs> another picture from Raymond J. <laughs> <laughs> Is that Tiny White? I don't know. <laughs> no, it's your penis, like Jason Voorhees. Yeah. Nice penis <laughs> Voorhees. <laughs> It inadvertently, I think, looks like Daddy White. <laughs> <You do. laughs> it's gonna go a little. It's gonna go a little bit to the right. <laughs> <laughs> Tiny yeah, that's white. You're head. right-handed. <laughs> Tiny Whitehead. Oh my God, he's quick. <laughs> what was Tiny White's fucking problem today? Guys have fucking disappeared on the internet for six months. Comes uh. up. Can we stop ta- saying "God bless you" when I people <laughs> sneeze? For fucking real. Why don't we stop, you know, killing each other willy-nilly? <laughs> Priorities. Yeah, you know? I know. That's, we'll make a fucking list. I'll Priorities. Put it, I promised him I'll put it on there. Stop killing each other. Respect each other globally. The sociopolitical sneeze etiquette conundrum. <laughs> like, what fucking happened? He was pissed. He's all fired up. <laughs> and no guys. more carrot raisin salad. Nobody yeah. likes that shit. I kind of like it. Guys disappeared for fucking ever. <laughs> I got a project going on that I'm not supposed to know about that the people who are like uh, the people who are setting up the project are like all the bands turned in their stuff except for one band. And I was like, let me guess. Let me get on the phone. Yeah. <laughs> Fucking bands from all over the world do. <laughs> not the deadites. <laughs> Have fun with your cancer dynamo. <laughs> Alright, there we go. It is the image that Raven J just uh, <laughs> sent to us. He's a, he's a quick artist. Am I man. wearing an apron? That's <laughs> well, a dick, man. <laughs> it's uh, veins. Yeah. <laughs> is that is that what it looks like? Oh, I thought it was like a robe. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 no. Keep that thing in your pants. <laughs> Do you have a hockey mask on it? That would have some implications. Yeah, no, I know. I'm not comfortable with. <laughs> Oh Jesus! Three eyed monster. What is A H S? And why American does people Horror keep asking me if I'm going to watch? I'll oh, fuck that. Oh, show. fuck that show! Yeah, nah. seriously. <laughs> I, I feel like, like I watched the second season of it, and every character was a character from another show, which was cool, right? Like they copied that character. That could be neat. But then that character did exactly what they did in the original movie they were from. Yeah. And yeah. I'm like, well, this is no fucking surprises. I knew everything because they just fucking stole these stories and all put them together. It's like the League of Boring Horror, gentlemen. <laughs> and then the third one was just, I, I watched four episodes maybe, and it was honestly like, I felt like I had gotten in trouble. And it was, what the? It uh, was like Elm Street Kids homework. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we should start to wrap up because we have a movie to talk about. We have uh, some monsters to talk about. Raven J, off air, I'll look at my, I'll compare. Compare. <laughs> Oh. <laughs> Please do not send a picture to anyone. Snapchat. Maybe Jay might want to see. You don't know. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, Lance Beefpile is checking in. He says, hey, hey all, I'm heading into the Exorcist house in 10 minutes. 
Ooh. He is what? at he is at in H- Georgetown. H H N, which is uh I forget what that stands for. <laughs> Do you know MZ? Down H- in Orlando. Oh, oh, that's a uh, horror hound uh No, no, not horror hounds. Haunted <clears throat> Haunted something or other. Oh, oh, um Anyways. Yeah. I I know mm-hmm. I know what he's talking about. I know what he's talking about. Um Creepy Girl says, I love you guys, but I gotta leave for AHS. What? Are you kidding? It's killing me to find out what the theme is. I'll come back after, promise. Bye, Melissa. Yeah, have a good time. Enjoy what you like. Drive Jacket Mark says, American Horror Story is horror for people who don't like horror. Right. (laughs) (laughs) I tried watching it. I watched the first season. I thought it was okay, but I just had... Digital video recorder? No? They don't have those in Florida? (laughs) DVR. Yeah. I liked the first season for what it was. Um, yeah. And I enjoyed it. Had Siler in it. Yeah. I like, I like the cast. I like the, ooh, super sexy redheaded maid. Uh, you'd yeah. like her. Yeah. Word. I um, hated the Kirk Cobain kid. <laughs> I liked the actor a lot. Uh, I wish he was dead and I was glad he was dead. Wow. Wow. As dead as the real Kirk Cobain? Deader. Deader. Uh, I thought the batshit craziness of the second one was absurd but fun. And I couldn't. Do the Harry Potter X Men? Which one? I didn't like okay, that. so I you'll watch it. those, but you won't watch a movie that we that we review. Well, in his defense, he didn't finish it. Right. I oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> in his defense, <laughs> yeah, I stopped. Yeah. <laughs> and those are under an hour or an hour. Yeah, yeah, but there's many of them. Not in uh, the same sitting. Well, you you could cram yeah. them, right? But I, d- I don't. I like to spread it out. It's a marathon, <laughs> not a sprint. <laughs> Yeah, I'm not gonna fucking. You should do that with your movie over the course of the week. Watch 15 minutes a day. I got a weird pause issue with my DVD player. Oh Jesus! Jesus it, it's a weird, sort of shitty remote. It's got an animal pause. Yeah. Why don't you Why don't you splurge and get yourself a nice, you know, Blu-ray player that can play DVDs? You know what? Or we should if we can. You know, the the, the Kickstarter is still going. Right? <laughs> no, no. We don't have a no. Kickstarter. What do we have? The fundraiser. Yes. Yeah, Dad. And it is still going. That's a nice segue, See what I did I'm going to take how that. I, I, I segue. So we still have this fundraiser going on. We want to raise some more funds, folks. So you can do so by going to trickortreatradio.com, clicking on the ticket on the right-hand side that says Grand Guignol Fundraiser. It lays out everything. It tells you what you get. It tells you what we're going to use the money for and what you could get. There's posters still, folks. Every 25 bucks gets you a poster. Uh, MZ, you don't have to pull them out, seriously. <laughs> you keep oh. pulling the same one out every week. <laughs> no, I don't keep pulling the same one out every week. Hey. How about this? Y- yeah, you do. Uh, you pulled that one out before. John dies at the end. Yep. Yes. So we have a bunch of posters. These are the theatrical uh, posters. Most of them are double-sided, and uh, there's some pretty good ones left still. So The key is don't uh, talk to your friends about which one you got, so then you will not all find out you all got John dies at the end. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Tw- every $25. So if you, if you give 100 you get four posters. And uh, there's some pretty good ones left still. So check that out, trickortreeradio.com. Also, you can just donate money if you want. There's a PayPal link on the front page. Just click on that, donate, give us whatever you want. Or we also have merch. If you go to trickortreeradio.com, click on store, and then it shows you everything that we have for sale right now. We have some T-shirts left still, some Deadites T-shirts. We have The Greatest Hits, Volume 1 and 2 for Trick or Treat Radio. Uh, those are some, uh, if, if you're not familiar with our back catalog, I would recommend checking these out because there's a lot of, you know, greatest hits, greatest moments, funniest bits, uh, good voicemails from, from our listeners. So give that a listen. There's two volumes. Maybe we'll think about doing a third. Yeah, we should do. I, Maybe for Rock yeah. and Shock yeah. if there's hey, time. Hey, why not? There's not time, but we'll do it anyway. Yeah. We also have the... Uh, Trick or Treat Radio Premium content, which features the Deadites interview from December 15th, 1996 for radio interview. We also have the Big Scary Monster Hunts at Midnight EP. We have some buttons. We have some download cards and stickers. Lots of cool stuff. So go check that out. And then every dollar you spend on our site, whether it's through merch, whether it's through donation, or whether it's through the fundraiser, gets you one entry into the contest. And we have a grand prize that we're giving away. We have uh, a signed copy of Stripes from Bill Murray. He doesn't sign stuff very often. Uh, We have this from Patsy. We have this uh, Minion Dragon that was donated by the Unchained. We have some original Derek Rook artwork. Amazing, amazing stuff. We have uh, some DVDs that we're going to include in there. And there's a few other things that we're going to include as well. 
And, well, the uh, the uh, the uh, this DVD of Stripes that's autographed by Bill Murray. It's also autographed by PJ Souls. Oh yeah, nice PJ Souls as well. So there's some cool stuff in there. And also, one thing I always forget to mention: we have a a uh, a copy of Battleborn, the uh, the shooter game, which we won from doing uh, Wooberman's yeah. fundraiser. It it comes fully loaded. You get you get uh, money to spend in the game, like in game currency. You get a bunch of free skins for your characters. It's fully loaded. I'm guessing it's probably about a hundred dollars, uh, you know, total. So if anyone, so we're gonna have that as well. Lots of cool stuff. So go ahead and, and give everything. Every dollar gets you one entry. And you have to pay to get there. You have to pay your own travel, but otherwise everything's on the house. A hundred dollars. Yeah. You get to spend a whole day with me, which you, consists of watching you know what? Uh, Weird Al videos on YouTube instead of writing comments. Let's hold on. Really which, in order to get through that, you're going to need to be fully Dynamo. loaded. Yeah. Let's hold on. Let's do this. No one is staying in my hotel room for every. <laughs> let's let's see. I really want to do sex. <laughs> I want to do sex on you. For every hundred dollar donation, let's say that right now. If you donate a hundred dollars. To the fundraiser, how about Dynamo? We will get them in to Rock and Shock on Saturday, and we'll also get them into the Dead Eye Show for free on Saturday. Ooh. What do you think of that, Dynamo? Uh, sure. Yeah. Okay. We'll see that. I mean, uh, you the only reason to, you have to get yourself there. The only reason we'll I hesitated was that I. Uh, it's not my club anymore. But no, but yeah. we'll use a hundred dollars and pay for them. That's what I'm saying, you know, like that's how much it costs to come see us. <laughs> <laughs> Boy, they've gone up since last time. And we'll take you out to eat. Okay, that's fine. You can and I'll hang get out the with us, and Raven yes. Shadow will get the table. So yeah. <laughs> and you'll be one of the first people to see the new Deadites perform. What do you think about that? Yeah, every hundred dollars, you get to spend a day with the Deadites. Basically, we're going to be at the table hanging out. Well, you can come back to my house, and honestly, that's really all I do is watch Weird Al videos. <laughs> <laughs> so if you guys, you have to, you have to get there. So we can't pay airfare, we can't pay gas, anything I, like that. I look at my woman and I see she is quite plain. But you hang out with us at Rock and Shock, you get to come to the Deadite Show, and we'll take care of your meal. So every hundred bucks, we'll do that. I'll go down on you too. And Dynamo will go down on you too. So let's add that to the, to the oh. pot, so to speak. Yes, Dynamo, Speaking you have your hand Speaking of, uh, if Nicholas is listening, yes. uh, I, I tried to, I was kind of holding out for Rock and Shock weekend to work on his commentary. And realize with the other after I, after I talk with Alexander about other stuff that he needs me for and trying to get new musicians ready to play with us for the first time ever, I just realized it was impossible. So, sometime this week or next week, um, what I mean, uh, some week uh, like we'll sometime next week or the week after, uh, me and half I wanted to do the commentary with you know me, Johnny, and two other people. So half of those people will sit down and do that commentary this week. I, so. Let's just get it done and get it to them. Yeah. Well, so, that's what that's what yeah, like yeah. Like there was I I will say right now I can say do you want to does he want to know or does he want to be surprised? Or, I don't know. He's not here. Uh, <laughs> well, I had originally wanted to do it with El Goro and uh, Derek Rook because those guys are like premier, like you know Fulci and Italian horror guys and uh, El Goro, you know, has, is going to have a lot to do that weekend. Uh, no matter what, no matter what metaphor I use for busy, it was sounding dirty to me. Um, so, uh, but we'll we'll get it done very shortly. I apologize, Nicholas. It's not because uh, we didn't have time to do it, which you know we did. We could have made time. It's because I wanted it to be really, really awesome, and now it's going to be only okay because I'm not as cool as any of those people. So, <laughs> so all right, let's uh, let's wrap this up. So we also have a couple other people we want to uh, talk about. Not people, but uh, companies. And uh, first up is our friends over at Horror Pack. Horror Pack! <laughs> if no. you guys want to have four <laughs> Blu-rays or DVDs delivered right to your door every month, you go ahead and subscribe to Horror Pack. It's a horror movie subscription box. Go to trickatreeradio.com, click on their logo. It'll bring you right to their site. Sign up. We get a little bit of a cut of that. If you don't want to navigate there, what you can do is you can go to horrorpack.trickatreeradio.com. That'll also bring you to the site. And uh, they have some pretty cool stuff, and they're also doing exclusive content. So I think we may be doing a, a team up with Horror Pack again soon. So hopefully Sweet. we'll have some details about that soon. Also have our friends over at Amazon. Well, they're not really our friends; they're everyone's friend. But if you do, you guys do purchase stuff on Amazon. Go ahead and use our link, and we'll get a tiny cut of that. You click on the Amazon logo, 
every purchase you make in that session gets attributed to us. It doesn't cost them any extra Raven Shadow. But it helps keep the lights on. That's right. Uh, and Raven Shadow needs some help keeping his lights on. Yeah, I could use, use a couple <laughs> things. I got a list. I got a list. <laughs> so uh, we also have our friends over at XSplit. XSplit! And they provide the live streaming service you see every Wednesday night. And uh, they also, if you guys want to do a, you know, a live stream like we do, you want to do a Let's Play, Watch Us Die, like our friends over at Haunting TV, go ahead and give them a look. They have some amazing software for all your streaming needs. Really good stuff. And pretty intuitive and easy to use. So go ahead and give them a look. And I think that is going to do it for this intro. Raven Shadow is chomping at the bit. He's got to go stretch oh, his legs. Lord, He's got to stretch so his lungs. Uh. <laughs> Why does it smell like tuna fish? Is the fucking... Did someone, o uh, what? Someone open tuna in here? Right. Sorry, Charlie. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Raven Shadow. Yeah. Actually, hold on. Ooh. Hold on. I want to tell folks, uh, we, had, we had a bunch of new people checking out uh, trick or the Trick or Treat Radio Fib. Cool, Fib. What? <laughs> You take those groin puffs out of your mouth? Oh, you just spit it out. He what? spit them out. What's, why does it taste, smell like tuna fish all of a sudden? What's happening? That's the question. <laughs> uh. You smell it too? Yeah, no, it just hit me. All right. Maybe this tuna fish outside the window is coming in there. <laughs> tuna fish. So we've had a, a, a lot of new people join the FIB lately. I don't know if you guys noticed. I know Mars and I have because we've, uh, we've been approving people. Mm. I would say we had about 80 people join this really? past week, which is fucking nuts. That's I have no awesome. idea. And they all look legit. They all look legit. I don't know. <laughs> I smell you smell it too? <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> we we got to figure this shit out. This is, this is weird. <laughs> Why is this smell like tuna? Someone played some fucking trick on us? Is it you? It might be me because I can't smell it. <laughs> <laughs> He's allergic to tuna. He is. This is bad. Joe. This is bad. <laughs> So I can't, I can't smell it. <laughs> so we had a bunch of new people. Is the Ronaldo clean? <laughs> if anyone has 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 is new to the show, uh, just to let you guys know we have two. This is uh, episode two sixteen. They've come out every single week. There's three things you can count on the Life Raven Shadow. That's what death taxes and trick or treat radio every Friday morning. That's right. <laughs> Tuna fish radio. Uh, so every Friday morning. <laughs> Hold on, we, we can uncut to break in a minute. It yeah. smells like tuna fish. Did a tuna fish it's die in the wall? Weird. I don't know. So <laughs> smells like Unchained in here. <laughs> can, I, can I smoke in here now? Would that make it better? Maybe. <laughs> what the fuck was I talking about? Oh, uh, new people. Yeah, welcome. So <laughs> Wednesday, yeah, welcome new people. If you're listening, uh, Wednesday we do this live from 9 p.m. till about 12:30. My 12 name 30. is Maji. I'm a new listener. I sent you a delicious tuna casserole in the mail. <laughs> UPS ground, what the fuck? <laughs> so Wednesday nights, we do this yeah, live, yeah. and then Friday Friday mornings, we drop it on iTunes, Stitcher Radio, Google Play, and our website, trickertreeradio.com. Uh, we love hearing from folks, so if you guys want to send us a voicemail, email, you can do so by sending it to podcast at trickertreeradio.com. All right, Raven Shadow, you sit down to watch I Am Not a Serial Killer. You yeah. probably eat a tuna casserole. <laughs> and I, open, I open the windows, <laughs> have the candles going. Tell me what happens. What, uh, hap what, what do you do to prepare? Oh, I like some incense. Yes. You know, I like the, I like the, the, the mowed grass. Uh, incense. You mean like the Brady Boys video? <laughs> yeah, that's fun. That's fun. Because if you have the, you know, the fresh cut grass incense, you don't got to mow your lawn. You know what I mean? Oh, that's right, right. See what I did there? See what I did there? You know, order the pizza because it's easy and I can spread it out for a couple of days. You know, I like that. Plan ahead. And then I uh, turn my big fucking two hourglass over to watch the sands of time flow over as I put this movie on. And then I lay a butt and strap on. Do you love a scary what the fuck? Story? Do you love to dance? The big scary monster haunts at midnight is a collection of dark songs about sex, love, death, revenge, and the end of the world. Brought to you by Electro Shock and the Dead. 
iTunes, Google Music, Amazon, CD Baby, and all other digital distribution sites. Hey Deadites, I'm Christian. And I am Uncouth. We're good movies for bad people. And you're listening to Trick or Treat Radio. 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 This October, the Deadites return to the stage on which they made their name. In the room they made Dangerous. October 15th, it's trip-hop goddess Mary Catman. The nerdcore sounds of Agents of Chaos and the evil grooves of rhetoric. And then, it's the dead, it's the rad, it's the funky, it's the Deadites. October 15th, Rock and Shock Weekend, it's the best night of the best weekend of the year at the Cove Music Hall in beautiful Worcester, Massachusetts. It's the return of the Deadites Halloween Extravaganza, hosted by the voice of Talk Without Rhythm, El Goro. I'm Kevin. And I'm Rick. And we're your hosts of the Radio Violenta Podcast. Join us as we drink and stumble our way through Italian and cult cinema. Follow us on Facebook. And subscribe to us on iTunes and Stitcher Radio. We are back on Trick or Treat Radio. Mars, you're on the phone. <laughs> that was like a longer than normal break, too. So, we never found out the, uh, what? Where the tuna is coming from. They don't, they don't smell. We didn't I find out where the tuna from. came from. your feet. But it's gone it's not now. not my feet. Here's your feet. No, wait, actually, it's gone. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and so is Raven Shadow. <laughs> it's awesome. I'm so, hanging out here tonight with Chowder Man and Yeah, maybe he had a sh- he had a tuna fish sandwich before he got here. Chowder Man and tuna fish. Now, now all you have to do is like inhale the the uh, the scent of tobacco and tuna fish. It smells like my youth. Well, we are going to review a movie right now. We're going to talk about the film. I am not a serial killer. All right, you ready? For what? I have some info. For this movie? Yeah. All right. The SL, the Sex of the Liberian, yes. texted me yes, and said, the movie you guys are reviewing is based on a book by Dan Wells. Yep. Yes, The main true. character is a kid named John Cleaver. Uh, and... Uh, the rest of it was uh, her yelling at me because she was angry that we were reviewing it on a night she couldn't watch. But, uh, yeah, I didn't is know that this was based on a book. Yep. Is she a fan of the book, did she say? Uh, I think that she... It's I a mean, young adult a book. Which is weird because I felt like it was a full-out adult movie. Yeah, it definitely seemed that way, yeah. But then again... Young like, adult kind of toes that line. Some of the Darren Shaw stuff, like the Demo- Demo- Demonenta, I don't know how to say it, stuff like that stuff means business. So this is based on a book, and it was directed by Billy O'Brien, and it was written by Christopher Hyde and Billy O'Brien, and it stars Christopher Lloyd, Laura Fraser, Max Records, Carl Geary, and Morgan Riso. So this flick here, uh, the synopsis, in a small Midwestern town, a troubled teen with homicidal tendencies must hunt down and destroy a supernatural killer whilst keeping his own inner demons at bay. Spiel, spoiler alert. Not really. Yeah. Well, first of all, let me just say that Max Records needs to update his uh, IMDb I picture. I agree, he's like 11. Yeah, I, I was, I was <laughs> waiting for the kid to show up, and he never showed up. <laughs> well, you know, maybe he likes his old photo. I don't know. <laughs> maybe, but goddamn, man, that's so misleading. Oh, wait, I remember him from uh, Where the Wild Things Are. Yeah. Okay, yeah. yep. 
And with a cool name, too, Max I'm Records. actually disappointed in a way that this was a book because I was uh, happy with all the kind of, uh, with the almost lost, like, literary style build that this film had. Like, it reminded me of some of the works of, of King or, or, you know, early King or Coots. So you were disappointed that it was It a actually book? was because I felt like... Because you uh, thought that it I was I felt like, like that's a tone that writers can't seem to get now. Yeah, like, yeah. They, they're so hung up on that movie-making three-act structure mm-hmm. that they're not able to, like, flex their nuts at all, you know? Whoa, whoa, flex <laughs> whoa, their nuts. Whoa. <laughs> that sounds fun. Oh, the, <laughs> I can do it. By the Watch. way, Raven, Raven J, that was pretty accurate. Whoa. What was? My picture of my penis. <laughs> oh, you checked during the break? Yeah. Oh, with the hockey mask? <laughs> There's no hockey mask, though. There's never been a hockey mask anywhere near my people. So that's just a ball. So. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So this flick was it was it was on our radar, and then Jakey Poo had mentioned something about it to us, and was like, "Hey, you guys going to review this?" You know, and I, I told him that it was it was sort of on our radar, but but we hadn't committed to it. And then he called in last week and uh, was was hoping we would do it. So it kind of pushed it up a little bit. So. Plus, we didn't have anything planned for this week specifically because there's not any huge, huge releases. Uh, next week, we'll talk about that shortly, which film we're going to review, which is a, a bigger release. But, so this flick kind of slotted in there kind of nicely. And uh, this is a... Would you guys call this a horror movie? Uh, no. Yes. It, I defer to what Dynamo said before about right. it would be in the horror section. Like right. I, yeah, like I, I mean, yeah, yeah. I mean, it, if you want to, if you want to generalize genres, then yeah, I guess you could say. You, well, you're this, the king of generalization. So, but this, but this is more of a th- uh, thriller than a. Are you positive? Flat out horror film. Yeah. What? What's the fucking difference? Oh, for Explain God's sakes! For God's Explain sakes! Explain the difference to me. <laughs> what is a thriller, MZ? A thriller is a movie that has you thinking it's more of a who done it sort of thing so horror movies are stupid i didn't say that <laughs> all horror movies i didn't are say that i didn't say that so here we here we go here we go so dino Mutt's gonna start getting all pissy now so what's the difference well I, if, if you'd shut up <laughs> he's not talking that if much you'd shut up and i'll tell you okay tell us well like i like i told you before the it it, it thrillers are a bit more intellectually creative than Horror films, and he and he's shaking his head. No, no, no. To a certain degree, they are. Well, while horror, while horror films are much more direct, they're much more in your face about what about what the product is. Look at look at this guy. He's rolling out his is, eyes in the back of his is head. Is The Shining a horror movie or a thriller? That's a horror movie. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> eh, wrong. <laughs> you don't even like the fucking movie, so what do you care? Uh, Jakey Poo's hanging out. Uh-oh. Hey. And he says, of course it's a horror movie, you Perfect jamoke. Timing. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah, he it says it's a horror movie. You said it wasn't. Oh, fuck you, Jakey Poo. <laughs> <laughs> well, something like uh, like Dangerous or oh, Fatal Attraction would be like a thriller, right? That's a thriller, right? That's right. a thriller. Right. This has a monster dismembering people. <laughs> Nothing. A, thr- a thriller with horror aspects. A thriller with horror. <laughs> Look at this guy! Look at this guy! <laughs> <laughs> he is, can't handle. Is it. Dog Soldiers a horror movie? Yes. Why? Well, for, well, for starters, it's 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 a werewolf film. All uh, pretty much all almost all werewolf films are horror films. So, uh, if this, if you, if. Why are we Lloyd. talking about this? If Christopher Lloyd was a werewolf in this for movie, then it would sake. Honor, be a horror movie. For Christ's sake, why am I always <laughs> under the microscope with you douchebags? <laughs> Fucking cocksuckers, each and every you one of you. You give the best explanations, that's why. So if Christopher Lloyd was a werewolf in this, it would be a horror movie. <laughs> no, that'd be dumb. <laughs> Oh, Jakey Poo says MZ must have given the best book reports. <laughs> <laughs> Did you ever have to do uh, a book report and dress up as the person you were doing a book report about? Stroke one out and swallow it, you bitch. Whoa! Whoa. You can't say that anymore. Whoa. Did Have you? Are you talking to me, Jakey Poo, or was that the book you did? 
<laughs> what the fuck was that? <laughs> you just killed Dynamo. Oh, what a shame that would have been. <laughs> hey, well, he just killed you. He's 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 choking on his puffs. You okay, man? Raven J says the Wraith. Is the Wraith horror or science fiction? No, uh, no. I've never seen the Wraith. Cemetery man. Horror. Well, that is smart and has... Yeah. That's smart. Yeah, well, uh, apparently at some point, horror films... At, as far as intelligence levels in horror films go, there's a movie that has to be at the top. Jakey Poo says, well, I'll go fuck myself. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Cornelius is hanging out. What's up, buddy? Oh. Hey, Cornhead. Hey. <laughs> What's up, CB? Uh, Drive, Drive Jacket Mark asks, how much would I have to donate for Raven Shadow to be my butler for the day? <laughs> how that's, much you got? That's going to cost 1000 Yeah, And a pack and, of smokes. And, and, a pack, and a carton of smokes <laughs> and travel. Fair. And a beer. Plural. <laughs> so, and someone to get him through the airport, because you know he yeah. just can't do that. <laughs> <laughs> I need a regular. An escort. Yeah. And a bed. So Jakey He's tired Poo, of sleeping on the couch. Jakey Poo says, by MZ's rationale, a non-supernatural slasher is not a horror movie. Whoa. Yeah. yeah sure. Friday the 13th, Psy- not a horror movie. Psycho. Not a horror movie. Horror movies. Well, by your rationale, they're not. They're thrillers. No. <laughs> I didn't say that. Uh, first time Michael's hanging out. He says, "Evening, family." I see MZ and Dynamo are discussing things calmly again. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, things don't change around here. Dry, dry jacket. Mark says, "I doubt they would let him into Australia." <laughs> 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 yeah, I don't think you get into Australia, Raven Shadow. What me? There's a lot of bad not night now. A lot of nice people now, but do originally. You, do you have your passport still? I do. Yeah. Oh, yeah. okay. I got. Yeah, it's it's valid. You know where it is? Yeah, I might need to. <laughs> I have it real close to me. <laughs> what, are you going to get out of Dodge? I don't know. Is I'm saying I have a bag. Did you kill someone? No. Okay. No. <laughs> no. <laughs> Not yet. No. 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 no does, does his lungs count? Yeah. Those two fucking guys. <laughs> okay. So this uh, suspense thriller about a young boy who lives <laughs> in a small Midwestern town. Yes. Who's... Uh, uh, who, a small Midwestern town, which is plagued by a series of uh, grisly serial killings. Yep. Uh, almost Jack the Ripper-like serial killings, yep. where the killer is taking a organ, or it comes out later, a body part each time. Uh, very Jeepers Creepers-ish. And this, cha- this uh, kid, who is obsessed with serial killers, who I thought was charming, but a bit of a cliche, uh, yep. Uh, sets out to try to figure out who it is. Yep. It's pretty accurate, right? Ah. Yeah. You did it better uh, better than IMDb. It ain't that difficult, no, though. No, it's not. No. <laughs> so, uh, Cornelius says, uh, nothing much is going on. MZ was a lot calmer with facial hair. Ooh. Am, sure. I, am, I, am I really? Yeah, I don't know about that. Yeah. <laughs> am I really? <laughs> not so sure about that. So this flick here, I, I feel like it had, it kind of had a bit of an old school feel to it. I don't know why. I can't really pinpoint it. I think it was because of the, uh, I think it was because of the, um, the credits, the opening credits, and the score. It, I just felt that that it had a, a, an older feel to it. Did it was very Stephen King like, I thought. Yes. Yes. So that could be what I was thinking of. Definitely. Obviously, Silver Bullet specifically. Yes. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. For sure. Very very. A more mundane version of it, I guess, for a lack of a better way to put it, but very phantasm-ish in the sense where it's like the young adult uh, coming to grips with his young adulthood and, you know, uh, in a town besieged by a supernatural menace. Mm -hmm. And also the setting of the, you know, undertakers. Yeah, for sure. So uh, maybe that's it. I just (laughs) couldn't pinpoint exactly why it made me think of that, but... Yeah, definitely this had kind of a, you know, 80s Stephen King movie adaptation mm-hmm. film yeah. feel to it. So, and uh, it also features Christopher Lloyd, who we mentioned, who mm-hmm. plays uh, Doc, Doc Brown in uh, Back mm-hmm. to the Future, mm-hmm. if, if you're not familiar. 
He should be. Yeah. And in Suburban Commando with Hulk Hogan. <laughs> oh, yeah. I almost forgot about that. <laughs> Actually, can, I did forget about it. How can you forget that, man? <laughs> and I, I, just, I like the way this movie WTF was. WTF, guys. He was Reverend Jim in Taxi. Yeah. Yeah, that's yeah. That's right. I like the way this movie was shot. Yes. I don't know what, like, it, it's not, like, you know, outstanding. Like, I, I'm not going to be like, oh, this guy's the best fucking director in the world. But he's done a, a couple of films. He did Isolation, The Hybrid, and this. Which I've never seen any of the other ones, so I'm not really familiar. Now, it, it, in some scenes, not the um, the morgue scenes, I would especially say, but more of the exterior scenes like this. It, it seems like the colors are muted yep. slightly. Yeah, yeah. To give that to give that '80s look, to give that eighty '80s feel, which it it captures. You know, not a hundred percent, but you know, it, it's passable. It works. And this film. Was was definitely modern because they had cell phones and yeah, computers. you know computers and and things of that nature. So, but it just had that familiar feel to it, and I think that for that's something that we could po- possibly explore. But that's something that's been making a a comeback as of late. A lot of films have had that kind of familiar '80s feel, whether or not they're based in the '80s, you know. And I think that that's for for us who are the consumers who are buying the movies and renting the movies and whatever. Like, I think that's probably not a, not a bad thing to go in that direction. Uh, it's also, you know, an aesthetic that people like. So these people that are directing films now, they grew up with this. So it feels familiar to them and that's what they want to do. You know, it feels very natural too. It feels, it, there's a, it feels very organic. Yeah. Very real. Yeah. I think it has a lot to do with the fact that this was shot in small town, Minnesota, which, yeah. which, I absolutely love. I love it when films like this are shot in very small towns, uh, low population, you know, they, and they're just there to shoot a film, and they get some shots of some, you know, some actual residents there. It gives mm-hmm. an authenticity to the to the to the location, which in turn gives it authenticity to the film. I th- I, I think it looks fantastic with that with with that aspect in mind. And one thing I will say is I, 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 I liked the characters in this. And I really like the relationship between, um, let, me, let me pull up the, the character's name. It was uh, Christopher Lloyd's character and his wife, uh, Crow- the Crowleys. Uh, I, I really like their relationship. You know, I thought that, that, was, that they had a nice relationship. And, and the kid who plays uh, John Cleaver... I also thought he was fairly likable despite what was going mm-hmm. on with him. And I just thought that it was a fairly likable cast and there was a lot going on in this that a lot to like, I guess. A little uneven. Um, the John Wayne Cleaver character, I, th- mm-hmm. I mean, I think he's really, really good. I have a problem with him working in the morgue, though, um, in in the fact that here you have this this kid apparently who's still in high school now i mean i don't know the the legalities i don't know if it's different from state to state or national or whatever but i don't know of any high school student that works in a morgue now i know now i know that his mother works there how many high school students do you know a few (laughs) and that's scary (laughs) and and i just i just think it's kind of Unusual to have a. It's a uh, family business. Oh, Jesus. Well, you get to, this is a film discussion show. Yes, not a it is. And, and, yes. And actually, I mean, he, he could be 18. They didn't really say his name, right? His age, I mean. His age. What I say? Yeah. Well, age. he's in high school, so I'm going to assume that he's 17. He could be 18, but, but also I'm figuring the fact that it, if this kid is, is as psychologically troubled as he is. His mother wouldn't allow him to work in the morgue. I mean, I, I would think maybe, maybe, if you if you apply for a job at a morgue, you got to go through some sort of yeah. psychiatric uh, so so evaluation or I, something. I don't maybe so. I don't know. So, no. so you're giving parenting tips. <laughs> better like better should, me than you. He should stay home and watch Hostel too. Be- better me than you. Better me. Better than you. me How than you. How do you think? Yeah. Well, f- look at you. I think the only thing that matters is if his if his mother thinks that he's 
that he can accept what's going on in there. Sure. I think that's all that matters. Yeah, but she knows that he's troubled, so why well, would I think she she's, try that? I think we get to see her getting to how troubled he is. Like, I think yeah. she just assumed he was a normal kid before. Jakey Poo has an interesting comment. He says, it's definitely rare, but a lot of funeral homes are family businesses. It's odd, but not unheard of. It's odd and macabre. <laughs> <laughs> yes. There could be a special mentorship program. Yeah. I mean, there could be. <laughs> and I, know what you're and I don't think he's 18. He was trick-or-treating. Well, yeah. But to be fair, have you, he rides a, <laughs> have you, you heard know, the name of the show? He's, trick <laughs> he's trick or treating. He's, he rides a bike. He doesn't drive a car. He's in high school. He's probably sixteen. I'm guessing. Yeah. I don't know. I, ju I just think there might be a state law that that prohibits that. That's all I'm saying. You know, that's where I. Well, the state yeah. law that prohibits you from being near a school. No, we, <laughs> I'm serious. I'm like, I don't know. Maybe there is. I don't know. But I just, I just thought it was unusual. And Family think, business or not, I just think that's unusual. I think it's too, like, you know, I think any parent. Yeah. Minnesota mortuary <laughs> bylaws. He's talking to his fucking phone to try Jesus. to find out. Well, the bylaws. At least we're hearing him and it's not his phone. Minnesota Jesus Christ. Jakey Poo says it might have been in the book in more detail, but from what I understand, his mom let him do that as a way to deal with the dark stuff. That's what I was gonna say. Like a way of getting the morbid stuff out of his system. To see the normal aspect of it. The, yeah, if you're, the, if you're around like something, like, it'll des desensitize yeah. you, so right? So de demystify the, you know, the, the Jasons. Maybe to see how an actual, how the body is, is how harm is inflicted on the body. So it's not like the sexy movie stuff. No, I, get, I get it. I get yeah. it. I mean, and not I, mean I, thought, I thought of that too. I mean, yeah. that went through my head too, but I'm thinking, <laughs> uh, I don't know. Also, I, you know, this I'm town not too sure. seems pretty poor. And if there's an extra set of hands to get the amount of work that they need done, done. I, I just don't see. I, I don't see a problem with it. Uh, Drive Jack and Mark says I tried to do. I tried to do work experience in the morgue in high school. They said no, and then asked if I needed someone to talk to. <laughs> 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 but it's it's his mom runs it. I, I see no problem with it. As Next. far as the st as far as the characterization and the story goes. Yeah. Okay. I see no problem okay. with it. All right. You need to be 17 to work with dead bodies in Minnesota. You need to be 18 to watch Hostel 2. <laughs> yeah, that's that's one of the bylaws in uh in Minnesota. Oh. I did like the 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 buddy here. Um I also liked uh his characters in the character's interaction with the Flash Gordon of the school, the bully. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I thought they had some great stuff. I particularly enjoyed the uh the the cardboard line. Uh, yes, Mars. <laughs> why, why was he Flash Gordon? Flash Thompson. Did I say Gordon? He said yeah, Gordon. he said Gordon. Because oh, okay. he goes to space. <laughs> <laughs> He's a football. He plays for the New York Jets. Right. No, sorry, Flash Thompson, the bully. Jakey Poo says it's definitely, it definitely is on the nose a bit. So we got Flash Thompson. We got the bully. Yeah. MZ hates bullies, as we know. Yes. <laughs> and I can... Uh, and I can um, I can absolutely uh, sympathize with this character because, I mean, I was considered a freak back in the day because I was a big horror fan and everyone thought that I would grow up to be... He's... Uh, Dynamo. What? Knock your crap off. Not doing nothing. Yeah. Oh, well, here we have a... Uh, Where... Uh, hold on. We, this is from your past, MZ. And anybody who's been bullied as much as I have in my life knows that if you're going to get picked on, you want everybody to die. <laughs> oh, is that true? That's very true. You want everyone to die? Yes, and I still, I still stand by that <laughs> statement. It's kind of a generalization. <laughs> um, you know, I mean, I, I, I had everybody thinking that I was going to grow up to be a serial killer, that I was going to be killing. And look people. how you turned out. Yeah, I haven't killed a single person yet. <laughs> yet. <laughs> <laughs> he may kill Dynamo before the end of the night, but <laughs> <laughs> I smell fucking tuna fish again. What the fuck? What? It hasn't hit me yet. Oh, this is so weird. The running tuna bomb. I don't... Oh, wait. Now I smell it. <laughs> the running <laughs> tuna bomb. <laughs> oh, it's like it follows. <laughs> 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 what the fuck? Is something smoking? Like, I don't, like, what would cause that? I smell like, it now. I've it's smoked, very faint, but I smell I've it. I've smoked a lot of shit. Never have I ever smoked anything that smelled <laughs> like tuna. tuna fish. <laughs> you know. Not even tuna fish. No, I don't eat tuna fish. <laughs> Question. Yeah. Uh, anyone at this table ever smoked bananas? I'm sure Raven Shadow's tried. Uh, I don't think so. Interesting. Does it smell like bananas? 
<laughs> I know you have. Yeah. yeah. I've heard the story many times. That's bad times. I'm willing to learn. <laughs> Jesus, we'll make this fucking smell go away. It's in my mouth. What is it? Is it your ding dong? Is it your ding dong? <laughs> ding dong, ding dong, yo. No. All right, well, we got to talk. Come on, let's get back to this movie. It's in the air. Th- the hell with the tuna fish. <laughs> I liked her. No, I, um, now, as far as this, the, uh, the character of, what's his name? Uh, Cleaver. Yes, John. John Cleaver. John Wayne Cleaver. Yeah. Um, John Wayne Gacy a little. <laughs> well, yeah, I mean, I mean, I mean, Cleve is a bit on the nose for the mortuary, yeah, right? Yeah, in the, Cle- yeah, in the Crowleys, yeah, 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 yeah. They, they, yeah, the names were pretty on the nose, um, which, hey, what are you gonna do? You know, I love this part. That's also two super American apple pie things, right? John Wayne and the Cleavers from Leave It to Beaver. Yeah, yeah, I thought okay, his name fair. was a little. I mean, I guess that's his name in the book, but um, his character has a great deal of layers involved and uh I really enjoyed his character too um from being innocent and uh forthcoming with information about anything you know he comes across as a very intellectual person but in in reality he's just oh I don't know if you want to call him a, like a savant or whatever but um, his 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 uh, psychological issues I find to be very interesting in this movie, and yeah. uh, I think I think they were I think he played him out really I, really well. It reminded in, me in great with, yeah. with 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 great layers involved, and uh, it reminded me a little bit of like a younger Dexter at times, you know, at times because he talked about having his 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 rules right. Yeah, not you know. Dexter had his, and even like going to his friend's house and his explanation of why yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, we need to hang out right now. Yep. Yeah, we need to do this. Yeah, like, why? He because wants, he know. needs to have his he needs to have his uh, his normalcy. Yeah, he does. He he's trying to make himself better, but there are certain situations in his life that prevents him from doing that. And that sounds very cliche because it does happen in other films and we've seen them. But when it comes to Cleaver. I don't. I. I can't really put my finger on it, but there's something just very, very different about him and the way that he portrays it and how he deals with it. Here's uh Here's some interesting stuff going on in the chat room. And uh, well, first of all, Jakey Poo says that tuna spliff, <laughs> Raven Shadow. <laughs> uh, pass. Uh, Drive Jack and Mark says, "Yeah, me too. I went to a Christian school. Reading Stephen King had me labeled a Satanist." It's interesting. The first time Michael says, I went to a Catholic school as well and got in trouble for reading Lovecraft, Howard, and King. I was popular and everyone liked me. <laughs> Burn him. I don't agree with that. Sorry. <laughs> you, were, uh, you were a big dork. You, Tiny, <laughs> Silica, and, and a few others. I'm not saying that we weren't dorks. I'm just saying that. Well, yeah, because pe- people liked dorks back then. Nah, I just... That's, wow. No one thought I was going to fucking kill him. Drive, <laughs> Drive Jack and Mark says, I was once told this is how Ted Bundy started. Oh, my Jesus. God. Jesus. <laughs> well, you're a well-adjusted, uh, yeah. you know, adult now. They Drive can't Jack hurt you Mark. anymore. Yeah. <laughs> All right. You're, be- you're better than that. <laughs> the people at the buffet once told me this is how King Kong Bundy started. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, Jakey Poo says, I love the barbershop scene. Yeah. So I like yes. this movie. Oh, oh yeah, 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 yeah. I, I really only have one major complaint about this movie, and I think it wrapped up a little too tightly. And I think that they kind of stole the music from Phantasm at the end. But otherwise... Uh, yeah, yeah. When you pointed it out, I could definitely see that. Yeah, but I mean, I, I think that... Uh, I really liked it. I liked all the characters. I thought the... Uh, I, I think he was Australian... Uh, therapist was just the type of weird thing that you know it was just weird enough that it seemed real. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think that uh, the mother's out of touchness yep. was yep. Uh, totally believable. I think the t- you know because I see it every day the twenty year old girl obnoxiousness was spot on. Yeah, and uh, I, I thought of you with that. <laughs> yep, and. Uh, <laughs> I think that, uh, yeah, I just think it's, you know, 
uh, I, I think as a whole, I think this movie worked. I think there's some cool effects in it. At the end, there's a very oh, yeah. cool effect. Very cool, yeah. Uh, I oh, just think yeah, it yeah, wraps yeah. up a little too neatly. I don't know if that's how it wrapped up in the book, but I would have liked to have seen another page or two of Chase or something, you know, mm-hmm. to justify the films. I mean, once you get to the, you know, there's a... I, I say this a lot in 2016, uh, but there is an 88-minute uh, masterpiece version. Of yeah, this movie. I, I gotta say, I think it was. Let me get the the, the time here. Was it? Uh, it's like an hour forty-four or something. Hour like forty-four. Okay. Yeah, yeah. I got to yeah. agree because I was I was watching it this morning and it was like, I'm like, thirty-four minutes in and I'm like, I thought I watched like maybe an, almost an hour of this stuff already. I thought it was fucking two hours. It fucking felt like two hours. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> In the chat room, um, uh, Drive Jack and Mark also says, you guys watched the Ted, Buddy, Ted Bundy interview with Dr. Dobson? We were made to watch that in class to teach us about the evil of porn. Nice. I'm not familiar. No. Okay. Maybe that's on YouTube. I also didn't I'll go to a Catholic it. school, so yeah. I don't know if that's a prereq. I didn't go to any school at a lot. Okay, good. You go, didn't go to any school a lot? No, nah, like I, w- I was enrolled, enrolled, but I didn't show up often. <laughs> <laughs> so and, and, oh, go ahead, go ahead. No, I, I was just going to move on. So if you oh, had to no, Well, I was just going to start talking about People liked Lloyd. me. Yeah, go for it. I loved Christopher Lloyd in this movie. No one yep. called me Maz Baz. <laughs> <laughs> he had thing. such a... He was, at times, extremely sympathetic... And at other times, extremely creepy. Yeah, definitely. Very creepy. He he did an amazing job that, of, th- of just fucking with the viewer. Yeah, and I think that's one of the things that I really liked because I loved the in, like I loved the relationship between him and he and his wife. It was yeah. sweet. You know, it was. It was. It, so you saw sweet, that yeah. aspect, and then you'd see other aspects. You know. Right, right, and uh, he just becomes, for lack of a better term, a monster. I mean, How? he's just, he's just. And they had a I'm really interesting. A they had a really interesting relationship too. Like, like Jonathan Harkin did not at any point give Dracula a bath. <laughs> yeah, Ooh. or help him take a piss. Right. <laughs> <laughs> blah blah. Put down the lid. <laughs> Put down the lid. But uh, yeah, I, mean, for me. I, I really, I really First dug buckle. this. There was some weird geography in this movie Second too. Second buckle. Like, uh, there's a couple times we are led to believe people dragged bodies off screen, and then they were all the way across town. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But uh, you know, I don't, I don't know. I, I all in all, I, I liked it. I, there's, there's a scene. That it, it said, this is a horror scene right here, Monster Zero. This this scene yeah. right here is like <laughs> yeah. is like re- probably the best done horror scene of the year so far. Well, maybe maybe I uh, you know because I was paying more attention to the psychological aspects of of uh, Cleaver, and maybe that's why I'm viewing it more as a thriller than I am as a full blown horror film. Beaver Cleaver, Beaver Beaver Cleavage. <laughs> I'm gonna look up the definition of thriller. <laughs> It's You'll see thriller. Michael Jackson. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you see the co- the cool principal. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Actually, I, I I assure you, in 2016, there is no doubt anything involving Michael Jackson is horror. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's true. So there's one of the big first. We're watching the studio yeah. here. The one of the big first reveals. Oh, get Kermie out of the way. Yeah, can't see it. But he, so he wasn't that smart, right? Right. <laughs> because, I, I mean, he even points that out, you know. Yeah, he it you know it shows in his schoolwork. He's not, he's not all that intellectual. But like I said, he's no. He's I'm, a no he I'm meant, talking about know, Christopher, Christopher Lloyd. Lloyd. Oh, oh, Christopher Lloyd. Oh, oh. He was really smart, and he only got bad grades because uh, the teachers were like the teachers that CM Punk is talking about in his speech at the after UFC fight. <laughs> <laughs> he's like, they don't support you. Oh, I don't even know what the teachers are like these days, so maybe they do. Uh, they like Oracle, super, super. Well, pretty. that's you. <laughs> that's all we have to go by. But right. there's, there's, there's a there's an interesting scene with Christopher Lloyd and uh, 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 John. John Wayne Cleaver. Yeah, Crowley and Cleaver. 
in the church that just hits like oh, a, yeah, yeah, that yeah. hits like an apex of just unbelievable just an, in, an just an incredible <gasps> amount of of, of it hits like intensity an apex, in like an apex predator out of nowhere <laughs> With an with an incredible amount of intensity, and you could just you could cut that with a knife, you know, to to quote Jr. And uh, cuts like a knife. And it's it's the tension you could feel the tension in that scene, and yeah, it's yeah. just absolutely yeah. incredible. I I thought that was that that was my favorite scene in the whole movie was the scene yeah. in the church. Yeah, it it's it's certainly it's definitely an interesting movie, and. I think Jakey wanted us to talk about it because he thought it would be a little divisive or, uh, you know, maybe just a good conversation piece. Mm-hmm. And it's it's just, a, it's not for everyone. I could see people hating this movie. And I actually know one of my buddies had seen it and he hated it. He's like, oh my God, you watch that movie? It's terrible. And I, you know, and I hadn't seen it at the time. So that's all I had to go on. But I think it's a well-made movie. I think it's an interesting flick. I think there's a lot of cool stuff going on. Mm-hmm. It's, it's definitely a bit of a. I, I hesitate to use the word slow burn, the term, but it definitely is a, a bit of that. It doesn't think? get. It doesn't get right to the, to the action right away, you know. But there's enough, like the scene we just saw early on, that kind of gives you some things here and there, you know. So, uh, Jakey Poo says, "Love the scene where he's talking to a psychiatrist and he's looking at the woman crossing the street." Oh, oh yeah. yeah, oh yeah, yeah that was yeah. him looking. I was very surprised. Yeah, I was like, that's a great, a great peek into what's going on in his head and his right. thought process. Yeah. Um, interestingly enough, this book has a sequel. Yeah, I think it has a couple. Yeah, which is kind of I don't know. Like, he better take this act on tour because I'm not positive how many monsters are going to come to fucking <laughs> South Grafton where they film this. So is is this movie based on the book or on the trilogy or or the? I think it's based on the first. Based book. on the, just first the first book, yeah. just the first book. The yeah. second book is about a friend of uh, uh, the monster showing up looking for him. Okay. Mm-hmm. What kind of friend? Ooh, monster. I'm friend. gonna read these books. Yeah, though. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I'm gonna. I'm gonna put. I'm gonna get Audible. I'm gonna read them. I'm gonna put my headphones. You're on. not gonna read them. I'm gonna be naked. They're gonna read them to you. Mm-hmm. I hope it's a good. I hope it's a young boy's voice. It's me. Yeah, that's not it's read good. to you by Gilbert <laughs> Gottfried. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> Christopher Lloyd <laughs> You're not gonna kill anyone Come back Look at your phone <laughs> He's telling him to look at his phone So that he can trick him into coming back yes. It's called subtext <laughs> Yes I took the liver yeah. <laughs> I think that this monster Took things to Jafar uh. <laughs> And I, I think the I think I mentioned it earlier, but I, I dug the score it, despite having yeah. uh, you know there were similarities to Phantasm toward the end. But yeah, I'm, I'm not familiar with the score to Phantasm, but I thought the score was really good. Yeah, I, especially I agree. towards the end. But that's where you said it was most familiar. Oh, I, don't, I don't mind. I just I just feel like it was definitely a it cross. It like it, yeah, it crossed the it, it it for some reason. It crossed that line where I'm like, "Oh, this is cool." Like, I this is like when you hear a band that sounds like another band. Yeah. Like, you know, if I hear a band that sounds like Poison, I'm like, "That's cool." If this band does like nothing but a fish tie, then like obviously, like, <laughs> I feel like you know. nothing but, but a pretty good time. <laughs> <laughs> so I don't have a ton more to say. Do you, anyone else have anything else they want to bring up before we head to the verdict here? Nah. No, I really like this. I I hope they. I don't know. I, I, I want to say I hope they make more, but it doesn't matter. I'm just going to read the uh, read the book. Just the end. I, I don't. I, I think we earned a little more of a. You want a little bit more from this? Yeah, like I I just think that it it did the low budget thing where it felt like a slow burn movie, mm-hmm. and then it turned into a no burn movie, <laughs> kind of like you know. Like. Yeah. All right. Well, I guess we'll go to the verdict. <laughs> Trick or treat, baby. I wonder if people would say you're a trick or a treat. Trick or treat, motherfucker. All right, kids, it is verdict time. We're going to let you know whether this flick was a trick or a treat and any final thoughts we may have, Michael Raven Shadow. Yeah, overall, I did enjoy this. Um, I would agree but slightly disagree. Um, 
with Dynamo statement earlier where I truly would have enjoyed it, enjoyed it more had it really been 88 minutes. I think the, the length did take me out of it. So what part are you disagreeing with? Um, you said it been a masterpiece at 88 minutes. I don't yeah. know if that, but I think... Um, 88 minutes! <laughs> <laughs> Marty, you've got to make this movie 88 minutes! You get one for that. <laughs> 88 minutes per hour. <laughs> All right. Drive Jack and Mark says, as a reaction, my best mate and I made a cassette recording of a fake satanic ritual, and the principal took it. They held a school assembly and said we were been touched by Satan. <laughs> oh, man. Show us on the doll where Satan touched you. <laughs> <laughs> That's crazy, Mark. Oh man. Wow. man, Australian Satan's the worst Satan too. <laughs> oh, man. That's where that's where in the 1800s they brought all the Satans they didn't want. <laughs> <laughs> all right, sorry, Raven Shadow, go ahead. Yeah, so I mean, I don't know if it'd be a masterpiece at that length, um, but I, I would have I would have enjoyed it more. I definitely was out um, more than I was in towards the end. So um, I would say it's a tepid treat. All right, MZ. Uh, this was this this is a treat. Uh, I I did enjoy this. Um, I f- felt a lot of sympathy, yet a lot of fear towards uh, uh, John Wayne. Cr- uh, d- t- towards a couple of characters in this movie, actually, because you never knew really what was going to happen with the both of them, uh, especially when they got together, uh, Crowley and uh, uh, John John Wayne. Cleaver. Cleaver, yeah, John Wayne Cleaver. Jesus, what a name! JYC. And uh, uh, although I did feel a little underwhelmed at the end, agreed. Uh, I I thought um, maybe maybe that's maybe it is making in line for a sequel. Who knows? But uh, I mean, I didn't know about the other books. But I mean, let's be honest, MZ. The monster was stymied in a, in a way that like usually doesn't even slow down Larry Fine. So right. Right. Exactly. Complete with appropriate foley sound. It's like boom. Yeah, right. <laughs> I know, right? And uh, but but uh, I I'm not gonna say that this is a bad movie. This was a very well made movie, very well lit movie. I love the score, the performances by uh, by Christopher, Christopher Lloyd, Lloyd and, and Max Records and Max Records. What an awesome name. Uh, I, I thought did a very good job in carrying this film. I love their chemistry together, and uh, yeah. this is a treat. I, I did enjoy this. Mars Man. All right, and uh, just to follow up, Drive Jack and Mark says, the thing is, the whole satanic panic thing that was going on at the time was what got me into horror in the first place. Yeah, right, right. <laughs> I, that's how I used to dye my hair. <laughs> I love satanic s- panic. Yeah. I, I love Satan. Do you guys remember in the uh, in the eighties on Sunday nights on one of the, like the weird channels? You already we hit by a dart. Mm-hmm. Um, <laughs> I just smelled the tuna fish again. Oh damn it! There was like a Christian like infomercial that would play like metal videos and under that guise of satanic stuff. But they I would, love Dick. Yes. <laughs> no, I was too busy watching real TV. Oh, real fucking TV! Yeah. I'm dying to fucking know what that was. Yeah, married with children. Do it's do always it never always, been there before. It's no always a sitcom. Yeah, you fucking love disgusting, vile horror movies and sitcoms. Yes, I do. And Transformers. Don't forget that. Of course not. Never knock out the door. <laughs> no one cares. All right. Cornelius says, "I'm out. Good night." All right, Cornelius. Thanks you, for bud. stopping in, bud. He also says, "I liked Cemetery Man, guys." Nice. Awesome. I'm very pleased to hear that. Not yes, a horror movie. Good. Drive Jacket Mark says, I was touched all over. <laughs> by, Ooh, by well. <laughs> so, no, I think this, this flick was fun. It definitely pulled on the, the nostalgia strings for me. It definitely felt like a movie, like I think someone mentioned Silver Bullet, like that style of movie where there was enough action to keep you interested throughout, but there was kind of a really nice story being told underneath as well. And I think it had a nice, a nice sampling of kind of everything, of... Of, there was some oh, drama. There was there was some good uh, touching moments. There was some good Ooh. there was some good um, character play, and I really felt for the characters. Like I, I I think they did a good job of making you sympathetic towards all of them. There wasn't I don't think there was anyone in this movie that I hated. You know, no. 
So I think they did a really nice job with this flick. And, you know, it's definitely not everyone's cup of tea. No. Like, like I said, my, a buddy of mine hated it. And I know some other people probably may not like it that much. But I think it's a really well-made film. And if you grew up with the 80s horror, you know, like we've been talking about a lot of the Stephen King type stuff, I, I think you dig it. And I think you should definitely give it a look because uh, we all thought it was a treat because I'm going to say treat as well. So I am... I Am Not a Serial Killer is now available on Video On Demand. What? What? Kneel before Vod, for <laughs> Christ's sake. All Jesus. that for that. <laughs> so if you guys want to check it out, you can go ahead and uh, pick it up on uh, any VOD. If you want, I would recommend going to uh, when we release this episode on Friday. We'll have a link to it, so you can click on that link, and uh, we get a little cut of that from Amazon. So uh, go ahead and check. What? I'm, I'm I'm watching what Monster Zero's watching. What are you watching, Monster Zero? Oh, get out of here! Well, it's pointing right in his fucking direction. What are you watching? Yeah. Tell him. Tell everyone. No. Share with the group. You know what? Give me that phone back. You tell, get it uh, uh, Rich, you tell him. It was. Uh, oh, I think he's doing something. Am I going to ruin what? Yeah, you are. I'm not going to say nothing. He's, so he's, he's shut your mouth. Oh, Jesus. All right. So Jeez. we all say treat. So go ahead and check this flick out. And here's the barbershop scene that yeah. uh, Jakey Poo was talking about. The yeah. scene in the uh, in the bar, though, I yeah, loved. Yeah, I yeah. love like, oh, it's going to fucking go downhill. All right, next week, guys. Are you ready for this? Speaking of Jakey Poo, oh, we are going to be joined next week, a team-up of oh epic God. proportions. Live phone sex. Live phone sex with CDR and yep. Jakey Poo from the cult. Oh, muscle! And for the first time on <laughs> internet radio, yes, seaweed mommy. Oh, are you sure about that? Have we verified seaweed mommy? Uh, yeah. Uh, Is clam daddy gonna be with her? Yeah. <laughs> I'm a chow daddy. <laughs> Mussels, <laughs> butter, <Plankton>. lobster, <laughs> particles, <laughs> and the cult Tuna. of muscle will be joining us for Rob Zombie's Thirty One. <laughs> if you guys know the cult of muscle, you know why that's so exciting. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and I we hope I hope to hear from Wiley in some capacity because I, I think I think as you as the network is she the de facto uh, you know, Rob I, Zombie. I think as you as the network, like uh, you know, overlord, it was a good idea to keep them separated. Uh, in that case, that would have been bad. That would have been a bad thing to happen on the Elm Street kids. But uh, you know, I didn't separate anyone. Well, <laughs> you did incidentally. <laughs> I just thought it would be interesting to have those dudes on to do it because it is hitting VOD on the 16th. So when this episode drops on uh, Video On Demand, uh, 31 is going to be hitting VOD. So if you guys want to play along at home, you can check it out over the weekend or whatever. And uh, we're going to be talking about it. it would be an interesting discussion for sure. I think we have folks here who like Rob Zombie some, and some folks who are, you know, in the middle. And then... Uh, if you if you guys ever check out Cult of Muscle, I think you know what 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 they. I'm nervous. I'll be honest. Generally feel about him. You're nervous about the film. I'm a big Rob Zombie fan, and he's only ever really stumbled once for me. And even well, if you've heard what everyone has said about it, it's it's more Rob Zombie. Yeah, but see, that almost makes me. I, I, I've sort of felt like. Uh, like there was a point that I didn't like John Cena's shtick. And then I liked it, and, and now it has almost got to the point where I don't like it again. Yeah. And that's kind of how I feel about Rob Zombie right now. Like, I'm sort of sick of the five-knuckle shuffle. Like, I was hoping after Lords of Salem, he gave me something more. Plus, I feel like for somebody who has done some really interesting stuff, this is probably his most, his least, I don't want to say original, because this is an idea that is r r rife for... Um, you gotta talk more into the mic, man. You you know this drill. This is a, <laughs> there you go. Yeah, my thing's moving a little on me. Uh, this is an idea that's ripe for you know expo exploration, but I just feel like this is the one. Like, and also if you hear him talk, it seems like he doesn't even give a shit about it. So why interviews and stuff? Yeah, he's just like ah, I I said I could just make any dumb horror movie and make money, and ah, here it is. You know, so like, <laughs> well, slow it down, bro. I'm not sure. <laughs> Uh, Jakey Poo says, hard but fair like our muscles and Ninja Gaiden and ghouls and ghosts. Oh, shit. 
So I, that's gonna be that's gonna be a blast. I can't a, wait to hang out with those dudes again. Is that a real team up game? Uh, Ninja Gaiden and Ghouls and Ghosts. No, it's two different games. Uh, I would like to see the teaming of that. Stranger Danger. That's what Jakey says. So that's gonna be a fun episode. And then also, I guess I'll announce this. It's the ink isn't quite dry. So if it doesn't happen next week, I'm confident that it'll happen very shortly after. So, but it looks like we are going to be rejoined by one of our favorite guests of all time, mm-hmm. the icon, the horror legend, the Stan Lee of horror, as Mars dubbed him. Right, Mars? Is that? The, yep. the, yeah, I did one thing. I did something. Yep, the Stan Lee of horror. We're yep. going to be joined next week by the one and only the great Tony Timpone. That's going to be awesome. From Fangoria, if you guys remember, yeah. he, man, he was the fucking man with Fangoria. Yeah, yeah, he 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 had a ball talking with us, and we had a ball talking with him, and uh, we get to relive it all over again. And he's got some really exciting stuff going on, so we're going to hear about that next week. And uh, just to shoot the shit, I mean, the guy's a legend. The guy's amazing. He's such he's a, one of the nicest guys ever. I, I don't want to rock up, you know, rake up shit, but I will be interested to see... If and I'm sure he does, but if he will speak about his thoughts on the state of Fangoria right now, so sure we can we can we can bring that up for sure. Uh, I think as we found out, he's he's willing to talk pretty much about anything, and you know he's he's got a lot of cool stuff going on with uh, Fantastic Fest. Uh, oh, I'm sorry, Fantasia. I, I always get those two confused. Uh, up in Montreal, he's got some stuff going on with uh, Monster Palooza. So we'll find all about that next week so we're going to do 31 with the cult of muscle and then we're also going to talk to tony timpone it's going to be a blast yeah. it's a yeah. summer it's a big fall annual an annual an annual yeah. yeah so you know what let's let's do this we did a question this week for for listener feedback let's do another for next week how about everyone's favorite fango moment or something relating to tony like if you guys read fango did you have a favorite issue how did fango impact you mm. how about that something like that you guys down yeah, with that? I am definitely down with that. So if uh, folks out there want to send us uh, some feedback, you can uh, send us a voice memo or an email to podcast at trickortreatradio.com or go to trickortreatradio.com and then just go ahead and click contact. You can leave an email or a voicemail right through there. So uh, let us know how Fangoria impacted you because I know that uh, it's something that's been very important to a lot of us here on the show. And it's where we, it was, that was our internet back in the day. That's where we got our news. I would say the first four pages of Fango yeah. was the internet. Yeah. Oh, sure. The Terra the terror Teletype and yeah. uh, all the upcoming news. Yeah. 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 Absolutely. Oh, so, film, the sure. film schedule. Sure. Sure. Video Some reviews. Awesome. Everything. Awesome yeah. stuff. So we're going to have Tony Timpone next week. And if you guys do have questions specifically for Tony that you've been dying to ask, let us know. And maybe we can try to work those in as well. So it's going to be a blast because I know Tony is uh, – you know, someone he's 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 touched a lot of lives, if you will, through his writing, and he's a super cool guy. So I think that is going to do it for this segment, though, and uh, we're going to go take a break, and we'll be back in a few moments, and we're going to talk about monsters, your favorite monsters, our favorite monsters. I'm your favorite monster. Well, I, you know, you just stole my thunder. Okay, that was going to be my answer. My pet monster. Is my favorite <laughs> monster. <laughs> All right, so let's cut to a break. Raven Shadow's favorite part of the show, and we'll be back in just a moment. The following message is a paid advertisement for the Cult of Muscle podcast. The Cult of Muscle. You're either in it or you're dead. It's the dawning of a new age. The halls of Valhalla have been shuttered. The heroes of yore have either retreated to the shadows or taken to capering for the amusement of the small folk. Their past glory is a distant memory. The barbells have been torn from their once puma-strong grips. The beards shown from their square jaws, only to be transplanted onto flannel-clad, puny weaklings with fingers barely powerful enough to strum a ukulele. The time has come, my brothers, to restore order from the chaos. No longer will our heroes be forgotten. No longer will their great deeds be viewed through a foggy lens of irony. Hear now our rallying cry as we scream it from the mountaintops, as we bellow it from iTunes and Libsyn and Facebook. It's time to join the cult, my brothers. So don your cloaks and enter the cult of muscle. I'm 
I'm Alex West. And I'm Andrea Subasati, and we are from the Faculty of Horror podcast. And you're listening to Trick or Treat Radio. I will be a barbell. What's up, y'all? It's me, the Yeti. Telling all the ladies that they couldn't be more fine and that we should knock those boots like Frankenstein. When I want to get my nerd on, I go to Facebook, and I go to the Trick or Treat Radio Facebook group. That's the place where I get to talk about all the hip new horror movies, all the cool comics, like comics, RPGs, video games, you name it, we're talking about shit on there. And you could not be any cooler if you were the coolest kid in school. Be the first kid on your block. To swing that cock over at the Trick or Treat Radio Facebook group. Just go to Facebook, search for Trick or Treat Radio, ask to join, and it's like Nerd Nirvana, baby, without the shotgun blast. This is the Yeti, signing out. See you at the Trick or Treat Radio Facebook group. Follow us on Twitter, at the Deluxe, thedeluxe.com, on trickortreatradio.com It's the soundtrack of the dams. Want a job? Yeah. So it's yours. How much does it pay? <laughs> <laughs> All right, we're going to talk about monsters. Yeah! MZ, you like monsters? I love monsters. All right, so we're going to talk about our favorite monsters. Right. Yeah, yeah. And... Let's see. Melissa sending me a message during the show. <laughs> yes, we got your we got your voicemail. It worked. So, we got some voicemails. I'm not sure which ones are about monsters and which ones are not. So, we may just kind of work the regular feedback into this segment, but uh why don't we go around Mars? This was your question. What was your what did you have in mind for the criteria of this when when you thought of this question? Zero percent criteria. So whatever you want it to for be. For me, the monsters that I've always been most attached to, cinematically anyway, are men in suits. Yep. Uh, you know, like I don't have like, uh, and also like ones that are right out in the open. You know what I mean, like. I'm not like uh, on Elm Street Kids. Recently, we discussed like not the the pros and cons of kind of not seeing the monster. Uh, I don't mind not seeing the monster if that's what the film calls for. You know what I mean? I didn't need to see the fucking Blair Witch. You know, I don't need to see Janis Joplin run around. Oh, I'm the Blair Witch. <laughs> but uh, like, <laughs> but like, uh, you know, for me, my two favorite monsters ever: Frankenstein and the Predator. Okay, love them. There you go. Yeah. We just or got Kyle Frankenstein. Okay. We just got Mars's. So, I actually hadn't thought of an answer yet. This was a, this was a tough one because it's, 
I mean, I have like a, a character who, who, who I, I, you know, it's a character that I like a lot. So I, I was thinking about, about that, but I don't know. MZ, did you, did you come up with the, your favorite monster? Uh, well, I'm always uh, attracted to the Japanese uh, men in rubber suits. Yes. Uh, ordeal. Not latex. No. Rubber. And, uh, you know, of course. Scaled for your pleasure. God, you know, Godzilla, Gamera, King Ghidorah, you know, King Kong, uh, although not really, I wouldn't put that into the Japanese aspect, but I'm talking about like the 1976 uh, Jessica Lange, uh, Lang. Lang, rather, film. Um, but also, uh, you know, uh, like, uh, like you also said, Dynamo, you know, Frankenstein, Bride of Frankenstein. I debated whether or not I would include Nosferatu into that Nosferatu. as well. I don't know if I would actually call him a monster. Why? <laughs> now you just be <laughs> crazy. He's a thriller. <laughs> no, 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 I, no, I wasn't sure. I wasn't exactly sure if I would call him a monster. I mean, he's. I'm not a monster. He, he. I mean, he does evil things but i mean he is uh, he's a vampire he's a he's a man who is a vampire right Do, would that make him a monster is he a dracula yeah <laughs> what is your problem now fat man <laughs> look you look in the mirror lately jesus <laughs> he can't handle it he can't handle it i no i'm i'm serious i don't know if i would actually call nosferatu or or any dracula for that matter i'm, I'm uh, a legitimate monster you know uh, uh, because i mean so what the fuck is he He's i don't just a I dude just say, yeah probably <laughs> hey just guys a i'm a dude with teeth and i like to bite people and suck their blood <laughs> but i'm on you guys but i'm with you can i sit here oh, let's hang out and watch movies <laughs> this seat taken uh, <laughs> is this seat this seat taken <laughs> <laughs> yeah you know my mom will drive your mom pick us up Hey, hello. How are you doing, Brian? <laughs> yeah. I wasn't exactly. I wasn't exactly sure. I mean, I could go either way with this. I mean, it doesn't really bother me. But um, no, Dynamo can go either way. Yeah, the Dynamo. <laughs> and, uh, but I mean, characters like that, you know, uh, and uh, also, um, uh, uh, bah, 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 bah. damn it, what's his name? Um, Lon Chaney uh, with. Um, Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde. I was or, thinking about, uh, I, I like the Mr. Hyde. You know, uh, the, another great one. And Lon Chaney's, pr you know, the greatest monster actor of all time, if you ask me. I mean, the guy was a mad genius. Um, yeah, <laughs> and, 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 I, I, and I would also go with Predator. I would go with... Uh, it's your favorite monster, not your favorite, <laughs> like... Fucking team of monsters. You okay, mean, you, all right. You, you feel the NFL one? team? All right, you want me to pick one? Pick one single one out of the. That's bunch shameful. I, <laughs> I would. I, I would probably pick the Bride of Michael Frankenstein. Vick. Michael Vick. <laughs> <laughs> He's my favorite monster. No, my least favorite. Yeah, no, I'll yeah. say that. Yeah, I, I would probably say the Bride of Frankenstein. Okay. Hmm. I was going to ask Dynamo why he picked the ones that he did, but he's not here. And I, I, now here's the thing: I don't want to, uh, you know, get details, but. Is the predator a monster, or is he just an alien? Mm. But that criteria. Yeah, yeah, and it's an interesting question, right? You know. Oh, what I mean? that's an interesting question. <laughs> it is a fucking interesting question. God damn. He's from another planet. Yeah, so like, if you, and I was thinking about that too. Like, so is monster more like a transformation or a beast? But you know, he can fly a spaceship. You know, most monsters can't <laughs> w work a hyperdrive. Are you sure? Have you seen Nosferatu drive uh, a spaceship? I have not seen that. His <laughs> fingers, his long little fucking things. He'd have to have a weird controls. He, I guess you could, like, he could drive one of those, like, that, like the, the chopper things with the, like, the suicide knobs. Yeah. But I don't know if he could, if he could press the buttons. Well, no, he can because he can fix himself. He has a utility belt. I don't know. <laughs> There's a lot going on there. He's got a helmet and a mask. He can build shit. Can monsters build shit? It's got a workstation. It's fascinating. Jesus Christ, this is terrible. It's great. <laughs> well, why don't you start spewing off a few names? No, I'm not going to spew off a few names because I'm trying to think of one. You can't even do that? I can, th I can do that. Well, then do it. Well, the first one that comes to mind, and one of my favorite monsters of all time, is 
Bob the Zombie. Oh. From Day of the Dead. Okay. From Day of the Dead, yes. Because, in the, and, and the reason I was, was going to ask everyone why uh-huh. they're fair, it was the fair monster, so think of that. But for me, I think it's because I, I find zombies to be interesting. I, I actually, I find zombie movies to be interesting, and, and I don't think there's been too many good ones done lately. But I, I find that they bring out the worst in human nature, and, and humans end up being the monsters. You know? Right. Oh, sure, sure. So I think in terms of that movie, Bub is almost trying to take a turn in the other direction, you know, to be... Hu- no, no, whatever. Oh, come on, it's freezing in I'm here. It's freezing in here. I have no fucking shoes on and shorts and a fucking tank top. A tank top. <laughs> you want to be in a tank top, though. Ooh. He's showing off his feet tits. <laughs> <laughs> so... I, I, and I think it's, I love the inner struggle of Bub. Like, there's something just very, very interesting about, about his whole character arc and how he's trying to fight his nature to be something more, you know? Mm-hmm. And there's just something very cool about that and, and almost heartbreaking as well because he's, they're trying to experiment and he's, he's a very sympathetic character. You know, you, you wouldn't really think that about a zombie, but I don't know. There's just something about that character that I just love. And it's it's truly fascinating to me, and I don't know that it's been done again. You know, granted, like you know, Big Daddy was kind of interesting, even though Land of the Dead wasn't as good as the other Dead movies, obviously. Mm-hmm. But I think that All was right. kind of interesting what they had going with Big Daddy. And well, what you mentioned with Bub and the attributes of a zombie, especially him, mm-hmm. almost they do mirror uh, Frankenstein's monster to a certain degree. The uh, here you have a creature that is no fault of his own creation, much like Bub, at least as far as we know, uh, and is trying to be more than what he is. He's trying to break out of that, the fact that he is just a bunch of made up parts. Yeah. You know, and he's trying to make himself more than that. He's and and much like Bub, he's a, a very sympathetic character. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You know, and um, you know, and much like Bub, people try to destroy him uh, because they don't really understand. Yeah, uh, and I think the reason why, like, what makes some of the great characters, and I think Dynamo was was. I was going to ask you, Dynamo, why you chose the ones you did, but uh, I think this kind of lends itself to it, is is that they're sympathetic characters, at least maybe not the Predator, but you said Frankenstein, right? Yeah. Well, I, th- I think that, I mean, also, I mean, if you flip the comic end, two of my favorites are the Hulk. Two, like, the two comics I've collected consistently, like I always would say, like, Batman and Spider-Man, but the reality, the books that I have never gone very far without getting, the Incredible Hulk and Swamp Thing. Like, I've always got those two books, the two huge favorites of mine, uh, two widely represented on my walls. And I think that, again, they're not only sympathetic characters. You get a sympathetic character, like, where you understand that Batman's uh, parents died. And you understand, like, the kind of every man's thing of Spider-Man. But Swamp Thing can't go home, right? He like true, So true, anything yeah. that he does that's good or heroic, like, it's super selfless. Because it's not like, you know, you're going to get that toxic avenger type you know hooray for the monster sort of moment you know so and same as the hulk like most of the time people are so afraid of the hulk that they overlook the good things that he does they just look at the you know the shitty uh huge scale destruction that he (laughs) caused the death um and that that takes me to uh two that came to mind comic wise was uh bizarro um and he's been downright sinister and kind of funny and then also solomon grundy who Solomon Grundy. Yeah, he's been great. Like, you know, he can be, he can be scary. Um, uh, and there was a turn in terms of sympathy in, during the uh, James Robinson uh, Starman era where uh, Grundy was kind of brought back being more, more like man-child and very yeah, likable. Yeah, yeah. It was a nature and nurture uh, thing. Right, right. And Jack kind of, Jack Knight <laughs> took him under his wing and he became friends with uh, Mikhail, the alien Starman. And there was an amazing moment. I think it is actually, somebody told me recently, it's, uh, or actually I heard them talking about it, it's still Michael. It's still Michael, yeah, just different it, spelling. It, yeah, and it took a while 
yeah, yeah. Uh, for yeah. me to uh, figure out what they were talking about. It was on uh, James Robinson was on a uh, John Sutter's show. Oh, so he would know. Uh, so fair. Uh, you know, yeah, I always, always kind of wrestle with that. Um, but there was a great moment <laughs> during one of the storylines when like a building was falling. And he, oh, that's how, maybe how he died. Grundy was saving Michael and a bunch of like, right. you know, and then the Grundy that came back afterwards was downright sinister. Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> we got another picture from Raymond. <laughs> He's looking fast, dude. He is, dude. You, you, got, you, got, you seriously got time on your hands, Raven. Dude. You should you should draw some Deadites comic stuff. That dude. literally Hit just up. happened. Yeah. Hit me up, Raven. He should have fucking drew All Star Batman. That shit would have come out. You want you want <laughs> you want you want to draw the Monster Zero segments of uh, the uh, the Deadites comic? All right, here we go. Here's Raven's uh, latest masterpiece. It's a Nos Ra two. I love that. <laughs> Driving uh, an alien uh, ship, right? <laughs> is that I, what it was? <laughs> I love that. This is a reference to a conversation earlier, Dynamo, where I questioned, um, as much as I love him, and one of my top favorite you know, <laughs> movies of all time, is the Predator a monster? Because he's an alien. Yeah, we were talking about that when you were, were out of the room. You had to pee. Um, is he a monster? Yeah. Why? Uh, okay. Because he's got a fucking crab head. He's got a face <laughs> vagina. But he can, but he can fly. But like he can, he can use technology. So you're saying monsters hyperdrive. can't use technology? So Swamp Thing not a monster? Uh, he doesn't have an iPod. <laughs> he's he's not on Facebook. <laughs> <laughs> Hashtag wish I was a human. <laughs> oh, uh, are we to say that you're a monster because you don't know how to use he, any of that? Status shit. update. Yeah. He has he has he has green, he has green book. <laughs> Still lonely. <laughs> <laughs> status update. <laughs> <laughs> which then led to Nosferatu, could he fly a spaceship? Which then led to that drawing by Raven J. <laughs> <laughs> I but I think if Dracula existed, he could use technology. I don't think it's the use technology. I think it's, I mean, granted, I think just the term overall is like probably, if you're putting it in social political terms and not fiction terms, is probably bigoted to a degree, right? Because like, it, like, Here's an awful story that happened once, right? Okay, when I was started working at one of the for the company that I started working at now, nah, I still work at, and this was like 20 years ago. One of my jobs, one of Raven Shadow's jobs, actually, was to clean the 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 tunnels, right? Uh-huh. And there was uh, we had to open up early for like a 4-H camp to come in one day. So I was doing it, and all of a sudden the 4-H kids started to like jump out and they were yelling, "Zombie! Zombie! Oh my God! It's a zombie!" And like I was like, "What are you guys talking about?" Right? And then, like, I looked, and it looked like a zombie, like, looked out the window. But it was, like, some poor kid that was a burn victim that, like, came in at the same time with his father. Like, uh, to be mean, that children, that child, who was a perfectly normal child, and then the fact that he was a burn victim, right, right. shared a lot of the same cliche traits, aesthetic tra- cliche traits, as a monster, right? So if you're putting it in, like, a social political or a real element, maybe it's wrong to say, like, the Hulk is a monster, or Frankenstein's a monster, because they're, you know, they have a soul, and they're human, and whatever else. But I think that, you know, I, I think the 30 seconds that it took Wolfie and I to come up with this segment today. Uh, <laughs> like, like, we, you know, like, uh, like 30 the, minutes. <laughs> yeah, like, uh, you know, we were talking in very broad terms, you know, because sure, then sure. Godzilla, you know, Godzilla's got a kid, and he cares for him, and he's nice. And Who's the mother of the child? Uh, it's a fucking lizard. They just they don't need mothers or fathers. Really? Just, yeah. Is that All right. Well, then if we're if we're <laughs> oh. <laughs> All right. So if we want to talk about monsters that just don't have any feeling towards anybody at all, my ex girlfriend. <laughs> <laughs> well, she uh, probably feels for herself. Yeah. No, she's a robot. It's bad. <laughs> oh, oh, the robot. Uh, I mean. Can you name any that just don't give a damn about anybody at all? The only one that can come to my mind when you think about it is Freddy. Yeah, Freddy Krueger. That's the only one I could think of. And I'm I'm rolling through the Rolodex in my head, and I'm trying to think <laughs> uh, what monster is out there that that has no sympathy towards anybody. Pinhead. 
No, no, no. He he lightened up in the se- in in uh, Hellbound. Hey guys, you guys want to go party? <laughs> you guys want to be friends on Facebook? <laughs> I'll bring we, a keg. We have so much episodes of Lords of Sleep. <laughs> I have so much snacks to show yeah. you. <laughs> well, Can I well, borrow a cup of sugar? Welcome to Purgatory. We have HBO. <laughs> um, you but know, one thing, that HBO Latina. <laughs> one thing that I find interesting. One thing that I find interesting about what uh, just pinhead. <laughs> <laughs> one thing that I find interesting about monsters, and this again came uh, 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 is something we're going to talk about soon on the Elm Street Kids, is I feel like there are two types of like monster fans. Usually, like not to say you can't like both to a degree, mm. but I feel like they're the people who like Dracula, Frankenstein. The more modern version of that is the Jason or Freddy, right? Okay. Yeah. Like they're the people. <laughs> <laughs> Raven fixed it because <laughs> it, <laughs> it was originally in a car, but he fixed it to be in a spaceship. <laughs> All right, I'm going to show this. Everyone. I love the Just fucking collar. <laughs> <laughs> the collar. Yeah. Oh, man, this is amazing. It's, it's, like, that too. it's like a live action comic for the yeah, show. Yeah, no shit, man. Jeez. <laughs> He's fucking quick. Thank you, Raven. Those are awesome, man. <laughs> Let's go ahead and show this one here. So if people in live show get to see this artwork. We may yeah, because, I mean, I mean, going by your theory, I mean, Jason Voorhees would not be considered a monster because he loves his mother. It's not my theory, by the way. I'm, I'm just saying. Well, right, Actually, I'll just go got brought up while I was peeing. <laughs> How did you know? Because you told me. <laughs> <laughs> you know, uh, you know, to go by the modern monsters, quote unquote, of today. Uh, you know, Jason Voorhees, Michael Myers, uh, Leatherface. Well, all I- sim- uh, they're all sympathetic towards e- even even just by one person. They're all sympathetic towards that one person. Uh, I, I'm I'm hard pressed to. Fa- to f- Anybody, well, other, mean, anybody other than Freddy Krueger, I'm, I'm hard pressed. Well, I think and, just and being like sympathetic, like I mean, I think loving something doesn't make, make you sympathetic. You, yeah, no, like loving something, it, like you know, makes you. I, I mean, Frankenstein wanted a mate who, in turn, you had to get kill someone to get that. You know what I mean? There's like, yeah. usually the best monsters are sympathetic, but their uh, their motives are uh, monstrous either by uh, you know, uh, some deeds. sort of communication breakdown, I or mean, there, there's also uh, human monsters uh, as as far as um, you know, completely human monsters. So uh, wait, is Nosferatu them. a human monster? I would say so. Yeah, because he can fly a spaceship. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> he can fly a spaceship. He can drive if a you, car, yeah. <laughs> as we found out. Yeah, <laughs> you can like campfires. You guys want some s'mores? <laughs> so, uh, Atla- uh, Lost in Atlantis is hanging out in the chat room as well. I forgot to mention she's been hanging out for a little bit. <gasps> Neo Maniacs are monsters. <laughs> yeah, they are. All of them are my favorite. Yeah. Actually, no, the one driving the train is my favorite. <laughs> I like but the I'm robot th- one that shows up just long enough to get electrocuted. Yeah. But I'm thinking in the movie Freaks, uh, Cleo and Hercules. Are they monsters? They're humans who do the most horrendous things to the freaks in the film where you know it's a you know it's a play on words where they like you know we're supposed to believe that the freaks are the monsters when it turns out that it's the quote unquote normal people that are the real monsters and yeah, now they're gonna be the freak of the week Ow. <laughs> we are the walking dead so in the chat room melissa says no he cared about his daughter freddie that is he had a daughter yeah yeah, no, I know he had a daughter, but he tried to kill her too. He didn't give a damn about her. So what? Where, where, where was she at? Part six, Freddy's dead. Really? The final nightmare. Yeah. Is she like well adjusted? Catherine. I mean, <laughs> Catherine Kruger. Oh really? yeah, I haven't seen that in years. That movie sucks. Drive yeah. jacket Mark says Patrick Bateman. He yeah. cares about nothing but returning his VHS on time. Mm-hmm. Well, that's. That's just <laughs> be kind, rewind. Yeah, I mean, right. And he know? says Patrick Bateman is the one who had no feelings toward anyone. That's true too. That's yeah, yeah. That's Creepy good. girl good says call. I would put Jason, Freddie, and Michael are more in slasher category. Man, that horror was... fans love <laughs> to micro the genreification genre things. They fucking love it. Like it. Like I, I feel like 
like horror fans, like if someone invented like a horror Dewey Decimal system, that dude would like <laughs> Jesus save some save some pussy for us. All right, Dewey Decimal <laughs> guy. <laughs> oh, I love I love first time Mike. He says. The mandatory Neon Maniacs reference for the night. <laughs> <laughs> it is. It's like a fucking drinking Wait, game. Wait, but so here's my question again. Like, same as the Nosferatu thing. Jason fucking Horshack fucking drove a stake <laughs> in Jason's heart. It got fucking electrocuted. He came back to life. He came back to life a fucking million times. And just because he's just because he is in, uh, just because he was spawned a subgenre, right? He's not a monster. Oh, shit. Look at this art that Raven did for his podcast. Jesus. It's the fucking Neon Maniac. Oh, Stu. <laughs> <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> Just now? Or was that no, no, I think, I think it's got to be old. I mean. No, I can't imagine he did that in two minutes. Yeah. Melissa, you listen, I want an explanation. Like, like, what is not. So, Freddy is a fucking pedophile dream demon, not a monster. Like, what are you, horror, what are you fucking crazy horror fans talking about? Like, I mean it, honestly. Like, I'd be the fucking John Bon Jovi of horror <laughs> if I've created a horror Dewey Decimal system. Because judging by what fucking Mr. Thriller said earlier today, <laughs> and, and Mr. Nosferatu, and now what Melissa's saying, they fucking can't even help. They're like, this is a horror, this is a horror thriller action romance movie. Like, they just can't, they fucking love it. <laughs> they, like no wonder fucking video stores went out of space. How did they fucking organize the movies anymore? <laughs> You're worse than metal fans. <laughs> this is symphonic death, h- hardcore metal. It's black sludge, yeah. industrial. Yeah. You know. This is all these Gank things. Rock. Like I hate it. I fucking Gank hate rock. it. <laughs> Can't we just like these fucking movies? This is more well. Well, actually, this was more of a slasher film. <laughs> <laughs> Freddy Krueger is a fucking monster. I don't care what anybody says. If if Raven J hadn't done this for uh, his podcast, I would ask him to do it for us. Can you just like take the guys out in the front and put? <laughs> That's probably him. Oh yeah, well, no, he's a good looking guy. Don't he's get me wrong, Raven but <laughs> you know he's got a shotgun. <laughs> Raven J, what do you think? You're the only one who I'm listening to anymore. <laughs> See, but that's important to say. So here's the thing. Now, here's what here's what a lot of horror fans don't realize. If you put a monster in a comedy movie, right? Yeah. It's still a fucking comedy, right? right. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, so by putting a monster in a slasher film, he's still a fucking monster, right? Like, Frankie says, "Relax, Melissa." <laughs> Freddie says, "Relax." <laughs> Relax! <laughs> Don't do it! <laughs> that, oh, I, that's in my head. Like, when yeah. you want to come and do the fucking thing. Relax! <laughs> Don't do it! When you want to sleep! <laughs> <laughs> so, like, uh, you know, Tremors. There's a worm. Whoa, 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 whoa. Tremors? <laughs> what's, tre- the, what's the tremor? <laughs> tremors? <laughs> tremors? <laughs> what is a tremor? <laughs> that movie with Kevin Bacon! <laughs> What is it? Tremors. I can't read. Did Melissa Melissa ever answer me? Diners? (laughs) Tremors? Diner? (laughs) Tremors? Tremors. Melissa says, not saying he's not a monster, but you're being too general. I'm being too general! (laughs) (laughs) So what about Tremors? Is Is that a horror movie or is that a comedy? Or is it a different topic? (laughs) <laughs> well, we're talking about monsters. Right. Grabbers. Grabbers. Grabbers and grabbers. Grabbers. No, that's actually uh, not a like, monster. That is a, that's a drinking, an Irish drinking, drinking monster. Thriller monster. Thriller monster, monster right. Yeah. Comedy. <laughs> Fuck's sake. I hate everyone. You guys, I'm telling you, you guys are turning me every day that goes by, turning me more and more into the old man. There's going to be a lot of people getting pillow faced. <laughs> Pillow Pillow face. Face. Yeah. There will be a lot of pretty people. <laughs> give me now, give me my 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 my, 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 my pillow face, <laughs> my pillow face, pillow face, pillow face. Mine gets mad and smashes me in the face. MZ says some crazy shit all the time. Michael Raven Shadow likes to do rhymes. Give me my, give me my, 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 my pillow face. My pillow face. Am I fucking wrong, though? What is it with horror fans and metal fans? It's, it's people. 
It's everything, but that's don't generalize. It's no, 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 no. That's where we live. Is okay. is is in horror, okay. but people do it for everything. I don't know. I don't. Yeah, hear, they I don't, do. I don't no, hear I don't. Con- other than the other than the other than the fucking pretentious fucking wankers complaining about superhero comics and be like, there are more types of comics than superheroes. Like I, I feel like it is worse in horror. And and yeah. metal like those are the fucking. Worst. I swear, you just want to find stuff to bitch about. No, I'm not. I'm interacting <laughs> yeah, with the do. with the people. All who you want to do is complain about what everybody else thinks. You can't accept anybody else's opinion but your own. I think that you like live in a world where like self awareness is not one of your main traits. I don't give a damn. Exactly. <laughs> oh, oh, hey, at oh. least I admit it. No, I, I, I do respect other people's opinions, but then people are like, then you say something. <laughs> what the hell is this? <laughs> then you say something, <laughs> and people are like, <laughs> feather, for feather, 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 <laughs> down, feather, feather, <laughs> for down, feather, down. <laughs> Monster Zero likes to say that all the crazy things. He gives a nine-year-old a horror movie. <laughs> he likes to think that rape and stuff is groovy. I wear Mars. His ass is going gray. His uh, is getting older ever every day. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Feather down, down. Feather down, down. Memory Run, foam. <laughs> give me my, give me my. Hit me with the, the, your pillow face. Your pillow face. <laughs> give me my, give me my. Give me my with the fact your that pillow you know this face. song scares me. Your pillow face. Monster Zero likes to say I don't respect opinions, but everything that he doesn't like is stupid or just dumb. He wants to kill his whole high school reunion today. He's like Colin Bine in a fetus team. <laughs> Just to clarify, you're like Columbine in a fetus t shirt. <laughs> pillow face, my pillow face. Hit me with, hit me with, hit, hit, hit me with my pillow face, my pillow face. When Melissa's in the chat room, she says, Freddy's not a monster man. She says that he's a slasher and I am too general and everything has to be in subcategories every time. And it's very hard to make a rhyme. So, he doesn't understand. MZ don't understand. The, I mean, the fact that you know this song is just terrifying. Who doesn't know this song? Well, me for starters. <laughs> hit me, hit me, hit me, pillow face. Pizza face. Hit me now, hit me now. Come on, look in my pillow face. Hit me when I say some dumb shit. my pillow face. when I say some dumb shit. <laughs> Freddy's not a monster. <sighs> fucking hate <laughs> the Columbine. Freddy is a monster. The Columbine penis line. <laughs> you know who Lady Gaga is? No, I know who Lady Gaga is. I just don't know the song. How do you know who she is and not know that song? That's my. Second I just. Song. I just. You know, I see her on award shows and shit. It's my second favorite Lady Gaga song. I love Lady Gaga. I don't care what you say. Like, she, like I'm not. A, I'm not dissing Lady Gaga. I just no. You said the song. fact that I uh, two minutes ago you said that I don't respect other people's opinions, and then two minutes yep. later you're telling me the fact that I know who Lady Gaga is frightened you. Yeah. Why? Because I just never thought she was in your. Oh man, I listen. I would say once a car ride, like once a work commute, <laughs> I listen to just dance or or that song. I fucking love it. I love Lady Gaga. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> I 
I wish I got that picture of MZ with that fucking dour look on <laughs> his face. He was like, I'm sorry, Melissa. I'm sorry, Monster Zero, but you guys pretty soon. What do you mean, sorry, Monster Zero? What did I you guys say? Are I'm not him, saying Freddy You guys Kruger's are turning me monster. back into the old me, so step by step. Good. Melissa, I'm, let's I'm gonna tag fucking team this shave bastard. my. I'm gonna fucking. I'd be into part of that. I'm gonna shave my head. I'm gonna grow my hair back. I'm gonna fucking get my Franco Nero headband on. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna be fucking mean to everyone. I'm gonna make people cry all the time. Oh, Raymond man. Shadow's gonna leave mad every show. Hey, Drive Jack. We're in a good place now. Yeah. <laughs> Drive Jack and Mark says anything with bacon in it is a horror movie. Kevin Bacon. Is that true? No. Yeah. The Invisible Rapist. Yeah. Yeah, that's not good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was that. He played what? a lot of like he played. Didn't he play like a weird psychic guy, right? In Stir of Echoes. Stir of Echoes. Yeah. Stir of Echoes. yeah. He was also in Invisible um, Rapist. The fucking was, uh, was that Bobby D movie? What was that uh, movie with uh, the ensemble cast? Sleepers. Sleep- sleepers. Uh, no, yes. no, no, no. I saw the one thinking of. He's though. in Friday the Thirteenth. No, sleepers was awesome sleep. though. Yeah, he's hard, hell. He's a fucking monster in that yeah, movie. Yeah. He's in Friday the Thirteenth. Yeah. Dinah's. What Dinah? What, what the fuck movie am I thinking of? That one with the uh, with Frodo's friend, Whitewater Summer. <laughs> was, <laughs> no, was it no. in? Was it with uh, Meryl Streep? Uh, Into the Wild, I think it was called. I'm Thanks trying so. to remember the name of uh, a few good men. Yeah, what's we're that, talking what about horror monster. movies. Oh, okay. Yeah. Well, no, those are military horror films. It's the genre knows is the military, military genre <laughs> lawyer drama. I'm literally, if this was a shotgun right now, it'd be all over. <laughs> I don't know which way I'd point it, but it'd be messy. And there's talk about, well, there's actually oh. Kevin, talk about Kevin Bacon Flat being Freddy Krueger. Flatliners. Right. Flatliners, yeah. yeah. He yeah. played a pedophile With Keith in uh, Sutherland, that yeah. movie. I think it was called Monster, maybe. And Oliver Platt. And he was also Tremors. 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 Yeah. And, also, uh, and uh, Flatliners also had uh, <clears throat> I wish that was Jimmy Richard. King. <laughs> I wish I was with Jaja Blink seeing Weird Al right now. <coughs> Take that thing away from him. No, no, I'm mad. You keep, you keep I, hitting on I'm, the fucking desk. I'm going to fucking hit somebody. It's better than a mic stand when I start <laughs> swinging it. Put the pillow back. Uh, Melissa says, this is about five minutes ago, you hit the nail on the head, MZ. Oh, f- there you go. <laughs> the blind leading the fucking blind. And uh, Lost and Lanta says, for someone who gets pissed at MZ for generalizing, you do a fine job of it, Mars. <laughs> <laughs> oh, down a fucking yeah. rabbit hole. Drive Jack and Mark says metal is worse than horror with the sub. What did I generalize? No, you're right about the fucking metal thing. No, what yeah. did I generalize? I don't know. Uh, Mar- uh, Drive Jack and Mark says uh, Black Post Sludge Doom Death. Does anyone, <laughs> does anyone here, uh, unless you're going to be a fucking pansy pants, think that horror fans don't typically subcategorize things? And, and, they, and you know... Horror fans, yeah. horror fans and metal well, fans yeah, don't Yeah, of course, but I don't things. see the problem in that. I, I don't either. I don't care what you do, but the problem is, is that Melissa just said, no, they're not monsters. I consider them more slashers. So what she does, no, you think, do, think, no, and no, both no, of I you th- do all the fucking time, no, with is what you try you to make, and Wiley too, you, you, you do things, <laughs> and then... <laughs> No, no, with what and you, Wiley, with what you just said, I think she's just misunderstanding what we're talking about. And Wiley, as far as generalization goes, it, it, like, it, I'm sorry if this is a soft spot for you as a metal fan, I guess, and a horror fan, but you, but metal fans and horror fans do it, pr- in my opinion, oppressively. Like, I feel like they spend too much time finding where the boxes that these things go in. So... Let, let me just interrupt real quick because uh, Melissa says, how else do we re- rearrange our movies? We're not talking about the movies. We're talking about the characters. Yeah. The monsters. The monsters. Yeah. Right. This has nothing to do with the, the movies themselves. Yeah. We're talking about the monsters themselves. So uh, Drive Jack and Mark says, Dynamo dancing to Gaga naked, holding the snake beneath the bed. <laughs> <laughs> Raven J, get that drawing going. <laughs> get uh, your pencils. <laughs> now, qu- now we're just making requests. I'm, quit. Square. I'm saying it right now publicly. Quit Elm Street, kids. I'm not gonna be on that show. I'm not gonna uh, be on this no, show. Geez. You've no, made that threat so many times. It's not it's a threat. Boring. It's a promise. <laughs> well, what's the difference? Yeah. Uh, Lost in Atlantis <laughs> actually said two minutes ago, "Hey, MZ, I need a new co-host. Right. What are you up to on Saturdays?" <laughs> you guys can fucking high we'll five talk. all the time. We'll yeah. talk. Yeah, no, you because you won't like him the minute anyone disagrees with either one of you. You'll just yell at each other <laughs> all the time. <laughs> Bunch of jerks. <laughs> <laughs> I hate everyone. Well, let's let's uh, go ahead and play a voicemail from someone. All right. Since uh, 
since she's been a hot topic lately in the chat room, why don't we hear from Melissa? Ooh. And she had called in, and uh, let's hear. Creepy girl in a hizzy. Okay, I'm going to try not to go over my time this time. Why didn't she get the girl. voice memo? Hey, what's up? Sorry I had to leave tonight for American Horror Story, but I'm dying to know what the theme is. They kept it a secret. But I wanted to uh, say something about uh, I'm not a serial killer. I freaking love this movie. Good. It's one of my favorites so far this year. And um, I like it because it's very original. Um, the kid, the main kid, who is also the kid from Where the Wild Things Are, that movie... Um, he did awesome in this. My favorite part of the movie was probably when they revealed who the killer was. It was just like such a shocking moment. I really liked that part. And, you know, what it all comes out to is just so unique. I, when movies are unique and they're not like, I mean, I watch movies, probably 10 horror movies a week. And I get so bored. I'm just like, oh, my God, this is just like every other, you know, and so boring. And it, and it doesn't hold my attention. But this one held my attention. It was very original. And I really liked it. Um, my favorite monster. Uh, I think my favorite monster is the monster from the Feast series. That's one of my nice. favorite series. Yeah, that's a good one. Um, yeah. Feast. Um, that monster was very unique. It was crazy. God, I can't remember they they had this weird thing about they had these big dicks and uh (laughs) something where they could uh they did have big dicks something with where they had babies i don't even remember i watched the movie so many times i can't believe i can't remember right now but i love the monsters from the feast series they're crazy original very unique so i like them and that's all I gotta say because American Horror Story is about to go on, so I gotta I gotta go out. But I will be back right after this. I'm going back to listen to Trick or Treat Radio. Mm. Bye, I love ya. Thank you, Melissa. I think that if they just made Feast One, that monster would be really iconic. But those other two movies were so fucking terrible. Not not entertaining, but really two of the worst films I've ever seen. That like I feel like they just brought down the real estate. And it also, like, though I, I, I'm not saying it wasn't cool that they were all different sizes and stuff like that. It also just made it, like, you know, like, if you look at the alien, they had all different, like, you know, kinds of aliens and stuff like that. But there was some unifying traits in all of them. I feel like they just kind of went off the reservation and treat and feast. But that first feast. Loved it. Fucking great. Yeah. And good also, movie. Good movie. to speak to her uh, about I'm not a serial killer. I think we all liked it mostly pretty much, too. And I think it's one of my favorites of the year, but I, I have to say it's more telling about the year than, I agree. than it is about the film. Yeah. Like, this, yeah. Is a, this is a movie that wouldn't even, like... It wouldn't have dented It wouldn't even year. be in the conversation last year. Yeah. So... Uh, it was... For me, if... <clears throat> I would say it was similar to, like... I think I might have liked it a tiny bit better, but similar to, like, Odd Thomas. You know, kind of mm-hmm. that level for me, yeah. I guess. Well, that's how I feel, though. But I feel yeah. like if I saw Odd Thomas after the fucking this year. piling dung heap of a fucking movie year this has been, mm. well, this I'd be doing backflips and splits. <laughs> well, you st- we still got another, what, 14 films to review this year? Great. I'm sure so it's going to be fucking More than great. that, I think, right? We typically cram jam in December. Yeah. yeah. Plus, yeah, I, but true. I don't know. Here's the thing. I usually have a list of shit. I don't have anything like... I have, true. I have 31... And I'm not really, you know, I, I become, I don't know. Like, I know a few others that we're going to do for sure. I'm but not super, super excited about slim. that anymore. Like, uh, Oh, shit. Uh, Drive Jack and Mark says no one mentioned the thing. That is, uh, oh, and I think shit. that is a, that is a uh, monster that hits That's all the really criteria. Yeah. Yeah. That hits all the criteria. Yeah. How did we miss that? Holy shit. Well, we, all, we have our favorites. You <laughs> yeah. Know. So to go go back to that, you know, the, the you know, again, generalizing, I guess, but like, do you guys find that? Do you think that's interesting too? Like there are kind of two camps. Like, uh, you know, there are sort of the the Jason or Frankenstein camp usually, and then there's like the Frankenstein and Freddy camp. Like, what did it? What did what? Uh, what do you think? I mean, they're obvious. What the defining traits on either side of that thing are obvious. One is more of like a brooding brute of a character, mm-hmm. you know, and and relies on physical. Uh, you know, um, physical agency to, uh, you know, in his existence. Yeah. And one is kind of 
both the other two are more gimmicky and magic and mm-hmm. you know presbydigitationy. Like, but what do you think is like the uh, uh, like? I, I, and I'm sure you could make a hundred characters on either side of that too. Yeah. But what do you think is the um, uh, like? I, I I guess the attraction of either side, like, because I honestly feel like, and there was an Elm Street kids that just kind of drove that home. Like, I feel like most people, in my experience, I haven't met every horror fan. I haven't even met most of the horror fans or some of the horror fans. But I feel like most people, in my experience, unless they're you know, like I feel like maybe more like Wolfie doesn't have like a, a horse in the race. I feel like they're on one side or the other of that. Like they like one kind of character more. Um, which, which is fair. I mean, it's kind of like the the universal monsters in comic terms would be the Justice Society, sure, to the JLA of the Justice League of the of the yeah. slashers type yeah. thing. Yeah, um, but I I think that when you but I think even amongst themselves, you know, like uh, Dracula and Frankenstein are of the same ilk as far as the Universal Monsters go. Mm. And then modernly, you know, the legacy version of that is obviously. Uh, um, Kim McGuire, she died. Yeah, it's awful. Is yeah. obviously um, Freddie and Jason. Like, uh, I, I wonder what makes a lot of people like one more than the other. Or. Or, like, I think Freddy and Jason is, like, a perfect example of this because I, I think as a film viewer, I think both of them, or Dracula and Frankenstein uh, in, like, both the Hammer and the Universal terms, I think both of them are equally stupid. If I'm going to break down what's silly about them and what's dumb about them. You know what I mean? But, like, I think it's interesting that even in the realm of monsters... Uh, there is a way that the violence can be doused out or the horror can be doused out that makes it uh, more aesthetically pleasing than one or the other. That could be fair. I mean, you could, you, cause you could still, you could take the universal monsters and you can put them on cereal boxes and you can put them on cartoons right. and have hotel Transylvania mm-hmm. as awesome as it would be. If you had, you know, hotel uh, Springfield um, with like Freddy Krueger right. having a hotel. Well, you forget though. Because you were pro- you probably just missed it the age that you are, but Freddie was fucking every place. There were dolls. Yeah. There were costumes. There was cereal. You could call his one nine hundred number yeah, and find out where Freddie's going. He was, he was everywhere. I think that you're getting you're thinking more of like Freddie and Jason versus Frankenstein and Dracula, where I think there's a parable between Freddie and Jason. I mean between Frankenstein and Jason. And Freddy and Dracula. Like one okay. is kind of a more, you know, not to say that. Okay, like, yeah. yeah. One is kind of a more supernatural, uh, romanticized, like very broad. Like Dracula is usually not presented very scary. Freddy pr- pr- past that first film is not very scary. He's very comical. You know what I mean? To me. Right yeah. now, somebody could make that same argument like, oh, well, what's scary about somebody walking with their hands out? You know, and, and, you know, having big fucking box boots on or some dumb mongoloid running around the forest that, that doesn't run or, you know, just hits people with an axe. Like, I think it's a, an interesting aesthetic uh, thing that I feel that, you know, most horror fans kind of fall on one side of, you know. Hmm. I do think that there is a, a parable, like a, I do think that the Universal Monsters and the 80s slasher characters do have... There's, there's definitely like a connection. Yeah, do have like a, like a, you know, like you can make the connection between all of them, you yeah. know, in the way that it was done and everything like that. Do you think the torch has ever really been passed? Not yet, but look at look at. Uh, I mean, maybe we're getting. Uh, maybe I, I think it's just due now. Yeah. So if it doesn't happen now, because if you look at when did those films come out in the 30s, the original Universal films. If, if we're only going by films, right, and then go it, by literary yeah, stuff. Yeah, nineteen thirty-one with Dracula. Yeah, so then, in, so then you have, and then you have, if we're, you know, Mike, you have uh, Michael Myers was what, you know, Michael Freddie was in this. Freddie and uh, Michael, uh, the, the Leatherface and Michael were in the seventies. Yeah. So we haven't even really touched on serial killers. No. Like. They're monsters. Yeah. Probably more than than any fictional one. Oh, sure. I don't sure. mind a good serial killer joke. Wiley and I will go back and forth with them for hours. But like, And I'm not trying to start a fight with you, but like, but I <laughs> hate like, the, the glorification of real serial killers. 
Like it's just not sexy and not cool and not you know people get people the other day were like oh it's yeah. so sad that Charles Manson died. I'm like great. Wait, did he? Yeah, tell that to the team. did he? Yeah. No, he didn't. He did. Manson's still alive. I don't think Manson so. died the other day. If he did, he, I would have heard about it. He <laughs> dies pretty much every day on the internet. <laughs> uh, that'd be fucking awesome. No, if he if he did that that the, the I news hope he died. All over I, this. I, I I'm anxious if he died. Yeah, I don't I don't think so. No, as far as I know, he's 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 still kicking. But I I think that I I just don't like you know, like people who like you know like wear like Ted Bundy shirts and stuff like that. Like or I Albert think that, Fish. Thank you. <laughs> Don't you have like a John Wayne Gacy one too, or I, something? No, the only the only shirt I have is uh, is uh, Albert Fish. Oh, okay, I mean at least that is is far enough. You don't have a Dahmer right. shirt? No. Okay. Never had a Dahmer. No, uh, John Wayne Gacy was the only one. I did have a pair of Ed Gein shorts. <laughs> <laughs> I don't have those. Ed anymore. Gein shorts. <laughs> I don't have those anymore. In the chat room, Gacy plushie. There's a lot of uh, hashtag <laughs> MZ is the sweetest on Trick or Treat Radio. Hashtag we stand with MZ. Thank you. A lot of hashtags. Is it is it just Thank those you. two though? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, How, well, hey. Hashtag not interested. <laughs> uh, Drive Jack and Mark says you've got monsters that are more real life than you've got the monsters that are cosmic horror. I agree. He says the cosmic oh, sure. horror has always fucked with me. No, yeah, yeah, I agree. Uh, I, I one thing that I always agree with uh, El Goro <laughs> on is that uh, a physical horror monster has to be really presented in a certain way for it to scare me. Right. Because, like, uh, I'm not going to make the same dumb mistakes that they make in slasher movies. I'm not even going to fucking go there. I'm not going to go there, so it's not going to happen to me. Uh, but, like, haunted houses or things that are, like, huge, you know, on an epidemic level or, like, a, uh, a giant level, you know, like a Cloverfield, for instance... Like, that shit scares me because, like, what do you do? You're helpless. You know what I mean? You're helpless in the thralls of the devil or helpless in the thralls of this cosmic behemoth. Like Cthulhu. Yeah. Well, Cthulhu is actually a god, Rich. It's not actually a monster. Well, it's, it's, only, in, it's, in, it's th- only a god in the eyes of those who believe he's a god. It's one of the dark ones. It's not. It's actually not. <laughs> you put that in the god category. <laughs> Drive Jack and Mark says, for me, Sutter Kane will always be a better monster than Myers. Oh, I love Sutter King. Yeah, that's what. <laughs> you can't dispute that because he's got a drive jacket. So. Yeah, no. I, I mean, I, I, he's a good monster. I think if we're talking about Carpenter's best monster, I think the thing is. Yeah. Is, yeah well, and, and Mark brought that up. Yeah. Yeah. That was. Yeah. That that that. Oh boy, that's a good one, man. I can't. It's a it's that. a very good one. Yeah, because. But then again, it it's kind of an alien, right? Kind of. What kind of came to my mind was from the 30s mm-hmm. to now, mm-hmm. um, how many versions of the Universal uh, monsters have there been? Oh, there's been a ton. And, and, oh, God. And even if they're not direct, they're, you know, like even take a look at the, uh, the Frankenstein movie you reviewed, uh, was it earlier this year or last yeah, year? It was right. Right, right at the beginning of this year. Yeah, Bernard Rose directed it, right. the modern day one. Like even that, like yeah. it didn't really resemble. I mean, clearly it was a Frankenstein movie because it was called that. But and there was that one. There was a one with um, what's his face, Harvey Dent, um, Aaron Eckhart. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I Aaron Frankenstein. Eckhart. Yep. Uh, multiple actors playing Draculas. Um, <laughs> even da- I mean, they really had been multiple Draculas. People playing Draculas. Even the one where he had the fucking tan. Who's the guy with the suntan? Oh yeah, yeah. Love at first bite. Yeah, uh, J- uh, George uh, Harrison. No, no. He was the <laughs> <beat up. laughs> be awesome. George Harrison. George no. um, Hamilton. Hamilton. Yeah, that's it. So that multiple Frankenstein or multiple Wolfmen. I think most recently the Benicio del Toro version, right? Teen Wolf, and so on. Well, and, and even like like Mars had alluded to, Jason is kind of like a. I mean, he's a take on Frankenstein. I think. Yeah. At least aesthetically. Yeah. Yeah. So well, you're right. You're right. But I guess where I'm going is, how come that's okay to one camp of folks? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Then you have what we're having the remakes now of multiple actors. You know, we had the first actor yeah. to play Freddy that wasn't uh, Kruger. Uh, I know there's been multiple well, that's Jasons. Always, that's always kind of been Dynamo's argument. Yeah, because I feel like people are very myopic uh, in terms of that. Uh, they're under the impression that these things that they they're like. They're in a bubble. Yeah. They're in, yeah. They're under the impression that these things that they like 
Like, oh, I like I like uh, Texas Chainsaw Massacre. Mm-hmm. That's the first time that something has been remade. Yeah. You know what I mean? They don't realize, and they, and they think just in terms of horror, but like, uh, you know, if you look at some of the most famous films of all time, uh, there's a lineage of famous films that are remade from the same fucking first movie. Right. You know, Seven Samurai has been remade so many times, and uh, Yajumbo uh, has been remade so many times, and even the other that other kind of famous folk legend uh, that they made 13 Assassins about. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you know what I mean? All that stuff has been remade over and over and over again, and I never, and I never take the argument, well, those were books, those are retellings of books, because uh, Thomas Edison's Frankenstein and Thomas James Edison? Yeah, yeah. And James Wales. Oh, yeah. yeah, that's not the first fucking Frankenstein, daddy. Yeah. James Wales Frankenstein, it was right? Like Thomas from, Edison. It was like yeah. yeah, it was like from like 1910 or something yeah. like that. Yeah, James Ailes Frank, James Wales Frankenstein. Okay. And then I forget the guy who made The Hammer Frankenstein. None of those fucking things movies have anything to do with that fucking book. You know what I mean? So yeah. like uh they're yeah. remakes of those films and and they're not they're not remakes based on the fact that the books were successful. Yeah, they, I mean, that. they could take a small snippet from a book and say it's based on the book. You Which know? is a funny thing for comic fans to be make arguments. Um, it's not. It's no. This movie isn't, isn't based on the book. You know where literary novels have been changed to films, like you just said. One thing I wanted to read right. earlier. Let me just quickly. This is. I'm just looking at Wikipedia right now, and this is the definition of a monster. It says, a monster is any creature usually found in legends or horror fiction that is often hideous and may produce fear or physical harm by its appearance or its actions. The word monster derives from Latin monstrum, meaning an uh, aberrant occurrence, usually biological, that was taken as a sign that something was wrong within the natural order. The word uh, usually connotes something wrong or evil. A monster is generally morally objectionable, physically or psychologically hideous, and or freak of nature. It can also be applied figuratively to a person with similar characteristics, like a greedy person or per- a person who does horrible things. Mm-hmm. Uh, f- I don't know if I would ag- exactly agree with freak of nature, uh, that part of their uh, description. Well, like, look at Freddy Krueger. He would be considered a freak of nature, right? Um, I think that's what no, he's no, 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 no. You know, he he's a freak of the dream demons. No, look. That, that, <laughs> uh, <laughs> Why is this fucking reaction? No, I'm talking. I'm talking uh, about. I'm fre- talking about his appearance. Well, if you look at him, what do you think? He he's needs burned. <laughs> and he's, and you would burned. you would look at him oddly. And you would not... Yeah, but it's not because of nature. Fire is nature. I'm, I mean, I guess if you, want, if you want to add that aspect to it, but I mean, the, but the only reason why he exists is not because he was set on fire. The reason why he exists is because the dream demons allowed him to... I'm telling you I'd be the Bon Jovi of fucking all. Who cares what you're saying? <laughs> Shut up. Is because the dream demons allowed him to survive to carry on his, his killing spree. Oh, but I'm talking now. I'm talking about <laughs> let me, let now. I'm talking about tonight. like freak. When they mention freaks of nature, I'm thinking of like like the casting characters of of, of freaks. But uh, to go into a more um, uh, uh, nonfiction, I th- was nonfiction. That's that's uh, real. Yes. Okay. All right. So fiction um, is like Belial. Belial, I, in, in my it's opinion, is, is is not a monster. Is a freak of nature, but is not okay. a monster. He is a human being. He's just a severely deformed one. Uh, yeah, but it, I guess it's it's in the eye of the beholder, right? Because someone might look at Belial and think he's a monster, right? And are they wrong to think that a disruption of I, the natural order, right? I think in action. Belial's a monster. If you want to not take aesthetic, yeah, into yeah, it, if like, you, yeah. If you want to take away his uh, his killing habit, then <laughs> <laughs> you know, then yeah, yeah. I guess you could consider him a monster. You know, just like any killer. You know, really. What What about uh, the Elephant Man? He's a freak of nature, right? He he's a se- he's a severe freak of. So nature. he fits into the monster category. If if we go by this definition, going by that, yes. Going by going by Wikipedia's description, yes. 
So Drive Jack and Mark also says, I, I think also horror fans are struck by the first horror film that affected them. Right. Uh, then they stick to that camp. For me, it might have been the thing. So you're always searching for that feeling again. Right. You're always searching for that movie that will make you feel that way again. Yeah. yeah. It's like drugs. Uh, Lost in Atlanta says he's not a freak of nature. That's man-made. Talking about Freddy, I think. And first time Michael says, but remember, in the past, natural disease and deformity was often considered unnatural or touched by the supernatural. Correct. I mean, I, I don't know if, she, if Lost in sure. Atlanta was here yet, but I told that story about that burn victim in the store. Yeah. Uh, that by that definition was a freak of nature. Therefore, you know, like uh, I, I, I mean, man didn't. Uh, uh, it was an accident, right? Yeah, it wasn't right. like they somebody retro engineered his burns. Right, right, right. Um, you know, so I, I, I think that I mean, Freddie. When you start adding the supernatural, there's like a, a whole. <clears throat> uh, I find fake science a little more pal- malleable, uh, a little less Ooh. malleable, and a little uh, more. Don't say around Patsy. What? <laughs> fake science. No, <laughs> Patsy's too fucking busy arguing with every argument to be had. Like, somebody better tell Patsy he doesn't have to show up to every argument he's invited to. <laughs> like or that not g- invited. To. Yeah. <laughs> My girlfriend's better. Darkwing Duck. <laughs> Darkwing Duck. The guy's fucking on fire. I don't know how he gets anything done in a day. No, he's going to be a, free, a man-made freak of nature. Then. Yeah, he is. <laughs> <That's true. laughs> but, like, yeah, like, I, I think that I find, like, uh, again, it's just a taste thing. I find, you know, f- there's no real scientific uh, uh, backing to, like, the resurrection and Frankenstein and stuff like that. Right. But I find that stuff more engaging than like when you start adding the like supernatural to it, you know what I mean? Like, right, even if cr- created by man. Right. You know, and then history shows again and again how nature points out the folly of men. Right. Like I, I find that, or or like an alien organism, like you know the thing, or um, the the xenomorphs and the predators. Like I find that stuff. So that's an interesting one. We, I mean, we have talked about some aliens, but we haven't talked about xenomorphs. Yeah. Now, they don't drive ships, I don't think. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> now, I was staying away from xenomorphs on this. But to be now, well, whatever, I mean. But they're, maybe they're different because they can, like, take the form of whatever they. Yeah. Form of? <laughs> a bucket of water. <laughs> <laughs> That's a weird predator. What are they? <laughs> one to twin pot, one to twins? <laughs> how about, how about his, his They're one. monsters. Here's <laughs> one. Uh, yeah, there is. And, and it's <laughs> funny because maybe it wouldn't be considered that because we've now found ones that are. Are of that thing, but of our perception of it at the time. Are by that definition, gleek. Jaws. I was going to say, like, shocks. You know what I mean? Yeah. Shocks. Yeah. shocks. <laughs> uh, Melissa says it's mean to say the elephant man is a monster. Very mean. I didn't say that, Melissa. We were just going by what the Wikipedia, you know, freak of nature yeah. is considered a monster by that definition. Yeah. I don't, per- I, personally, I don't agree with that, with that assessment. I think it's very broad, even more broad than we would be. But that was that's the Wikipedia. Yeah, that's all we're going by. I, I think that that's the Webster Marion. Uh, what is that Webster right. Marion dictionary def- definition of monster? Right. Like, not in mind, not in soul. But uh, we were we were before anybody gets really bent out of shape. We weren't necessarily saying that the person who was the elephant man was a monster. We were kind of poking holes in that definition of what a monster right. was. Right. Yeah. So we're we're trying to go by the book of what a monster is. Right. And then kind of we're see trying it. to suss out what the definition is versus what it really is. Now, yeah. if that character, I forget his name, if that guy, John Merrick, John Merrick mm-hmm. was Jack the Ripper or a terrible rapist, right? That he'd be a monster. There's an, ar- there's an argument to be made that, that he's a monster. But as we talked about earlier, I, I know American Horror Story was on. Uh, we spoke about Swamp Thing and the Hulk, Swamp Ass, and monsters, uh, monsters who were misunderstood. Yeah, right. yeah. You know what I mean? Who were who were the, the most selfless heroes because they were, um, you know, I don't think that kid that scared all those kids was a monster. Right. I understand why eight-year-olds seeing that would think it was a monster. But I, I think that by the very broad statement of it, um, that's what a monster is. I think when you take it in a film and literature or, or any sort of art, what your job is to do is not make it broad, right? Like is to make it, to put human in the in the um, 
It's why it's why Jaws only worked once, right? Let's be fucking honest. It's not because of who directed it. It's not because anything else. It, 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 it's why is there a fucking shark movie as good or even close to as good as Jaws? No, because that shit's not scary over and over again. You know, it, with like like if you take like a crocodile or an alligator, you have the ability. They're kind of more expressionate. You know what I mean? But when you take a shark, which is like just a very like almost like a mechanical thing. Like, there's right. nothing there. It's just like a... It could be like a lawnmower. Right. That shit's not scary again. It's all striking. You know, it's right? What, what, what your job is as a writer or an artist or whatever it is, is to put those human elements in the form of what people think is a monster, like Beauty and the Beast or the Elephant Man. Now... Form of an Elephant Man. <laughs> now, here's the thing. What makes... Are in horror great, especially, right? Are you going to take that deformed person, right? Are you going to take Belial, who lives in a basket? Malformed man. Right? Or is he going to is he going to be a friendly, misunderstood person? Are you going to put the best, most innocent attributes of man in them? Or are you going to put the worst, the jealousy, the fear, the hatred, the worst elements of man in them? And again, uh, you know whether science made or uh, or supernatural made at its cure at its at its core, core, core. it's the you're thinking uh, of Robert Smith right yeah <laughs> it's the uh, Spider Man is having you for dinner tonight <laughs> it's the humanity of these quote unquote monsters. Of why they're scary. If you take the merriam webston definition of them, that's not scary. It might be shocking. Like if you go around the corner and Rich took his face off and was deformed Who's mess. Who's fucking Rich right? George? Sorry. Yeah, Rich George took his mask off. He's a deformed mess. Right? Uh, I would go. Yeah. <laughs> but, <gasps> but, I know, <gasps> but I know him. I know he's a good person. Yeah. So it wouldn't be scary. To be around him wouldn't be scary. At times it might be shocking if he had strange <laughs> pushulent discharges. <laughs> it might be shocking, right? But what makes a monster a monster, in my opinion, is their soul. You know, like, uh, and it's why I've always kind of liked, at its base, the Frankenstein thing. Mm -hmm. Because yeah. there, in most iterations, there is a... He doesn't. He doesn't understand how to be. It was nature versus nurture. Yeah. Like Freddy. That's all he knows, though. Freddy is a demon and a rapist, and I think that that's an effective monster too, because we understand it. Those are very good shorthands. But just having someone be ugly, and this is why I'm debunk. Long story long, why I'm debunking this definition. And I guess I took long enough for people in the chat room to take us to task because we'd be mean to the elephant man who died. A 300 years ago. Um, he doesn't listen. Yeah. I'll send his folks a check. You can transcribe um, this. <laughs> Helen will oh, 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 you Helen saying that's Helen? Yeah. <laughs> no. <laughs> no, no, I didn't. Jesus. Uh, <laughs> I think that it's the people that make, it, it's, the, it's the soul that makes it a monster. Like, I think that that definition maybe needs updating. Right. The yeah. inability oh, yeah. to change. The inability yeah. to be that. Yeah, Always. I mean, it, we've come, up, we've come, you know, uh, science has shed the light on many of things, right? Like, right. if Frankenstein was made today, uh, there would be, if Frankenstein was made for the first time today, you know, it would be more like Rob Zombie's Halloween. There would be a lot of, like, maybe unnecessary psychological jargon, like, attached to that to make, you know, so that you would understand, like, a lot of Freudian you know, yeah. like uh, jargon. You know what I mean? Like it wouldn't be like that kind of shorthand that uh, for me sometimes works better that it doesn't understand. Understand, like, I And I think that that's kind of what fucks up. And that's why, to go back to your point of, uh, and I think Wolfie will be with me here, of taking the crown, that's why it hasn't happened. Like if you even to take out the dreams, even take out the, the, the things, right? It is very easy to describe why Freddy is a monster. It is very easy to describe why Dracula is a monster. It's very easy to describe why Leatherface is a monster. Um, uh, people tend to now, in this generation, like kind of overthink it to a degree. You know what I mean? Right. And 
I, I think that, you know, there's a simplicity to uh, these concepts which make them work, you know? Yeah. Um, like, and that's why Freddy is timeless, you know? Like, Freddy will right. be something that's going to be around forever. Uh, you know, good marketing in a, in a degree of iconography mm-hmm. doesn't hurt either. But then again, when people think of Frankenstein, for the most part, they think of flat top head and bolts in the head. Right. And, you know what I mean? So, you know, like, but again, I think that it's the monster. It's not, it's not how you, it's not how they look. Like, I think that, uh, you know, the soulless ones are the scariest ones. But I mean, the iconic ones are the, uh, I mean, who's more scary? Uh, Supernatural Dracula or Albert Fish? Oh, Albert Fish. Easy. You know what I mean? Like, Albert Fish did not look like the Elephant Man. No. Right. Just looked like a kindly old man. Well, right. well the worst trust. monsters, you can't even tell are monsters, yeah. right? Yeah. But I'm probably being mean to Albert Fish now, but... Uh, I don't well, think anybody would yeah. mind. <laughs> so let's... Uh, I, we have a bunch more voicemails I want to get to. And I'm I so wanna pissed s- at the chat room. <laughs> well, uh, J-E-C-G is hanging out. He says, what's up, dudes? Uh, hey, J-E-C- dude. I don't know if it's J-E- hey. I don't know if it's J-E-C or Jack or G-C... But, uh, you know, he's hanging out. So. Cheesy and the pussy cat. Well, why don't we hear from Jeremy McFarland? Yeah, that's a Leo. Hey, Trick or Treat Radio. This is Jeremy. This dude. Um, calling in to tell you my favorite monsters. Um, now, I got a lot of them, but I'll just name a few. Uh, probably one of my favorites is definitely um, the old ones, the dark ones, the ones beyond space and time. Yeah, it should that, that, that creep their way from the blackness of space that, you know, find their way back onto Earth or any planet. You know, that's scary to me, the unknown, you know. These creatures that have been around for since the dawn of time. It's always been scary to, scary to me. But I will say... Um, probably my favorite monsters, and they ended up they end up not really being monsters, really. In a, in a, they end up being Morgan. men, but uh, Michael Crichton book, uh, I believe it's called The Eaters of Man or the Eaters of like the, dead. the Dead. Uh, yeah, yeah. They made that movie, The Thirteenth uh, Warrior, yeah. is, uh, is based off. That's of, one of my favorite Michael Crichton. Where they go into actually. the cave, you know, it's back, you know, the Vikings, and they go into that cave and they find these, you know, men who eat men. They it's like bone tomahawks, you know. And I remember seeing that for the first time. I remember reading it for the first time. I thought it was fantastic. Like it gave me the chills. Like it was, yeah. You know, this, this town is terrified of this, of these these bears or these demon bears, these creatures that look at least look like bears, move like men, and they find out they're actually humans. You know, it's really fantastic. It was a great war at the end. And but yeah, I would say <clears throat> definitely the Cthulhu's, um, you know, the, the old ones, the ones from the blackness of space, and. Uh, eaters of man, the the basically the uh, shapeshifters, sort of like that. Yeah, those are my favorite. And uh, you, you want to say hi? Hello. Hi there, ladies. That was Joanna. She wanted to say hi. So okay. Joanna, hey. Hey. very anxious to I'll hang talk out to you with guys you. Later. Thank you for the pillow, Joanna. Bye. It's come in handy lately. Yeah, it's, <laughs> it's become the stuff of legend. Yeah, thanks, guys. Thank you, Jeremy. The stuff and, of legend. Yeah. And also Joanna. Uh, uh, some interesting stuff, and we didn't really talk too much about that. We kind of, we did a little bit, but we kind of talked about aliens and are they monsters? But then we kind of talked, we didn't really talk about the, you know, the, the ancient ones, I guess. Right. Another interesting thing that Melissa actually brought up in the chat room, I, I think when we were talking about the elephant man, is that uh, people who were a little less informed uh, thought of... Uh, you know, freaks like sideshow freaks as monsters, like the things that were deformed. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. You know. If you know, uh, if you, you know, and I, I think to a degree, uh, behind closed doors, if the political climate is showing us anything, like people are still terrified of things that are different than them. Um, that sort of like, as John Carpenter puts it, you're sitting around the campfire, and the things that are out there, that's the monster. You know. Oh, and the person in the chat room is Jesse G. Is that? Oh yeah, yeah, that's okay. my boy. Yeah, yeah. What's up, Jess? 
I, I was thrown off by the uh, the JEC. It threw me off. Yeah, but uh, welcome, Jesse G. Thanks. thanks for hanging out, man. Is this the first time in the chat? I think so, yeah. That's great. That's very exciting. Drive Jack and Mark says, Laird has a movie coming out soon. It's basically the thing mixed with a movie about ants that I can't recall right now. Interesting. And he also says, about this monster shit, the last few seconds of Europa Report. Crap movie has more effects to me than any slasher ever had. Interesting. But I love slashers, too. The um, uh, I saw Europa Report, and I don't remember that. I um, It's kind of a forgettable movie. I have to say, Jesse, uh, of all my surrogate children that grew up around the comic shop, all turned into fucking train wrecks. I'm a terrible <laughs> parent. But Except that, for him. That one yep. turned out okay. Oh, good. Yeah, he's, so, he's all right. The rest of them are fucking mess. So, you get, <laughs> so, hey, at least you got one success story yeah. under your belt. Out of like 12 of them. <laughs> Yeah, it's a shit ratio. Yeah, fa- it's not you're great. a monster. <laughs> fa- monster of a parent. Fabio Frizi. <laughs> not so good. <laughs> All right, well, let's hear from Jakey Poo. Nice. Chicken Chain Radio! Yeah! Yeah! Oh, God. <laughs> Guys, oh, this is your boy, Jakey Poo. Yeah. Guys, say. This has been a long day. I've been staring at code all day and running into roadblocks all day. As the uh, as the kids in the fighting game scene say, uh, I am mentally guard broken today. So I I uh, went to a Mexican restaurant to order takeout. I got myself a quesadilla with some. Uh, guacamole, <laughs> and uh, gonna go for my uh, my remedy, my lucha, and uh, the the C dub C C dub C. Uh, is finishing up tonight as well, so I'm excited about that. Uh, real curious to see what you guys' thoughts are about. Uh, I am not a serial killer. Um, now, as for the uh, topic du jour, my favorite monsters. Um, one of my favorites, my absolute favorite, is uh, the whatever the actual name is. I, I think it might be Gill Man, but you know the creature from the Black Lagoon. Um, you know, it's not the most terrifying creature in the world, but I love the look of it. I love the aesthetic of it. I particularly love the design in uh, Monster Squad. That's uh, far and away my favorite design for that uh, that creature. Looks a little more looks a little little, little more animal like than in the original films, obviously because it was you know modeled on uh, uh, someone's face, so they couldn't go uh, too wild with it. And speaking of Monster Squad, that also has one of my favorite Wolfmen as, as well. Yes. Low key, great monster designs in that movie. Hot damn. Um, you got nards. Another one, uh, Hedora, Hedora, or the the smog monster from uh, the. Godzilla vs. the Smog Monster. Uh, just a big blob. Just a big blobby dude that, that spews gunk into the hip 70s nightclubs and runs amok. I like that guy. Uh, on the Japanese tip, um, there's like a like an hour little film thingy that was released back in either the late 80s or early 90s called Gakidama. Um, and it's got like a little munchkin uh, evil fuckface monster in it. And he runs amok and causes all sorts of problems. I don't know if he's called Gakidama or if uh, that's just the name of the movie. But that, uh, I think it's on YouTube. I think, I think, I think so. So, uh, yeah, go check it out. Um, gosh, are there any other monsters that I can think of right now? Um... No, that's about all I got. You know, like I said, I'm 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 mentally uh, mentally drained. I'm gonna go home and and veg out and enjoy my evening. So you guys enjoy yours. Um, hot damn! I need to have a question for you guys. I always have a question, <laughs> but I I, yes. I don't I don't have any. Oh, so um, okay. well, how about this? Um, uh, as as what was posed to uh, us on our show this week, someone asked, um, ask yourself a question and answer it. So there you go. Uh, ask yourselves a question and then answer it. So how about this? Okay, okay, okay. It's formulated, it's percolating in my brain. Uh, each one of you turn to the person to your right and then ask them a question 
and they must respond. They cannot choose dare, they must <laughs> choose truth, and they have to respond. Um, shit, boys, that's all I got. Take care. Smoochy smooch. All right, well, that's pretty interesting. Well, first of all, thank you for uh, talking about some monstros, Jakey Poo. We appreciate it, and I know you're uh, you're in, you're at home now with Lucha Underground back Ooh. on television. I know how excited you are. All right, who wants to start this question thing off? Anyone have one on the tip of their tongue? Uh, <laughs> you, it'd have to be you. Well, I mean, I guess. Well, it doesn't have to be me. I can yeah. tell you I'll, guys I'll who start, it is. Because I'm the. You would be as close to on my right, I guess. All right, yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. Yep. If we if we are a circle of some sort, yeah. yes, uh, not a circle jerk though. Do you miss me at all, and if so, what kind? Uh, no, I do not at all. And I one thing I found out is that meat is just a vehicle for spice and flavor, and I can make pretty much I can make tofu or tempeh or whatever taste almost like anything else. So I the, I don't miss it at all. And I've actually come to, I think, enjoy food more now ever than I, than I used to. I see you rolling your eyes, MZ. Fuck you. No, I'm not rolling. <laughs> I'm not rolling my eyes. I'm just listening to you. I'm not making any gestures at all. <laughs> How dare you? <laughs> so, all right. I guess uh, the baton has been passed to me. I need to think of a question for Raven Shadow. There's so many oh, questions yeah, I can ask. Yeah. <laughs> so many questions. <laughs> I really want to ask what that uh, what you need to tell us is, but uh, I don't know if uh, that's appropriate on yeah, air. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> do you really think you're going to get a straight answer out of this guy, no matter what you ask him? Yeah, I do. Okay, See? my friend. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't say anything. <laughs> a Raven Shadow. Yes. I, I think this might be a loaded question, but let's go with it. All right. What brings you the most joy in life? <laughs> uh, appearing on Trick or Treat Radio oh, yeah. uh, every Friday morning. <laughs> That's actually not what I thought you were going to say. <laughs> <laughs> no, re real, real talk. All right, real talk. What makes me the most happy? I, I don't know. I've heard of happiness, and I, I saw it. <laughs> I, I you read the definition once. Yeah, yeah it's on Wikipedia. I know it's on. Uh, <laughs> I, I've seen it on the internet. Miriam Webster. Yeah, fucking. I see it on Patsy's fucking photos. Uh, <laughs> he's so fucking happy. Fuck him. Not like <laughs> Patsy very much. Not a good guy. Smoking butts, Johnny. Smoking that's butts. That's what I was looking for. <laughs> All right. So that's the thing that brings you the most joy in life. Yeah, I'm a quiet reflection. And we're trying to take it away from you. I'm diversifying. I'm branching <laughs> out. There's, yeah. You should stop smoking. Why? The thing that, you, that that brings you the most joy in life is taking life away from you. It's I'm a fucking walking contradiction, Johnny. It's it's one <laughs> no of those shit. things. It's 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 ebbs and no ebbs shit, and, Chet. No, no shit. shit. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, I, that's what I thought the answer was going to be. See? That so. smoking and trick or treat radio. Not at the same time. Not, well, I fuck, I'd be fucking awesome. That's fucking Nirvana, <laughs> and not your boy in the flannel. <laughs> All right, your your turn. Ask MZ. So MZ. You've done a lot of things. Yeah, yeah, I did a lot of things today. And ooh, in a, lo a lot of years, let's be fair. Yeah, um, a, lot of, <laughs> a lot of years. <laughs> you've met celebrities. You've appeared yeah. in films. Yes, yes. You've been to Las Vegas. Yes, <laughs> for uh, two minutes. For two minutes, and you've been to that weird horror house where you sat in the bathroom. Yes, on that day. Yes. So, of all these things, that of all these, you were a hardcore legend. Yeah. And you wrote one time for Horror How Magazine. Yes, I did. Sure. So, out of all these accomplishments, all of these goals, what is the next thing on your bucket list that you want to achieve? Watch Fuller House. <laughs> you've, you've watched season one of Fuller House in a day. Yes. Yes, I did. I binge watched that. Yeah. It was so worth it. Uh, let's see. Well, next, you know, I've always thought about, about I've always given it some thought about possibly directing a film okay you know um you know because i i have a lot of good ideas in my head that nobody listens to and uh <laughs> wait 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 the one where you go back in time and uh and touch yourself that's, why, that's why go back one. in time and do that when i could do that right now well, no molest no i know i know what you mean i know what you mean no not that not that it's fucking I've, outrageous I've, I've, though it's a fucking outrageous film now I, what about uh, i've matured since then 
<laughs> that might be the funniest thing I've ever heard. <laughs> or what about uh, Anne, Fra- uh, was Anne, it Anne Frankenstein? Anne Frankenstein? That's been around for a long time. That's not It's been original. done, though. No. Yeah. That's been done. Believe me. <laughs> the the, the uh, comical misadventures of Anne Frankenstein. But uh, I would like to uh, direct a movie one of these days. Um, I don't know if I ever will, but... Uh, that's definitely on my list. I would definitely, certainly would love He's, to try. I can see it now. He's going to direct a historical drama. All right. Yes. <laughs> yes. And it'll deal, and it'll, it'll have puppets. Oh, Jesus. It's going to be uh, <laughs> it'll what, have, T-shirt to contest. What was that movie with the, Mar- the Marquis de Sade with the puppets? Was it just Marquis? Was that the name of that movie? I think so. No. Uh, wait. Uh, oh, you, oh, you're talking about... Um, there was a Marquis, Marquis de Sade movie with... With puppets. I think you're right, yeah. yeah. And he was talking to his penis. His penis talked back to him. Oh, hello there. <laughs> I, I, I just want to go on record, uh, Johnny, and say yes. for this particular segment, yes, I probably wish that I switched seats with Monster Zero. Well, of course. <laughs> <laughs> All right, it is MZ's turn oh, to go. ask a question so it for is, Dynamo. It is, it is to direct the film. All right, good. Dynamo. Good I hope yeah. you can do it, man. Yeah, I hope so, There's too. nothing stopping this. you except yeah. you. Uh, Dynamo. Yeah, man. Uh, you've had a very interesting life. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you've had your ups, your downs. More ups and downs, though. And your sides to sides. Yeah. Um. I don't. I don't. Hit, I don't hit the bottom, but I knock the sides out. <laughs> <laughs> what's your biggest regret? Uh, oh boy, that's a good one. I don't know that I actually. It, it's. It, I, I say this a lot, and I don't know that I actually have regret regrets like it's very easy to say oh man like if i had done this this would have worked better but like all but like things that didn't like you know like for every bucket of dry ice uh fans elastic and laser pointers like that was a fucking disaster something incredible came out of those um i think as close as i can come to answering your question is I hope I don't die before a Deadites comic comes out. Like, I regret my inability to get that done. There are some things very recently that I regret, uh, and while I'm not into not taking responsibility for the things that happened to me, uh, it's hard to regret things that... Talking about monsters, it's hard to regret things that, that I don't have control over. Um, so as far as things that I have control over, I regret... Uh, my inability to get that sort of stuff done. I mean, you could say I regret the way I acted this time or how drunk I got that time or how I treated somebody on that time. Uh, But all those things seeded uh, the garden of experience and made me understand, like, why not to do those things. You know, if I had never gotten to a dumb fight over something that wasn't important, I wouldn't know it wasn't important, you know. Uh, so, you know, you, I tend to try to look at mistakes as learning things. Um, uh, I wish I didn't hate most of our listeners so much, (laughs) 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 but, uh, you know, otherwise, uh, you know, maybe I regret that, but I I think really that's it. My, my closest I have to regret is that when I thought I was going to die, which was about a year ago now, exactly right. Uh, I was thought like I really hope I get um uh I really hope I I can get this comic done on the flip side there were some regrets I had kind of that I thought were regrets before I died that I put things into perspective uh by a traditional band sense you could say that the deadites didn't do this and didn't do that or I didn't do this and didn't do that but our music is played every single week to an international audience uh, there are bands that you know play every night in, in shitty clubs all over the United States that don't you know people all over the world every single week here too ugly for heaven you know so you just got, you just got to kind of put things in perspective I think regrets are a dangerous thing or all I right. think regrets are a a, a, a cop out because you're 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 you want to be a time traveler I think as soon as you start saying that you want to regret you want to be a time traveler you're saying like oh well I fucked up. I was a right. dick. 
I wish I could go back in time and not have been a dick, as I, opposed to take the responsibility and, of, of being a... I, I kind of wish I'd asked Raven Shadow that question. <laughs> yeah, no, no, and, and I, you know, I, once again, there's some things that... that but no, it, exactly, and, and I think time travel by, like, uh, the butterfly effect. <laughs> right. You know what I mean? Like, we know from comics. Oh, sure, sports. sure, that's true, yeah, yeah. Um, we know, okay, maybe I didn't do this, but at the same right. time... Right, so what was the chain reaction that would have happened if, if you had done that thing? You exactly. Know? Yeah. So what I would say... And how different would things be? Exactly. Okay, I, Uncle Ben's alive, but now... He's not Spider-Man. You know, not Spider-Man. Yeah, no, I get it. And, you know, Electro destroyed the city. Fuck. Um, I will say this in terms of, of the future. I would say if I... Not regrets, but if I would have done things differently, I would say if any kind of opportunity were to present itself in the future, I'll take that chance or mm-hmm. try it, you know. Yeah. Say... <laughs> Say yes when I said no before and say no when the, I said yes in the, the future. In, the interesting thing is one of our buddies, D. Watt, one of his things, the, the year that we made the Deadites album, yeah. he, he was basically, he said he wasn't going to say no to any projects that came his way that were within reason. Yeah. And so the Deadites album might not have got done if not for, no. for that. Because but look, think about he that. Wanted to, he wanted to take on things and challenge himself. But that's you know? a perfect example. I wanted to be in a position where I took that record from, you know, I, I, I co-wrote the songs. I wanted to record the songs. And with the help of a producer, I wanted to produce them, right? Uh, it would be very easily for me to say I regret the circumstances that went to that. But because that happened, we were produced by a BAFTA award-winning producer, Right, you know, and like one other thing too with that, we got the write up in Fearnet, right? Right, yeah. And then that led to Trick or Treat Radio getting a write up in Blumhouse, right? Because if that never happened, I don't think I don't think Gregory would have no. known about Trick or Treat Radio. It's a complete I mean, domino effect. I probably yeah. would have been pleased as a pig and shit if I had finished that, and you know, I I think I, I it might have sounded okay, but uh, like it wouldn't have and been I, as good. I certainly wasn't putting. No. Down. Okay. no, 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 but, but it wasn't that good. You know what I mean? Like, but, uh, you know, I, if the circumstances that made me not be able to do it, which were the producer, the engineer, having a nervous breakdown, uh, I would have never been known that I was in a position to have such an incredible producer yeah. work. You know what I mean? So, so uh, this was interesting, and I think we could go a little We never would have found Jim Smith. Yeah, yeah, for sure. You yeah. know, like it's, it's yeah, like it's, there's like a million things the just album, based on that. If the if we didn't release the album at that time, we wouldn't have met Jim Smith. Nope. So we have a bunch more voice, not a bunch. We have a few more I want to get to. Uh, one thing, real quick, Raven Shadow. So make this quick. Yep. Uh, Melissa says, "What about your kids, Raven Shadow?" <laughs> there. <laughs> what about what about them? I about uh, the about things him? that bring you most joy. He didn't make them. That, yeah, was, that, was, no, I, I, that yeah. wasn't his sperm. Yeah, you got to keep in mind, Melissa, uh, Melissa, I rented with the option to buy. Uh, <laughs> you did great. You know, I mean, you know, I, I kind of Bundle miss, of joy. Yeah, I kind of miss, you know, making crafts. Now they're at that level where, uh, you know. Smoking dope. I don't know what they're doing, sex. but yeah, yeah. I mean, it's, it's, it's great, you know. Uh, ha- have a fucking dozen. All right, well, let's hear from no, first. Every, every day is magical. First time, Mike. <laughs> Kid's not that great. <laughs> What's up, Trick or Treat family? This yeah, is First, first Time, time Mike. Mike. How's everybody doing? Hope all is well with y'all. Uh, I know you're talking about monster movies, so I have a little thought about that. You, your favorite monsters. That's a hard question because I, I, I love a good monster movie. I will watch. If I had a choice between like a slasher movie or uh, like anything else, I'd watch a monster movie over all of them because I think... I like kind of like the either supernatural or man-made monster. I like how they interact with people, and all the chaos that ensues. Uh, some of my favorite monsters is I love the like the Deadites and all their imitators. Uh, I know that's the name of your band, Deadites UK. but I also like the whole concept of the, especially in the Evil Dead movies, how. In an instant, you can turn from hit your alley all of a sudden. Their eyes go go crazy, and they're trying to kill you while spouting off how they're going to swallow your soul, or you know, do horrible things to you. And they were just your friends a minute ago. Uh, I have a fondness too for like the Blind Dead by Armand Osorio in the uh, in that series. Elvira introduced me to them back in the eighties, and. Oh yeah. There's four movies that they're so moody and 
they're so different from the one, the monsters that are chasing you as fast as they can. They're slow and methodical, but they'll catch you in the end because even though they can't see you, they can hear the beating of your heart and your breathing as they stalk you. Uh, I love a good Godzilla movie. I go in, uh, in spurts with the Godzilla movies. All right, that's a bad choice of words. But uh, I like sometimes I'll start watching, especially now that my nephews are getting into the 8, 9, 10 range. Uh, I'll watch them with... Uh, with them sometimes or else when my niece was growing up uh her dad instilled with her a love of godzilla movies so i would watch a lot of the the classic kaiju with with her <clears throat> excuse me and uh those were fun too uh also enjoyed uh, a lot of the good monster mash movies like uh, waxwork and waxwork 2 yeah. uh Spookies and uh, like Monster Squad. All those yeah, ones are. Spookies. You yeah, have your vampires, you have your werewolves, you have mummies, muck people, whatever you can think of. And they just. Everything's. Again, the quote Michael Irisha, running amok. <laughs> uh, so there's some Never of my ra- a uh, ramblings about monster movies. Uh, that, uh, that's it for tonight. Wishing everybody good night. Oh, and I do have one more question. Hey, Raven Show, what's a moosh boosh? Because I'm from the Midwest, and I don't know what that is. Talk to you guys later. Good night. No one does. Everyone knows what a moosh boosh is, no. dude. I never knew. Uh, no, it's... Uh, and it's, I'm pretty educated. See? See? You learn something. That's a regret. Um, should have learned more. No, uh, a moosh boosh is uh, a term like in the restaurant cooking culinary industry it's the it's the appetizer before the appetizer just a little taste to kind of what you whistle get you all lubed up a sample no nah, it's the moose bush so th- that's like when you go to the porn sites the advertisements you see on the side yeah if you can get that what shit done with those that's the <laughs> yeah yeah you get a little bit you know is that the moose bush yeah it's a little more than what you get at like uh, Okay. Yeah, you know, more than you see. Get. I, I didn't, I didn't get, the, I didn't get it when you were talking about restaurants. But when he started talking about porn, so no, I, like, I knew, oh, I knew I you'd get yeah, it. Yeah, no, no, your audience is a fair. It's a yeah, fair. Me, you know. me, and Twelve Gauge invented another thing that's important to this whole dinner motif. Uh, so you eat, you get the almost bush, then you yeah. get the appetizer, right? Then you get your meal. Yep. Have you seen me and Twelve Gauge Calhoun, right? Yeah. You hang around for a while, you get a couple more beers, then you get the back appetizer, <laughs> which is the appetizer <laughs> that you get after your meal. What was the other, uh, there's another food reference that you always make, Raven Shadow. The moose bouche and... Well, there's denouement. But denouement. Not, oh, okay, never mind. That's not food. No, no, it's like, it depends, the back, or the, what would you call it? The back, back appetizer? The back appetizer? What did he say? Dynamo, he's talking to you. Uh, the back appetizer. Is that what it is? That could be the denouement of going out to eat with with twelve gauge Calhoun, which is <laughs> French for French for the last appetizer. But I do it. It's, it's a tick made a reference in an episode, so I I'm, uh, I'm quoting a tick reference. So you're not smart. Uh, yeah, I watched the tick the <laughs> cartoon. Oh, that's a smart decision. Yeah. See, see. Are you interested in checking out the Amazon reboot? I am. I just have. I don't know how to get the Amazon programming. All right. Well, we'll have to work on that for yeah. you. Let's hear from Lance B. Pyle. Come over and hang out with your buddy Dynamo. Ooh, I got time. Hey, guys. It's Lance Beef Pyle here. I am heading to Halloween Horror Nights in Orlando Universal Studios. That's what it was. Um, in the Lance Beef Pyle Mobile, which nice. is a very sexy Prius. <laughs> um, really excited about this this year. It um, opens up this weekend, but it's a employee and press event night. And Ooh. I managed to sneak in due to a friend that's an employee. Nice. Um, but this year, they finally have an exorcist house that's officially licensed. Um, they've been trying for that forever. So I know that a lot of the people that are on the creative side have had all these ideas piling up throughout the years, and they do a really good job. Um, if you have not been to Halloween Horror Nights, it's um, you know for a corporate event that is usually something that would you consider family-friendly because it's a corporation and it's a theme park and all that stuff. Um, they really go all out, and the people that build the haunted houses and the scare zones and all those things are actual fans of the mm. horror movies themselves. They're, so there's some really... Uh, you'll see some messed up stuff. Um, so what I'll probably do is you know, take some mental notes as I'm running in terror from you know, <laughs> college kids dressed as serial killers, <laughs> and I will kind of give you a full report next week. Oh, nice. Oh, the... 
thing I forgot to mention is there's also a going to be a Halloween house. Um, last year they also did a Halloween house, which was one of their highest rated houses ever. And they're doing a return to Haddonfield house. Um, awesome. Last year's house, actually it was two years ago. Um, two years ago's house, they um, had a full reconstruction of Michael Myers' house. So you actually, you know, walked in through the through the patio and you got to see pretty much the whole movie reenacted in front of you. So really excited about the Haddonfield house as well. So looking forward to listening to the show when I can, and I will talk to you guys later. Bye. Well, that's pretty cool. He got a, a chance to go get a sneak peek. It sounds like a pretty awesome thing. Yeah. Obviously, we've never been because we're, we're up here, but... Okay. Very cool. I look forward to, to hearing what's what's going on with that next what's week. What's going on? Lance Beef Pile. And uh, I think it's pretty cool to for them to kind of rebuild some of these famous movie sets. Yeah. And make yeah. them as like haunted houses for people sure. that go and experience, you know? Well, think about it. Like when we were growing up, haunted houses were very gothic. You know what I mean? They were old, spooky, dark houses like the. Yeah, yeah. You know? Yeah, definitely. So we got another voicemail. This is a voicemail from Not a Monster. So I don't know who this is from. It doesn't say, but let's uh, take a listen. Hey, guys. It's me, Nosferatu. Oh, I just want to thank Monster Zero. I'm not a monster. I'm a normal guy like you or Godzilla or Kenny. Kenny? <laughs> you know, when I was in school... Sometimes people would knock the books out of my hands. <laughs> when in school. I would go to the library and, you know, play Dungeons and Dragons with my friends, they would yell, Hey, Baldy! Hey, Pointy Ears! Hey, Nosferatu, dude! And I was like, I'm not a monster. I'm just a man, at the time a boy, who's a vampire. So thank you very much, Monster Zero, for understanding my point of view, because I'm not a monster. I really appreciate it. You know, if they made a film about my life, it would definitely not be a horror movie. It would be a thriller. So I just want you to know <laughs> that I really, really appreciate where you're coming from. Granted... I am hideously deformed and have a pig-like nose. I have long, twisty, demonic fingers, and my shadow moves all by itself. But, nope, <laughs> not a monster, just a fella. <laughs> just a normal guy like you. I'm in the book club. I'm in the rotary club. I'm in the lion's club. I uh, take part in a blood drive, if you know what I mean. <laughs> but I am not a monster. Nope, just a dude. Uh, thank you very much. Till next time, I think Monster Zero is a tree. <laughs> <laughs> what the fuck? Wow, and I thought I told bad jokes. Nasratu calling in. That's right. Nasratu, dude. Mm. Whoa, 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 whoa. Melissa in the chat Thanks, room. Thanks, <laughs> Mel Melissa in the chat room says that's Mars. What? What? That's Nasratu. That was, that was clearly Nasratu. Melissa. How would I leave a voicemail about something that happened on the show while I was sitting here on the show? Well, you did go to the bathroom. but Yeah, and you're not usually not on camera, too. I think I've been mostly on camera, and I don't think I was ever gone long enough to leave a three-minute voicemail. Well, crazy. So he That's flattering, he, though. I thought that was a good voicemail. Something he agrees like with you, MZ. He's not a monster. Yeah. He thanks you. All right. Uh, guys, we heard from uh, our old buddy Nick. Hey. Uh, it's been a while. Let's hear yeah. from Nick. Where's he been? On Hey, Trick or Tree <laughs> Radio, Nick here. A uh, long time, no collie. I know. Um, just want to check in with you guys and say, how you doing? Hey, Nick. And hey. I'm hey, sorry, I haven't doing? called in a lot lately. I've been very busy with... Unchained. Listening to your other <laughs> fantastic shows on the network, like obviously Unchained and... Um, Throwdown Thursday podcast. I hope all those other shows coming. Get one of my favorites. It's very, very good. Uh, uh, Agent Nicole and Patsy, the angry nerd, is if I hit the lot doing a great all show and a great job. And uh, I think that they really got something there. Except for and, um, chains, we'll keep on chains. Great camaraderie, even though it's fighting, because that's what I like on shows. But um, no, I just wanted to say 
thank you for being the flagship show. Thank you for um, having this network with these fantastic people doing their fantastic shows. And I love you guys. Thanks. Bye. Oh, shucks. Thanks, Thanks Nick. Nick. Yeah, man. I want to take Unchained and put Agent Nicole on it and fucking drive the rest of you off there. <laughs> right. except, except this one. I'll stay here. Including your own show? I'm going to take Agent Nicole and put her on Unchained. <laughs> I'm take MZ and Wiley off the air. <laughs> You'd think I'm kidding, but I started playing the lottery. If I win, me and Johnny are going to start watching wrestling again on Saturdays. <laughs> <laughs> if we win... <laughs> I think we could do a lot more than that. <laughs> I, got, I have low goals. He's going to buy every single wrestling DVD ever made in mm. the entire world. I am. I'm going to blow your, your your fortune. You mean he doesn't have that already? No. No. Uh, I, what What is going on in the chat room? W- Wiley says Mars Feratu. Mars Feratu. <laughs> oh, maybe she thinks it was the Mars. Uh, Doing an impersonation uh, of Mars Feratu. I don't know. Where's the Mars been? Leaving uh, voice messages. Not in a while. Could be. It didn't really sound like him either. No. All right. Well, we've got one more. Let's hear from Josh. Mars has a strange affliction right now. Affliction? Yeah. Hey, Trick and Train Radio Josh guys. Here. Uh, Josh from the Arkham Film Society What's here. Up, buddy? Uh, just out and about uh, taking the dog for a walk. I figured I'd call in with my thoughts on this week's film. I'm not a serial killer. This was an extremely pleasant surprise. Um, I'd heard a little bit of, about the film um, over the past couple of weeks. Uh, I know it's done some festivals and uh, some, a few people have seen it. Um, but I really knew little to nothing about it. Um, so I went in pretty cold and I absolutely loved it. Um, I thought that the story was really interesting. I thought that the uh, the acting was great. Um, I really didn't have time to do any research on the um, on on the cast. I mean, obviously, I know who Christopher Lloyd is, but I didn't really get too much time to look up uh, many other people. I do know the director is the same guy that made um, the Irish farm set horror film uh, Isolation a while back, and that was pretty good. And this was even better. Um, but yeah, I thought the acting was good. I thought the story was good. So it had a very interesting look. Even though I know it took place now because uh, of the phones and the MP3 players and whatnot, yeah. I felt that it had a very 90s feel to it. Okay. Um, both in the way the town looked and just the way it was shot. It wasn't like an overly flashy style or anything, but it really... It, the, the way it was shot really reminded me of the 90s indie film boom. Um, you know, the, the kind of post-Tarantino uh, and Kevin Smith boom where, uh, you know, everyone and their brother was making an indie drama, and that kind of looked like this. And, um, and, and so, I mean, I, I found that very, I don't know, I, I was almost nostalgic for that in a way, and it really worked. Uh, I thought the, the soundtrack was an interesting mix of uh, songs and cues uh, that really worked well with the film. Overall, uh, this was just an extremely pleasant surprise, and I really enjoyed it. Um, if I didn't nitpick anything uh, while watching it, um, there was a couple minorly aggravating moments of what I thought was might have been uh, poor writing, uh, because there are definitely, like, character conflicts or character histories that are just never presented to us. Um, obviously, there's some backstory between the main character and the neighbor girl. Um, you know, there's a lot of internal conflict with his family, especially with his sister. Um, I'm willing to overlook some of that because I did after seeing the film find out that this is based on a book which is part of a series so I'm hoping that if they continue making films of the series that those things are then explained uh, to just kind of flesh out the world a little bit better and even that is like I said a little bit nitpicky that's I mean you know everything with the with the main story is, is fine it was just some of the um, you know secondary characters that I felt were kind of left a little bit, uh, you know, uh, with a bit unsaid about them. Um, so this is definitely a treat, and uh, this is definitely a high recommend. Um, 
And, I mean, I'd love to discuss more of these story points, uh, but I'm not sure exactly how far to go without getting spoilery, so, so I will, um, so I will curtail that, but, um, I'm just gonna say that I think, I think that, that this film did a really good job of, uh, setting up a, an antagonist-protagonist situation that was, uh, slightly different, uh, than what you were expecting going into it, but uh, holds from some great influences, uh, uh, some has some great reference points uh, of uh, previous work that I think we all appreciate. So, all right, you guys have a good one, and I uh, can't wait to see what you do next week. I'll talk to you later. Bye bye. Thanks, Josh. He pretty much once again agreed with uh, most of us. I always love hearing Josh's perspective, and uh, appreciate you uh, calling in, buddy. We do have a couple emails. Let me get to these real quick. This is from uh, our boy Sheetsy, Mark hey. Sheets from the Punch Farm podcast. All right. And uh, Mark says, hello, Trick or Treat Radio. My favorite monster is the creature from the Black Lagoon. This was the first monster movie I ever saw at the tender age of 10, and it's stuck with me ever since. I dig that monster so much, I made a short film titled Chompy Attack of the Fishman. It's about a dude transformed into a fish man after the Three Mile Island incident in 1979. My film is so awesome that I'll never, ever let you see it. It sucks. <laughs> <laughs> and speaking of monsters, I love you guys. Take care and see you soon. See you, um, bud. All right. I love that show. Thanks, Sheetsy. I just left a voice uh, mail for that today. Nice. We appreciate you taking the time to write in. Always love hearing from you, buddy. And uh, hopefully we get to see you I was having weird soon. fucking connectivity issues again. Uh, what? I was having weird connectivity issues With again. With what? With, I, I mean, granted, it's because I moved the computer 22 times in the past couple of weeks, but with connecting with the internet and things sending. And the internet sending thing? <laughs> yeah. All right. Well, we also got another, another one from Oily Maniac, and the subject is Asian Cannibal Rats. Yo, Trick or Treat Radio, I would like to apologize to Michael Ravenshadow regarding the offensive rat joke I made. Rats have a terrible connotation in the Italian-American community. This was very culturally insensitive of me. Mr. Ravenshadow, I am a, Mr. Ravenshadow is a stand-up guy and the furthest thing from a rat. He's Necronomicon's Luca Canali. That would be the Italian Connection's Luca Canali. So, what do you think? Yeah. Ravenshadow, what do you think? Thank you. He's correct. Yeah. Spot on Neon Demon review. Dynamo summed it up. Refn said, F you to everyone with this film. After it ended, my first thought was, how the fuck is he going to get financing for his next film? As for Dynamo's mean Asian impersonation, well, yeesh, I'm so confused. I don't, re- I don't remember. Did he do a mean Asian? Oh, the, oh, the, uh, mean the Asian, Asian one. Not your problem. Yeah, yeah, yeah. cancer. Oh, yeah. Fuck that lady. <laughs> <laughs> That's that's what she sounded like. Yeah, it doesn't I, matter. I don't think he was anything I fucking say anymore is insensitive. I got people on fucking text telling me that I'm, that I'm using them. I got fucking people saying that I'm being mean to people that died a hundred years ago. Like <laughs> <laughs> MZ, I ordered Umber, Umberto Lenzi's sacrifice, aka Man from Deep River, nice. from from Raro's FB page for half off. Sweet. Glad I'm not the only unevolved deviant still watching 70s Italian cannibal films. Hell yeah, that's the very first one, babe. Cheers. Oily Maniac. Uh, let me just make a, a quick point about that. So our boy Josh from the Arkham Film Society did a Euro Film Fest uh, a couple years back, and that was one of the ones he played. So I got to nice. see it on, I don't know if it was 35 millimeter. It was definitely film, so it may have been 16 millimeter. Or it may have been 35. I'm not sure. Josh can clarify for us and let us know, but... It was pretty fucking amazing seeing that in on film. Yeah, you know, in a theater with with other people. With Ivan Rasimov and yeah. Mimi Lay. And I love I, I love uh, Ivan Rasimov. Wasn't he in uh, Raiders of Atlantis? I believe so. I believe so. I believe yeah. so. So thank you, Oily. Always love hearing from you, man. You got you got the the goods and the info. So thanks for writing in. As for tweets, I'm gonna go through these quick. I'm not gonna touch the weird Wednesday stuff because there was a lot of it. So. Let me get here. Oh, uh, so we, we I posted the pics. Dynamo sent me some pics from on set of Morbid Visions. And I went ahead and uh, put those on the Deadites, Instagram, Twitter, things like that. And so uh, 
Oily Maniac asked, new yoga position in that pick for MZ? It was the one you were sitting in the chair. Oh. <laughs> uh, I wish it was. It would have it uh, made me relax. Yeah, I'll pull the picture up. This one right there. Uh, oh, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah look, at look at that. Sexy, right? <laughs> <laughs> and uh, let's see. We, we, we had a little interaction with the Chromecast. Those guys are the best. Uh, so there's a little bit going on. And now uh, Slagoth, I think he's going to try to to draw the the picture of you fighting the Snake Mars. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> and we also heard from Horror Maid. Uh, Jeanette says, I have a lot of driving in my future, which means it's catch-up time. I just downloaded episode 215 of Trick or Treat Radio, and I'm ready to strap on. Ooh. And uh, also, Jeanette says, was not, was not expecting the snake, Dynamo Mars. That's terrifying. <laughs> yeah, it's not good. <laughs> right, right in the chair that you sat in many, many times, Jeanette. <laughs> many times. I spoke with uh, Immortal Alexander this week, and uh, he uh, pretty much told me uh, what his game plan was about uh, film-wise. It's pretty punk rock. It's, it's not what I thought he was going to do. It's way cooler, so... Like, I thought there was going to be, like, a formal place, and he's literally just going to fucking guerrilla tackle people. He's got, like, it's almost like, um, uh, what was Mike's movie? Mike Baronis there. Uh, uh, oh, Lucho Fulci, you remember? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah he's Boy, almost got kind of a thing like that. He's got a question in mind that he's going to ask everyone. So, it's uh, pretty cool. cool. Have you ever felt Rufus and or Ronaldo? Was yeah. that the question? Mm-hmm. No, I haven't. <laughs> uh, yeah, I'm, I, I, mi- I so miss uh, I miss Jeanette being in the chat room all the time. I miss you know uh, both those yeah, guys. Busy folks. Yeah. Well, I, I like I like that. You know, apparently I'm just finding out right now that uh, the worst thing you can do is be busy because then people get mad at you that you're not at the beck and call. So <laughs> you do do a radio show on Wednesday nights. Don't. Yeah. Why do you answer anything on Wednesday nights? Uh, fucking just piss tell off. people to fuck off. Yeah. Wednesday busy on Saturday, practicing, writing, yeah. making albums like. Getting th- stuff together for 31 days. Fucking sorry. I'll go fucking watch Mr. Belvedere. <laughs> uh, Melissa, Melissa yeah. just tweeted us right now. All it says is hashtag Mars Feratu, hashtag Team MZ. Wow. Oh. Hey. <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> All right. I, I, my team's going <laughs> oh, bigger Rimshaw, bigger. you got to go. You yeah, gotta, I got to go. Your team is, your team is actually not growing yeah. bigger from the same people saying the same thing on another social media media. I, I got That's Melissa and I got I got Melissa and I got lost in Atlantis. I'm good enough. Lost in Atlantis would put up with doing a show with you and Wolfie will back me up here for maybe thirty seconds. You don't know that. No, I know that. No, she'd get through a few episodes. I don't know. Yeah, she would. I it depend it, I mean it depends. She could get through a hundred episodes. But when he fucking says some one of those things We agree all the time. No you don't. No you don't. You didn't agree on something last week. She was disappointed in you. Yeah. Forget oh, one was. time. Big deal. <laughs> we sound like him, Raven yeah. Shadow. Yeah, you would have, she, she would not appreciate you calling her kitten or like uh, no she sweat. She seems fine no with it, which is, <laughs> which is interesting. Yeah. <laughs> Hashtag double standards. Well, she called us cats, so I called her a kitten. Uh, it's a play on words. goes hand in hand. Or paw and paw in this case. All right, we got to wrap up this Thank fucking show. Thank you. I thought this was going to be a short one, but it ended up being a long one. So, show sucks. Uh, MZ, say goodbye, though, folks. Arrivederci, douchebags. Raven Shadow. I got to go. You, you need something else, man. That's I tried I, something new. I said you could, goodbyes are getting long, which they are. Yeah, but you say that all the time. He said the fucking catchphrase. <laughs> His is a good catchphrase. What do you say again? Arrivederci, douchebags. Yeah, you just say it for 215 episodes. Yeah. Well, I'm trying to innovate. Everything I try to create, you nay say. All right, look, you got you a sit full in your fucking week. Tower. You got a week. You got a full week to think of a new. You say, all right, gotta go. go. Goodbye's I, I, getting long. Goodbye's getting long because I. Ah. Look, look, hey, hey, look. He it's comes getting up longer. With, look, he <laughs> yeah, you're making it longer. Hey, hey, give him a little credit. At least he comes yeah. up with interesting intros. Uh, sometimes. Yeah, content. <laughs> yeah, he's good content. Can you kill him again, please? What intro? <laughs> I think he's talking about the strap-on bit, no, right? Yeah, go fuck your Megatron. Yeah. <laughs> no. All right. <laughs> Again, I, let's just shut up the show. Shut up the show. That's a good one. I'm gonna, it's all right. There all you right. go. Here you go. <laughs> all right, everybody. Time to shut up the show. <laughs> we got to go. All right. We're going to shut up the show, everyone. Mars Man. I hate everyone.
It's not what you say. Yeah, children, whatever. whatever. They, uh, <laughs> <laughs> whatever the fuck. <laughs> it's not a nightmare. I fucking hate everybody. It's done. Old me. All right, everyone. Gonna thank start you wearing for tuning cardigans in to episode. You got to do that anyways. I'm gonna fall. fucking wear my Franco Nero were, headbands. Wait, no, no, no. You started wearing cardigans when you were nice. Still long. No. Yeah, you did. No, no, no. No, you didn't wear them bad. when you were angry. No, I'm angry now. <laughs> you know, we're in the cardigan. Oh, you wait and see. It's fucking <laughs> growing in me like fucking Freddy sweater. <laughs> Thank you, everyone, for tuning in to episode 216 of Trick or Treat Radio. Next week is going to be fucking awesome. We're going to be joined by Jakey Poo and CDR from the Cult of Muscle to review Rob Zombie's 31. And we're also going to be joined by Mr. Tony Timpone. Bambaleo. It's going to be fucking great. So come back and join us for the live show Wednesday nights at 9 p.m. Eastern. We'll see you then.